Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfictions. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was the last celestial angel. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. In the shinobi world were the five great shinobi nations, the lands of fire, earth, wind, lightning, and water. Each were ruled by lord or daimyo and in each of these nations was a hidden village that trained and brought up future generations of shinobi. These shinobi would determine the power of the hidden village and numbers mean strength. However, among the many nations, shinobi or not, the nine-tailed beasts resided. In time, they were all sealed into humans. These humans became jinchuriki and were living vessels of the demon's power and soul. Power of the Human Sacrifice One of the tailed beasts, the nine-tailed fox or Kayubi no Kitsun, was found attacking the hidden village of Konoha one particular day. No one knew how or why, but the Kayubi was completely annihilating the shinobi and many lives, shinobi or not, died. They died trying to protect the people and defeat was to be expected, as the nine-tailed fox was the strongest of the tailed demons or biju. It was said that the Kayubi had the ability to cause tsunamis and earthquakes from just a swipe of its tail. So the villagers and shinobi died protecting their village, and still, none of their techniques or weapons proved to be useful and all were useless to the power of the nine-tailed fox. The fourth Hokage, leader of Konohagakure and strongest ninja of said village, could not do anything either and this meant that he would have only one option left. Performing a forbidden technique, he called upon the god of death, Shinigami, and made a deal with him. This deal was that the Kayubi would be defeated and sealed into his newborn son, but in exchange for this was the soul of the fourth himself. This was the only way to defeat a demon of this degree, to seal the soul and power of an eternal demon into a living vessel whose chakra coils had not developed yet. Just before his soul was taken away, he asked the Shinigami to promise him something. The Shinigami, having gained respect for the late fourth Hokage and what he was about to do, agreed. Please watch him. I doubt the village will even consider my wish that he be treated as a hero, said the fourth, sadness evident in his voice. I see. Then I will fulfill your request. I will watch him, said the Shinigami in a deep voice. I see. Then, please begin, said the fourth as he prepared to die. However, he first took a last look on his son and spoke his last words, saying. I'm so sorry for the fate I've doomed you to son. Please forgive me, my wish is that you be seen as a hero not a target of hatred. Then the Shinigami began the ritual and forcibly took the soul and power of the Kayubi and sealed it into the body of the newborn and then took the soul of the fourth as his compensation and left, but not without saying, soon, the time for your true awakening will come young one. Dot and not even the demon will prevent you from reaching your destiny. Celestial Angel. Then the Shinigami left, leaving no trace of his presence. Although he helped protect the village in its future generation, the fourth Hokage never received his wish. Chapter 1. The Genesis, by the Silent Peacemaker. Disclaimer. Naruto does not belong to me. All rights belong to the creator of Naruto. However, the plot of this fanfic is mine. Do not steal. Thoughts, words, Hanako speaking, Kayubi speaking. Five years from the sealing of the Kayubi and the death of the Yandaimi Hokage, fourth shadow of the leaf, a little boy was running running from the group of people behind him. Eventually, due to his small physique, they caught him. Then they proceeded to torture, hurt, and maim the little boy, till he was in a near-death state. We've done it. We've killed the demon, said one villager and then cheers of agreement soon followed. However, they were cut off, as masked figures suddenly arrived at the scene. What have you done? said the weasel masked Anbu. We've done it. We've done what the fourth couldn't do, said one of the villagers. How dare you? You are the true demons here as he is only the container not the demon. No, he isn't, he is the demon, I've heard enough, said the weasel faced Anbu. Anbu, leave none alive. And with that, the Anbu momentarily disappeared and after a second, the bodies of the villagers lay on the ground. All dead. Then picking the boy up, the Anbu brought him to the Anbu hospital, as the regular hospital would most likely do more harm than help. The third Hokage. Serutobi Hirazan, rubbed his head in annoyance once again at the paperwork that he had to do. Then all of a sudden, the door opened and a cat-faced Anbu went to the Hokage and spoke, saying. Hokage-sama, Naruto-kun is in the hospital again. And with that, the Hokage used body flicker, Shunshin, to teleport to the boy. 
And Naruto kun, are you awake? said the Hokage. M, Gigi, said the boy, rubbing his eyes and then suddenly arching his back in pain. Naruto, be careful, you're not fully healed yet. What happened, Gigi? Why am I here? Do you not remember Naruto? Last night, said a cat faced Anbu. And with this, the memories came flooding back in and Naruto suddenly cried. WYGG. Why? Why do they keep attacking me? said Naruto. I'm sorry, Minato. I couldn't fulfill your last wish, the third thought in his mind. That night, as Naruto slept, he found himself in a clear forest meadow. Around him were flowers of all kinds and the meadow looked like it stretched for miles after miles. Naruto then began to walk around the meadow, wondering just exactly where he was. Welcome, said a figure, obviously female from the tone of voice. Naruto then turned to see just who this was and when he turned, he saw a beautiful woman dressed in a long white robe that was supposedly like a tunic as it somehow was wrapped around her body. She wore golden sandals and on her right wrist was a golden bracelet, while on the other wrist was a silver one. She wore around her neck a necklace with a crescent moon and a star. She had fair skin and pure golden hair that curled at the edges. Her eyes were a golden color and looking at her, one would feel security and peace. She wore a smile on her face as she faced Naruto and then she began to speak. I am Hanako, the goddess of eternal blessing and harmony, I have seen your life and I am not pleased. Ea. Hanako-chan, where are we and why are we here? We are in the meadow of harmony and we are here to discuss you. M me? You um, okay then. Now listen carefully. In the world are different life forms. Plants, animals, humans, demons, and angels. Just as Naruto was about to interrupt, she gave Naruto a look and he immediately went silent. In society and in current philosophies, angels are known as the embodiments of light and good. However, that is not completely true. Angels are neither good nor bad and they live for different reasons. Each angel is special in his or her own way, and because of this, we angels have different abilities. Some angels specialize in combat, some in flying, some in healing, some in elemental combat, and some in stealth. I I see. Please go on then Hanako-ne, said Naruto, absorbing the new found information. Among the angels are the celestial angels, oblivious to the outside world, Naruto was actually being watched carefully by the Hokage and the three Anbu. I'm so sorry, Naruto. I've failed you and your father. Forgive me Minato. I hope you're all right Naruto-kun. You'd better get well soon, Gaki. Those stupid fools will soon see who you truly are, Naruto kun, in due time. And you are a celestial angel, one of my own. W wow. I'm really an angel and a celestial, as you say I am? Yes, it is true. B, but I'm not smart though, Nei Chan. That is because of something that those foolish humans put on you a restricting seal. A restricting seal? What's that and W why? It would seem that those foolish humans believe you to be weak. W. -wa. But then Hanako took a hold of his hand and pulled him towards her, while uttering words from a different language. Purgatio Vox of Celestial Angelus, cleansing power of the celestial angel. Take a habitum of Meus Successio Manus Manus, take a hold of my descendant's hand. Quad Purgo him in temporaliter and cleanse him eternally. And immediately different seals began to show up on Naruto's whole body including the Shiki Fuin, seal that keeps Kayubi, and one by one, they each floated over his skin and broke into pieces like broken glass. The seals turned white when they broke, then they faded away, and his clothes also ripped under the pressure. A bright light then engulfed the meadow and Hanako covered her eyes with her hand, while staying at a safe distance from Naruto, who was screaming in pain. After the light cleared out, Naruto was seen on the ground and a white tunic covered him and he also had pure white wings, not quite big though. Next to him was a tall figure of a man. He had blood red hair and was clothed in a dark red yukata, which was adorned with golden foxes that came together on the left side of the yukata. The foxes looked as if they were real as they were a golden color. The man had shoulder length red hair that was neatly tied in a ponytail. The man wore black sandals and on his right ring finger was a golden red ring, also adorned with a fox. Besides the ring, he also wore a black necklace with a fox charm hanging on it. The man's face was well developed, he looked very mature and had an aura that demanded respect. On his cheeks were three thick whiskers and he seemed to have a shocked face and long fangs could be seen, extending from the inside of his mouth. What? Where am I? Welcome Kayubi to my domain. 
I am Hanako, the goddess of eternal blessing and harmony. W wa. Hanako sama. Then Kayubi bowed down on his knees. Please stand, Kayubi. I am pleased to see that you are quite respectful, but we must discuss your host, Uzumaki Naruto. Kayubi then stood up with a solemn look on his face and then spoke, I see, so what do you wish to speak of, about the kit? Well, he is a celestial angel, one of my own, and considering what has been happening to him since his birth, I felt the need to speak to him and to tell him of his heritage. A celestial. I understand what you mean Hanako-sama, but I've been doing all I can for the little kit. I heal him when he is hurt, but the seal kept my power from interfering. I see. Thank you for helping Naruto-kun, Kayubi. I was there when Minato-kun had to seal you and I know that it was that disgusting snake man Orochimaru who caused you to go berserk. You know. Sai I thought I would be punished for the near destruction of that village, but I see that you know what really happened. Well, anyway, concerning the kit's heritage. I will tell him myself. He needs to know the truth, everything. Then Kayubi turned to Hanako, eyes wide. E everything? You mean everything? Of course, he deserves to know everything, but we must train him. Train him? Are you sure Hanako-sama? Yes, Kayubi. I really do mean it. His wings have already started to develop so we must plan now. We will speak to him when he wakes up. Of course Hanako-sama. Now, concerning his training. Hokage-sama, he still hasn't woken up and probably won't yet for a long time. Are you sure you want to wait? Said the medic Anbu. Don't worry, Rin. I will wait, said the old Hokage. H hi Hokage-sama, Rin said and then left the room to get more medical supplies if needed. So besides the two of us, there will be another who will also teach him. Yes, Kayubi. There will be another. However, his time has not yet come. I see, so for now, it will just be the two of us. Yes, for now anyway, the two of us are enough for him. Well, since the seal is gone, am I able to be free? Well, you will stay in his mind for a while, but you are free. In a way, but don't worry. The cleansing spell I used not only cleansed him for those restricting seals, but his whole body. He no longer has those whisker marks or the ignorant brain that he once had. However, he should still be able to call upon your chakra if needed. Okay then Hanako-sama. While I am happy that his ignorance is finally gone, what about the whisker marks and the sudden growth spurt? Surely, the Hokage will notice, or probably already has noticed, that. No, only you and I know of this. I have cast an illusion on him for the time being so that no one will know of the sudden changes. However, while I am not pleased with the current Hokage, I am glad to know that he has been trying to protect Naruto-kun, even if it's not enough, at least he tries. So you will tell him then? In due time. I see, I see. Then Naruto's wings slowly faded away and his eyes slowly opened and he blinked. Naruto POV, Yuuk. What happened? Where am I? Then as I was thinking, I remembered, Hanako nay, what happened? I turned to her immediately and then saw some tall guy with red hair next to her. I was about what? Who's the tall guy with red hair? Naruto-kun, please calm down. I will give you all of your answers. Then after hearing her voice, I calmed. It was amazing. When she talked, it felt like peace overtook me. Well, Kit, since you want to know who I am, let me tell you a story. I was about to say something. But then Hanako Ne gave me a serious face, so I just closed my mouth and listened. One day, there was a fox with his mate and kits. The fox and his family lived in a cave in the middle of a forest. The fox left the cave to hunt for food for his little kits, but when he came back, his kits and mate were dead. The fox was obviously angry, and when he smelt the cave, it smelled of snakes. So the fox left the cave and smelled the air for any snakes. The fox smelled snakes in the north, in a village called Konohagakure. The fox then went berserk because of the sudden loss of his only family. As the fox was destroying the village, thinking that the snake man was there, a blonde ninja, known as the Yandaimi Hokage, sealed the fox into a child who was just born. Why are you telling me this? screamed Naruto, fearing what the answer would be. You are the child, Naruto. The fox was sealed into you. Patefacio pectus pectoris ut illic existo hod lies, open the heart that there be no lies. And no, it can't be. The Yandaimi killed it, he killed the nine tailed fox. Then this time Naruto screamed and was about to run, but he didn't seem to notice that Hanako had been casting a spell and had just finished. 
permissum him animadverto verum, let him see the truth. Non deceptio. No deception. Then Naruto's body shone white and he fell to the ground on his knees, the light still shining. Then the light slowly faded away and Naruto could be seen, on his knees. Kayubi was not lying Naruto-kun. Now please stand up. Hanako was already in front of Naruto when he turned his head up and she was holding out her hand, a gentle smile on her face. Naruto then took her hand and stood up. The truth sometimes is hard to accept, but you must know the truth regardless the pain. This is something that you have to understand and accept Naruto-kun. The effects of the spell were clearly seen as Naruto's face was one of calm and understanding. I understand completely Hanako nay, I will listen. Good Naruto-kun. Now you have probably realized the truth about the Kaiubi from Kaiubi himself, right? Naruto then nodded to show that he did realize that. Well, it really wasn't Kaiubi's fault as he was trying to avenge his family. This snake man that Kaiubi speaks of is one of the three Sanin, Orochimaru. At the mention of his name, Kaiubi clenched his fists in anger and growled. However, Naruto's reaction was quite similar as Naruto not only clenched his fists in anger and growled, but he immediately screamed. What? When I see him, all. Naruto then began to speak of different torture methods, none of them pleasant. It's fine kit. While I'm happy that you also wish to destroy that disgusting man. Then Kayubi sneered in disgust. You are currently not strong enough to do so. Naruto was about to retort when Kayubi brought a hand to his mouth, silencing him. However, both Hanako-sama and I will train you and then that snake man will be nothing. So do you accept, Naruto-kun? Hanako now spoke. Of course. I accept. Ha ha ha, good, good. However, before we start training, Hanako-sama has something to tell you first. Hum? Okay then Hanako nay, I'm listening. Naruto then sat down on the grass and was waiting, listening attentively. Okay then Naruto-kun. I will tell you, but you must keep silent. Naruto nodded, showing that he was indeed listening. Well, Naruto, I will speak to you of your heritage. Naruto's eyes widened, but he still kept silent regardless. The Yandaimi was far too gracious and when he sealed Kayubi, he did not take just any child, but he took his own. Naruto, the Yandaimi Hokage aka Namikaze Minato, is your father. Naruto then became angry, angry that it was his idol and father who had made his life a nightmare, but before he could scream in rage, Hanako continued. However, Minato-kun did not intend to make your life a nightmare Naruto-kun, as his last wish was that you be treated as a hero. It is obvious that the villagers and some ninja failed to do so as they are too ignorant to see the difference between a demon and its holder. So your father died that day heroically, but his last wish was ignored by all, except for a specific few. I can say that your father was indeed very heroic and was a great leader. He loved the village very much, but if he saw what had happened to you, he would no longer be with the Shinigami, but would have actually risen from the dead just to destroy those ignorant villagers who failed to listen to his last wish. Naruto was now looking down, no longer angry at his father, but he was actually deep in thought. Does my father really love me? If he was alive, would he care for me? Then he suddenly jolted and looked up at Hanako. What about my mother? Then Hanako smiled at Naruto and began to pace around the meadow. Your mother was Kashina Uzumaki. She did not leave you or abandon you, but instead, she unfortunately died of childbirth as the Kayubi's attack caused her to suddenly become far too stressed and she gave birth to you prematurely. The stress of the Kayubi's attack and her premature labor caused her to die. However, she loved you very much and while she only held you for a little while, she loved you very much and did not leave without a parting gift. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this, parting gift? She left you, her blooding. You are the last to have the Uzumaki bloodline, Donum de Angelis or the Tenshi, gift of the angel or the heavenly gift. Uzumaki bloodline. Besides that, your father also held a bloodline, the Vox Vocis de Ventus or the Anse no Kays, the voice of the wind. S so I have two bloodlines, Naruto exclaimed. Yes, yes, you do. However, to be able to fully utilize the power of your two bloodlines, you must be trained. So you and Kayubi are going to train me right, Hanako ne? Naruto said, tilting his head as he said this, making him look quite cute. Hanako laughed and said, yes, both Kayubi and I will be teaching you. That's awesome. Ha ha ha, you find it fun for now, but when the tour I mean the training's over, you'll hate me. B but what about Hokage Gigi, won't he notice? 
Oh, don't worry, we will train you secretly. Awesome. So when do we start? It was a dark night and a storm could be heard. Thunder began to storm out and wind began its ceaseless howling. However, despite the cruel weather, in an Anbu hospital room, were two figures, both sleeping. The first figure was an old man who wore the robes of the Hokage and in his arms was a small figure. It was a small boy with blonde hair who wore civilian clothes which consisted of a blue t-shirt and black pants. The old man was holding the boy in his arms and the boy was hugging the old man through his small hands. Then the wind stopped and the thunder ceased its roaring. Thank you Gigi. F for E. Dot ever. Writhing, said the small figure, who began to tighten his hold on the old man. The old man all but smiled and a lone tear fell down on his face. He all but did the same as the small boy and just held tighter to the boy, but gently. And with that, the storm continued its tirade, the smiling face of the old man, never wavering. It was a bright morning for the people of Konohagakure no Sado. The sun shone brightly from its place in the heavens and the sunlight bathed the scenery and houses of the people. It seemed that the storm had stopped and had been replaced with sunny weather. Slowly. The old man woke, as the sunlight had radiated from the window to his still smiling face. Then shifting his head, he looked down, and saw the small child still wrapped in his arms. Then the small child also stirred and woke up. He rubbed his eyes and looked up at the old man, then smiled. Good morning Gigi. Naruto was now seen holding the hand of his surrogate grandfather as they both walked the streets to the Hokage Tower, despite the glares and dirty looks. Then when they both reached the front of the said tower, the guards slowly parted and bowed before the old leader who himself bowed to them also. When they walked inside, the old man was greeted with different greetings from each worker in the tower. Good morning Hokage-sama. Good morning Sandame-sama. Then as they drew nearer to the office, a woman who looked middle-aged suddenly rushed to them and bowed humbly. Good morning Hokage-sama. Do yo. Then she stopped as her gaze drifted to Naruto and she sneered but Naruto just gave her a glare. Excuse me, Hokage-sama, but why is it here? As she said this, she continued to sneer at the small boy. Then just after she said this, Naruto whispered, Arrow Adinamos, Impious Malair. Be weakened, wicked woman. Then the woman fell to her knees, clutching her head. The Hokage seemed shocked and then turned to Naruto, who was sporting a look of indifference on his face. Then the woman fainted since the pain was too much to bear. W what did you do Naruto? The Sandame said, unsure of what else to say. Nothing Gigi. I mean what can a five-year-old like me do? Naruto said this with an innocent face. So the Hokage just sighed and ordered an Anbu to take her to the hospital. Then they entered the Hokage's office and the Sandame sat in his big chair while Naruto sat in the chair facing him. Then Naruto suddenly had a serious expression and said, we need to talk. Flashback. We will train you tomorrow, but first. We will tell you the truth. Then Naruto immediately looked to Hanako, seriousness and determination shining in his little blue eyes. As you know, your mother was an angel. However, she was a death angel. Naruto looked at her questioningly but did not speak a word. You see, there are many different angels. Your mother was a death angel. Death angels were known for their abilities in silent killing, as well as their roles in destroying wicked souls. However, when my son, who was the leader of the angels before, made Eden and invited angels to join him, most of the death angels and a majority of all the other angels left with him. Only a few death angels and other angels stayed. Your mother's great-grandfather was one. He decided to build his own country so he resided in the land of the whirlpools with the few angels that were left. However, as they were too little to start a country, your mother's great-grandfather, Shin, decided to gather people who wished to live in a new country and so, Uzu no Kuni was born. However, there was a great war and Uzu no Kuni was no doubt greatly affected. In the end, Uzu no Kuni was devastated and only a few survived. These few people traveled to Konoha and began to live there. Your mother was among them and they treated her well as she was both kind and stubborn. She was the last surviving member of the Uzumaki royal family. The last angel, she grew up in Konoha and became well known. Her title was, The Red Death. Many feared and respected her. She eventually fell in love with a man named Namikaze Minato who incidentally was also an orphan. They both secretly married after your father was announced the Yandaimi Hokage. They eventually had you, but they kept it secret as they didn't want their enemies finding out. When you were only eight and a half months old, the Kayubi attacked. 
Your father had to do something fast as many were dying to keep the Kayubi away from the village. However, you know the true story of the Kayubi's attack as Kayubi himself told you. Then Naruto nodded. So your father hastily created the seal that would seal the Kayubi in you, the Shiki Fuin. He never wanted you to inherit the fate of a Jinchuriki, but he could not bear to let some other child take that fate so he decided do you would be the only one worthy enough to keep the Kayubi at bay. He really loved you Naruto-kun and he entrusted you with that great responsibility because he knew that you were the only one worthy enough to do so. Well, your mother gave birth to you prematurely due to the effect of having the Kayubi's killing intent surround the village. She eventually died since the stress was too much for her, but as I said before, she truly did love you. Then Naruto rubbed his eyes as tears began to pour out, but then Hanako hugged him tightly. After a few minutes she continued, but did not let go. Then the Sandame Hokage brought you before the council, but no one knew that you were the son of the Yandaimi. Only the Sandame, Jiraiya and Tsunade of the Sani knew. Then when he spoke to the council, the council wanted to have you killed. Those foolish humans' demand was not met however, as the Sandame immediately refused such a foolish requests. However, while the Sandiami was not there, the foolish humans placed restricting seals on you, just to make sure. They trash the last wish of the Hokage by celebrating the heroic death of the Yandaimi, but at the same time they beat you, the legacy of their hero. I am very disgusted. Then Naruto hugged her tightly, then turned to her, a solemn look on his face. Don't worry Hanako ne. Though they are but foolish humans, there are some who are not. Naruto smiled. He was no longer a brain dead idiot but his full potential was there. I understand what you mean Naruto kun. Now let me continue. I said that you were a celestial angel, right Naruto kun? Naruto nodded slowly, not quite understanding. Celestial angels are the highest of the angels. However, though they are highest, they are not arrogant fools or power hungry people like those humans. Celestials are very calm, happy, and serene. They each special abilities, and among the angels, they are very rare. They are treated with the utmost respect, but even though you are not treated respectfully, the angels will immediately respect you. We celestials have great potential and different abilities. Control over nature, a spirit bond, and healing abilities are but some of the abilities we have. So I will train you in the way of the celestial angel. Flashback end. What about, Naruto kun? The Hokage said uneasily. I want you tell me who my parents are. Naruto said seriously. W what? Dot um Naruto kun, your father die. Why don't you tell me the truth, Gigi? Naruto interrupted. The Hokage sighed and then said, Okay, then Naruto kun. Then he dismissed the Anbu and then activated the privacy seals that prevented anyone from seeing or hearing what was going on inside. Your father was Namikaze Minato, the Yandaimi Hokage. Then Naruto smiled, I know, but tell me about him. The Hokage suddenly looked in shock at Naruto. How'd he know? Well, your father was a brave, loving man and I want you to understand why I gave you your mother's surname. You see, your father had many enemies, especially in Iwa, because of his participation in the Third Great Shinobi War. He was known as Konoha's Yellow Flash and in the war, he earned this title by annihilating squads of Iwa ninja by using one of his techniques, the Hiraishin, Flying Thunder God. That is why I gave you your mother's surname. To protect you from your father's enemies. I see Gigi. Thank you for telling me. Now about my mother. Your mother's name was Uzumaki Kashina. She was a refugee from Uzu no Kuni, which was destroyed during the war. She was a very stubborn, yet caring, woman and she was well known, her title was the Red Death. Wow. That sounds amazing Gigi. So did they by chance leave anything? For me, the Hokage laughed, then opened a secret compartment hidden in the wall and took out two scrolls. These scrolls are scrolls from your father and mother. It can only be opened by a blood seal and by a spirit seal. For the blood seal, you must place a drop of your blood on it and for the spirit seal, inject some chakra into it. Then Naruto took the two scrolls into his small hands and smiled toothily, thanks Gigi. You're welcome Naruto. Then the Hokage suddenly remembered something and took out a scroll from a hidden safe, also hidden in the wall, and gave it to Naruto. This is a scroll that your mother and father wrote. In it are the basics of being a ninja as well as some very interesting information about certain things. Then Naruto took the other scroll in his hands, but seemed to be too much to carry so the Hokage took out another scroll. He then took the three scrolls and sealed them inside the smaller scroll and gave it to Naruto. 
I've sealed all the scrolls into this small one so that you can carry it. It can only be opened by a blood seal. I have not personally read any of those three scrolls myself, but be careful. Then Naruto pocketed the scroll and then ran to the Hokage, gave him a hug, then smiled, thanks Hokage Gigi, I'll see you later. Then Naruto ran out of the room and the Hokage sighed as the door closed, then took out an orange book from his now unlocked cabinet and began to silently giggle perversely. So my parents really did care. Even my dad. Naruto thought as he ran out of the Hokage Tower into the Hokage Monument, where hidden behind the monument was a narrow valley. Flashback. Your training will be hard, but in the end, you alone will profit immensely. Naruto nodded, agreeing with Hanako. So now that I have told you about your mother. You'd also want to know about your father, right? Then Naruto began to nod and nod and nod until Hanako herself put her hand on his head and then she smiled. Your father was Namikaze Minato, the Yandaimi Hokage. He was also an orphan like your mother and grew strong. He was trained as an apprentice by Jiraiya of the Sanin until he was nominated to be Hokage. He also has a bloodline, the voice of the wind. This bloodline greatly complements your other bloodline, the gift of the angel or the heavenly gift. Your father's bloodline allowed him to develop the Hiraishin since he had not fully inherited all of the abilities of the voice of the wind. You, however, inherited all of the abilities of this bloodline. The voice of the wind allows you to speak to the wind itself, which is where it got its name from. Also the wind can communicate with you and once mastered, you will have supreme control over the wind. However, due to the restricting seals placed on your body, you were unable to access your bloodlines, but once I removed them, you were able to utilize them. I will also aid you in learning to fully utilize your bloodlines so don't worry. Then Naruto thought for a while and suddenly voiced the question that had just passed through his mind. What will Kayubi do? As Naruto ran to train behind the Hokage monument, one thought went through his mind. Maybe Kayubi will tell me today. Then as he arrived there, he immediately went into a lotus position and began to meditate. Then he was greeted with the familiar surrounding of that beautiful meadow. When he turned his head, there he saw, Hanako sitting amidst the flowers. However, Kayubi seemed to be asleep as he leaned his back against the solid bark of the tree, which was a few feet away from where Hanako was. Then Hanako stood up, as well as Kayubi, who was stretching his muscles after his nap. I see you have gotten enough information from the Sandame Hokage and that you have taken your parents' scrolls. Naruto nodded, showing that he did indeed do so. Then it was the Kayubi's turn to speak, so Kit. You've been wondering what I'm going to be doing while Hanako-sama here will teach you how to properly utilize your bloodlines, right? Naruto once again nodded, but gave a questioning glance when Kayubi chuckled a bit. After he stopped laughing, he said, Well, Kit, let me explain something to you. You see, due to you being the former Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, me, well, your body absorbed some of my chakra. So because of this, you now have the ability to perform demonic abilities. Let's say. Naruto looked at Kayubi then nodded thoughtfully. Well, because of this, I will be teaching you how to properly use these abilities for good use. B but Kazuni, Naruto said hesitantly. Kayubi smiled upon hearing the kit's name for him, as he remembered just how he received that nickname. Flashback. While Naruto slept, he thought of all those people who truly cared for him. Hanako Ne, Hokage Gigi, those masked people, and Kayubi. At this moment, he had unconsciously said, thank you Gigi for everything, without noticing it. However, in his mind, he immediately landed in his mindscape, which was now a beautiful meadow, and ran to Kayubi who was against a tree, sleeping. Then Naruto, who was now openly crying, ran to Kayubi and began to hug the sleeping figure. The sleeping figure immediately woke and was surprised what the kit was doing. Th to ank why you? Naruto said, but sniffing as he said this. Then Kayubi smiled, a genuine smile, and hugged the little boy back. You're welcome little kit. Don't worry. Then Naruto continued to cry and then Kayubi finally spoke, M my name's Kazuki. Then Naruto smiled at Kazuki and then snuggled into his arms and muttered a faint, Kazu ni. Flashback end. B but Kazu ni. Won't my mother's bloodline negate this? Actually there is no taint or difference. It's just like receiving more power. Oh okay then Hanako ne. So is that it Kazu ni? Naruto said, tilting his head to the side. Kazuki laughed and then shook his head, saying, No, Naruto kun. I will also train you in your endurance, agility, strength, speed, 
stamina, willpower, and in your control. Though I doubt you'd need help for that. What do you mean Kazuni? Hanako then spoke, allow me to explain. You see Naruto-kun. Normally those with smaller chakra stores have easy control, while those with larger stores have little to no control. However, normally, angels adapt well and gain control of their energy faster than normal and considering the fact that you're a celestial. Getting full control over your nearly unlimited energy won't be too difficult. It will still take hard work though since just having full control would be cheating. Then how do you recommend I train my control then Hanako ne? Well, both Kayubi and I have different solutions. But we'll both help anyway, I see. Can you explain more please? I will first give you the easy exercises in gaining control. The humans should know of these techniques. Tree walking, water walking, and weapon balancing. Weapon balancing. Tree walking. Hanako then sighed before elaborating. Tree walking is walking on the tree, using its bark as your own surface. You will be able to stick by placing energy on the soles of your feet, just enough, then walking carefully up the tree. Too much and you will fall, but too little and you will also fall. Now weapon balancing is causing all types of weapons to float in the air above your hand, for example. Using your energy, push the weapon up from the palm of your hand like so. Then Hanako, who held a leaf at the palm of her hand, caused the leaf to float from its position on her palm. Naruto marveled at it and then smiled, waiting for Hanako to further explain. I advise you to start with a small rock, then a kanai, then shuriken, and then senbon. I say it in this order because the smaller it is the more difficult it will be to cause it to levitate. I see. Then Naruto took a leaf and holding it at the palm of his hand, the leaf began to float slowly, not as high as Hanako had done, but nonetheless, he was still able to levitate it. Then smiling, Naruto exclaimed, See, look Hanako ne, Kazuni, I'm doing it. Hanako smiled, while Kayubi just pat Naruto's head and then smiled, You're getting it. Just keep practicing and soon enough it will be easy. Now about my training, I want you to train your agility, speed, stealth, and stamina. Your strength will need to wait, though I will get to that soon enough. I want you to prank people. Naruto then sweat dropped and said, P prank. Why? Well, it seems stupid, but setting up the prank will indeed increase your mind capacity, as well as help you in strategy and planning. Each prank requires creativity, which you will keep boosting as you continually prank people. As people try to chase you, you can improve your stealth, agility, speed, and stamina by seeing how long you can hide, how fast you can hide, and how much stamina you have to keep going on. And above all that, you're going to be having fun. Then Naruto smiled and began to think carefully. I don't want to have an emotionless kit who does nothing but follow orders like a robot. We're building up your character and good judgment. Naruto nodded, so I'll just prank people and do those control exercises that Hanako Ne told me to do. No. Not just that, you see, there is a wise saying, knowledge is power. I'm sure you understand completely what that means, right? Naruto looked sort of unsure, but nodded nonetheless. Simply we want you to read and study. Then Naruto fully understood and looked to Kazuki about something, I need to learn how to read though. Actually, being a celestial allows you the ability of omnigualism. The ability to understand every language as well as being able to adapt. S so I can read and write already. Well. Not exactly since this ability has not yet fully awakened, but at its stage, you will be able to understand more clearly so I would just need to teach you, but I wouldn't exactly have a very hard time. Okay. And besides your human language, we will teach you the other languages. Other languages. I will teach you the angelic tongue, Latin, and Kayubi. I will teach you the demonic tongue, which is similar to the angelic tongue. Also. Because of the spirit bond that all celestial angels have, you will be able to speak to animals. S so animals are going to start talking to me. Then Kazuki laughed at the concept of that, while Hanako just shook her head. No, not like that. It is not really understanding of their language, but like I said, it is more of a spirit bond, so you will be able to understand animals more clearly and the same for them. Though not all of them will speak to you. I see. So is that it? Actually Kit, one more thing when we said for you to read and study. We want you to read and study as much as you can. As much as I can. We are simply saying we wish for you to seek knowledge, not just in one subject, but in all. From cooking, to human anatomy, history, human, demonic, and angelic, herbs, sewing, fishing, art, 
strategies, psychology, medicine, mathematics, biology, animal science, prophecy, and so on. And if you complete your training well, I will make you a knowledge seeker. What's that? They are a type of angel, such as celestial and death angels, and are special angels called knowledge seekers. Their roles are to seek knowledge, both good and bad, and then archive it in the great library. If you gather enough knowledge, you may be allowed entrance there. Wow, that sound awesome. But how am I going to get all of that knowledge? Then both Hanako and Kayubi smiled. We will teach you the cage bunshin, shadow clone. Back at the Hokage Tower, a certain old man sneezed while completing his paperwork. Curse you, Minato. You never told me how you beat this dreaded paperwork. The cage bunshin. It is a technique that allows you to create a clone of yourself, but it is not like any other bunshin. Normally you would not be able to perform this technique, but considering the fact that you extremely large chakra stores, you are more than able to do this technique, so we will teach you. Then Hinako whispered, Tarina Silakritas, temporary animation, and right before them an image of a person appeared. Now watch closely Naruto-kun, I've created an illusion to show you how to do the cage bunshin. Naruto nodded, then watched in anticipation. The illusion was of a man, who looked like a normal ninja. The illusion brought its hands together in a cross sign, then exclaimed, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Shadow Clone Technique. Then next to the illusion, smoke suddenly burst out and when the smoke cleared, there was an exact copy of the man in the illusion. Eximo, release, said Hanako. Then the illusion faded away. So did you watch closely? Naruto nodded and then copying what the man did, he put his hands together in a cross shape and then said, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Then there appeared ten Naruto's from the smoke. Kazuki and Hanako looked impressed and Kazuki actually clapped. Very good kit. That technique is a Junin level technique since it is takes a huge amount of chakra to maintain. Now this technique holds with it many benefits. Kazuki, please demonstrate its benefits. Kazuki nodded, then signaled for one of the clones to follow him. Both of them walked behind the large tree that Kazuki was undoubtedly having a nap on earlier. From behind the tree, they could not be seen from Naruto's viewpoint and after a few seconds, something exploded from behind the tree, leaving a trace of smoke. Kazuki then appeared back in his place, right in front of Naruto. Then Naruto suddenly jolted and pointed a finger at Kazuki. Why you hit me? Then suddenly he realized what he had just said and asked, how? That is one of the benefits of the cage bunshin, once a clone is dispelled, the original person will gain all of that clone's knowledge. This technique is very useful if done properly and will help you in your knowledge seeking. So, I could just make some clones, get them to read books, dispel them, and then I'd get the knowledge? Yes, yada. Naruto jumped in the air as Kazuki laughed and Hanako looked amused. After Naruto got back on the ground, Hanako spoke, however, you must be careful in using this technique since dispelling all of your clones at the same time may prove to be too much for your mind to handle. So when dispelling clones, Dispel them in groups of three so that your mind will not be overloaded and so that you will not receive a migraine. Arigato, Hanako ne. Now listen kit, though the clones may help you in that area of expertise, you must build up your physique and stature alone. The clones only help with your mind, only through hard work will you be able to train physically. H hi kazu ni. I will value hard work. Good. Now that all's in order, you can read those letters from your parents now. Naruto smiled and was about to leave when Hanako stopped him. Wait Naruto-kun, Hanako said, as she held his arm, remember to train physically, study hard, complete all those control exercises and well, one more thing. Meditate. Meditation will help with your control, but I do not mean like ordinary meditation where you clear your mind, but just enter a state of peace and calm and then just listen to the environment. This will help you greatly since this type of meditation can be practiced anywhere. Hanako then let go of his hand and smiled, be careful out there. And remember both Kazuki and I will be watching. Naruto nodded, smiled, then faded away. The kit will achieve great things. No, Hanako-sama. Aye, it is true. Naruto opened his eyes and looked around. He then realized that he was back at the hidden place behind the Hokage mountain. He carefully stood up and putting his hands together in a familiar seal, said, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. At that, 35 clones appeared and then bowed to their original, who simply smiled and said, 10 of you please practice the tree walking exercise, 
another 10 of you practice the water walking exercise, another 10 practice leaf balancing, and the last 5 of you meditate. As he said this, he was pointing to the trees of the surrounding forest, to a lake just near the trees, and to a clearing which was full of leaves. The clones nodded, then began their tasks, while Naruto unsealed the scroll after placing his blood on the blood seal. Only one scroll came out, which was his father's scroll. Placing the smaller scroll back in his pocket, he opened the scroll entitled to him from his father by placing a blood seal and a spirit seal by both placing his blood and then channeling some chakra into the spirit seal. To Naruto, hey Naruto, how are ya? You're probably genin or something, right? Well, I'm sorry for placing this huge burden on you, but I could only trust you, my son. The Kayubi no Kitsune was unfortunately sealed into you on the day of your birth and my last wish was for you to be treated as a hero, but that wish was probably ignored. Anyway, since I haven't got long now, I'll just come straight out with it, you have a bloodline, two to be exact, one from me and one from your mother. I'm not exactly sure if you will activate both, but I will tell you anyway. You see, my bloodline is called the Voice of the Wind. However, I am not able to fully activate this bloodline so instead I improvised, by creating a technique called the Hiraishin, but that'll have to wait for now. This bloodline allows full control and manipulation of the wind. Well, it's almost time, so before I finish writing this, I've placed three scrolls within this scroll. One for our clan's techniques, which I know you'll be able to master, one for my Hiraishin technique, which I know you will improve, and lastly one for my other created technique, the Rasengan. However, this technique is not yet completed, but I know that you'll finish it too. Well time's short and time's a waston so before I write goodbye, I want to say, I love you Naruto, your mother and I love you very much, and we want you to know that we believe in you. By the way, Jiraiya and Tsunade of the Sanin are your godparents so I know that you are in safe hands. We love you son. Love, your father Namikaze Minato. P.S. Reseal this scroll by saying, Fu and I was a seals master. As Naruto read the letter, he noticed that there were teardrops and after reading all of it, he cried. Not in sadness, but in joy, they really did love me. Then after Naruto finished crying, he resealed the scroll into the originally small scroll and took out his mother's scroll. To Naruto, hello Naruto, this is your mother, Kashina Uzumaki. I'm writing this for you, knowing that you will receive it gladly. Unfortunately, I feel as if I'm going to pass soon. Right now while I write this letter, there you are in my stomach, only seven months old. No one knows that I am writing this letter, not even your father himself, but I felt that it was wise that I write something to you in case I'm not there. If I'm there, then I guess I would be happy. But if not, then I guess you'd be crying. I'm sorry if I'm not there Naruto, but I know that whether or not I'm there, you'll be able to shine like the light you are. I also write this letter to tell you of something important your bloodline, or two actually considering the fact that your father also has one. My bloodline that I'm sure you will inherit is known as the heavenly gift of the gift of the angel. You see Naruto, the Uzumaki clan descended from real angels and well, I'm one too. This bloodlines gives you amazing abilities, but it all depends on what type of angel you are. You see, there are many different types of angels, but despite the differences, I was told that we lived in harmony. I am a death angel, but I'm not so sure about you. If you are, then congratulations. If you are not, I still say, congratulations, regardless. I've left in this scroll four scrolls. One about the Uzumaki clan history, one about the Uzumaki clan techniques, one from me about the techniques I've created, and lastly one with my weapon, Falx de Nex Angelus, the scythe of the death angel. This weapon of mine has been passed from generation to generation. The original holder was my great-grandfather, who was the head of the Death Angels. All information on this will be on the scroll. Now remember this, I will always love you. Love. Your mother Uzumaki Naruto Naruto once again smiled, but did not cry. I must be strong for my parents. I will show the world their legacy. Then he confidently resealed his mother's scroll and took out the last one. To Naruto, this scroll will give you the basics and in time if you are deemed ready. The scroll will change its instructions to more difficult ones. You see, this scroll is guarded by a guardian spirit and to see this spirit, you must call upon him. If you are able to do so, then you are more than worthy of this scroll. We love you. Your mother and father, Namikaze Minato and Uzumaki Kashina. And so Naruto began with his training as he called upon the guardian spirit of the scroll. Custodes Ili Scientia, 
Suscitatio, keeper of this knowledge, awaken. Then there was a bright light and the scroll began to float in the air. Then when the light eventually faded away, there was the figure of a man. This man wore golden robes and had shoulder-length golden white hair, which was bound together as a ponytail. The golden robes resembled a kimono and he wore sandals. He was very handsome and his eyes held wisdom. After being summoned, he turned to Naruto and said, Hello. I am the keeper of this knowledge. Have you summoned me? The Naruto, wanting to make a good impression, bowed, then spoke, H. Hi, I summoned you. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. Then the keeper turned to Naruto and gasped, Naruto-sama. Then he bowed and said, I have heard the news. That you are the last celestial. Then Naruto, embarrassed, blushed, then scratched the back of his head, said, Why yes. Hanako ne told me yesterday. Then the keeper stood up, took his hand, and said, Let us go then. We will come back later. Then Naruto just nodded and signaled the keeper to go on. The keeper then nodded and simply whispered, Transporto. Then both figures faded away. They both appeared in another beautiful meadow, but it was different from where Naruto usually met Hanako and Kazuki. It was still quite beautiful though. Then the keeper spoke, My name is Kustos. I am a guardian angel. Then Naruto spoke, Nice to meet you Kustos. You probably know who I am right? Hi. You are the last celestial on earth. Celestia Namakaze Uzumaki Naruto. Why yes. So. Since I opened the scroll and called upon the keeper. Then Kustos suddenly jolted and laughed, embarrassed, Go Gomen, well, I'll be teaching you. Are really? In what? Naruto said. Oh okay. Please calm down. Now you know about clones. Do you not? Ah. I forgot all about them. They're back at the clearing. Then why don't you dispel them now? Naruto nodded and then was about to dispel all of them, but then remembered, Hanako ne said to dispel them in small groups. Then Naruto began to dispel them three by three. He was amazed at the information, but at the same time, there was only a hint of pain with every three clones. So Hanako sama has shown you the proper use of clones. That's good. And I'm also amazed at the way you're coping. Well, let me start teaching you now then. After Naruto dispelled all the clones, he stood still for a few seconds to adjust to the newfound information in his head. Then after fully absorbing all the information, he turned to Kustos and nodded his head, I'm ready. I see. Now I want you make as much clones as you can without losing consciousness. Naruto nodded and forming the correct hand seal, he exclaimed, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Then smoke exploded around the area and when the smoke cleared, there were 70 clones. Kustos was more than amazed, he clapped, a amazing, so many. Now I want 20 of those clones to do the tree walking exercise, another 20 for the water walking exercise, and another 20 for leaf balancing. And the last 10 will read these books. Then he pulled out books from behind his back and handed it to the clones. When they looked at the books, the topics were ranging from strategy and planning to the human anatomy. There was also one about the basics of chakra, seals, and spells. There was even one about Latin and another about cooking and herbs. Then the clones nodded after each receiving their different tasks and went off to begin their training, whether it be tree walking, water walking, leaf balancing, or just reading, each clone had something to do. Then Kustos turned to Naruto and said, I will now teach you the basic three or what you ninjas call the, the three academy techniques. However, we are going to be doing them each differently. The first I will teach you is a technique equivalent to the Henge no Jutsu, but this is a more improved version. The Mutatio Ars, Vultus Amoveo, Transformation Arts, Shapeshift. T that means shapeshift, right? Yes, it does. That's good. Your gift in omnigualism is getting better. And well, like the name, this technique is literally a transformation. This technique allows the user to transform either themselves or another object into the appearance of another person, animal, or object. A drawback with this technique is that it requires constant emission of energy while mentally maintaining the form. On top of that, the user would be, most likely, interacting with the environment. This puts much mental strain on an inexperienced user. So although it seems like a basic technique, it is more that that and if you continue to train in this technique, you will find out that this technique is very helpful. Naruto nodded, saying, S so how do I perform it? Well, first, focus energy around your body, and then think of the person, animal, or object that you wish to transform into. The same effect can also be achieved if you focus energy around an object, but for now, 
let's see you try it. Naruto nodded, then closed his eyes and concentrated. He felt his energy, but he needed it around him. So focus the energy around your body and then transform. Then Naruto spoke, Mutatio Ars, Voltus Amoveo, Transformation Arts, Shapeshift. Then Naruto slowly transformed, into Kustos. Kustos watched, amused, then laughed. S so, that's good. Now try and become other things. Naruto then began to transform into different things, such as rocks, trees, and other people. I see that you have completed it well. Now this is the next technique and it is similar to the Academy's body replacement technique. The Subpano R's substitution technique. This technique lets the user quickly switch places with another nearby object, such as a plant normally a section of a log, an animal, or even another person within reach, the moment an attack hits. This creates an optical illusion, making the enemy think the attack was successful. The user can then use this confusion to escape or launch a counterattack. Exploding tags can be attached to the replacement for an added surprise. Now to perform this technique, once again focus energy, but this time, focus the energy on a specific object, animal, or even person, and from then expel the energy in there. Replacement. Naruto nodded, showing his understanding, then followed Kusto's instruction. First, he focused energy on a nearby rock, then after gathering enough energy, expelled it, saying, Subpano R's substitution technique. Then from there, he and the rock disappeared in a cloud of smoke and when the smoke cleared, both Naruto and the rock had swapped places. Naruto grinned, happy that he was once again able to perform the technique. Yada. I did it, again Kusto's san Kusto's smiled, then said, please just call me Kusto's Naruto. And well done, once mastered, you will be able to replace yourself and even other people in the blink of an eye and on impulse. Now the last one. Proficio de Sum Sindo, Art of Body Splitting. This technique creates intangible copies of the user. Normally the clones are simply illusions and will dissipate when they come into contact with something, and a person with normal eyes can distinguish the clones from the original, since the clones will not disrupt the area around themselves with their movement, won't kick up dust, crush grass, etc. But these clones are different since they are made directly from your life energy. They are exactly like you and as the name implies, it is as if your body split itself to form another lookalike. This clone has its own chakra system, but the amount of chakra they receive depends on the user. So you may put enough chakra to make them last a whole day, this I doubt you will have trouble with. So they are like the cage bunshin. Well, yes, since they also receive information and when dispelled the original will receive all the information. If you truly master this, the clones will be able to have minds of their own meaning they themselves are their own person and have a strong chance of survival. And also they will have at least half of your chakra in them, and you wouldn't lose a lot of chakra though since your energy source is near unlimited. With training, you will be able to reach that limit where your energy cannot be depleted. Well, to perform this technique, all you have to do, is gather as much energy as you want the clone to have. Then picturing that clone, release the energy. Naruto nodded then muttered, Proficio de sum sindo, art of body splitting. In that exact moment, 50 clones appeared. However, Naruto looked quite tired. It's okay Naruto. That alone is already a great start since you've already created 70. Now training is finished. We will meet again in two days and during that time. I expect you to be practicing all that I've taught you. I also want you to continue reading and studying. Keep the books and when you're done just say, Reverto, return, and the books will come back to me. Then Naruto bowed, and smiled, saying, Thank you Kusto's sensei. I will practice and study as you said, I'll make you really really proud of me. Then Kusto's smiled and walked up to Naruto, messed up his hair a bit, then said, I know you will. Then Kusto's began to fade away, but not before he said, And if you really have improved, I'll teach you more techniques. Sayonara Naruto-kun. And with that, Kusto's completely disappeared and Naruto looked around seeing no one, began to practice. Time skip. Few hours later after Naruto had finished training, he was quite exhausted and very happy at his improvement. He had fully mastered the transformation technique and could now perform the technique with just a simple two words and in two seconds, he would have fully transformed, or shape shifted. He had also trained in transforming different objects and had been practicing transforming whole trees. His replacement technique had also improved. He had not yet mastered it, but he had definitely improved. 
he could now replace things quite fast and could instantly replace himself with a leaf. However, he still needed to say the words of the spell in order to perform the technique. He had already mastered his clone technique and could create clones, without so much a word. He could create at least 300 at maximum. They had proved useful since he would give them each different tasks and they would perform it obediently. His chakra control had also definitely improved. He could walk up trees and walk on water without even having to concentrate. Also, his leaf balancing had gone great, as well as his meditation and usually he would practice both at the same time. First, he get into a meditating position and then while closing his eyes, he would focus on causing each leaf near him to float. This helped in his chakra control and would help him in the future with genjutsu, illusions and with medical ninjutsu. He had exited the clearing by uttering a simple, reverdo. He had of course left home after dispelling all of his clones, in groups of three. The information still amazed him and he walked home, content. As he opened the door to his apartment and then walked over to his bed, he thought of all of the things he would be able to do soon since his knowledge on those books he read had come back to him. Then he smiled and fell asleep. However, as he slept a voice could be heard, I will protect you, my child. In Naruto's mind, Hanako was smiling, as well as Kazuki. He is doing well. Yes, I agree Hanako-sama, he will be very strong in the future. Yes, he will Kazuki. Now all we can do is help him and wait. Then Hanako disappeared, leaving Kazuki or the Kyubi alone in Naruto's mindscape, which was now a forest. It was once again a bright day as one Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto woke up. As he woke, he noticed that around his apartment, birds began to sing and the sunlight shone brightly from his windowsill. He stood up, blearily, and then rubbed his eyes. Slowly getting up, he looked at his alarm clock and groaned, 6.30. Then after fully getting up, he walked slowly to the shower and began to strip. After that, he turned to the shower, with eyes still half closed, and turned on the cold water. At first, he jolted, but then got used to the feeling of the cold water on his skin. He slowly shampooed his hair and then covered his body with soap. Slowly rinsing, he repeated the cycle, then took his towel and began to dry himself. After getting out of the shower, he walked into his bedroom and looked at the mirror. He saw tan gold skin and golden yellow hair. He walked over to his wardrobe and thought, I better keep training. He took out of his wardrobe, a blue shirt with a swirl on it and black shorts that reached down to his knees. He also took out a pair of shoes. Then after getting ready, he pocketed that small scroll from before and walked up to his door, thinking, I'd better go shopping. Naruto walked outside and went to the marketplace, where people seemed to start walking to, doing some morning shopping. However, as he walked, many glared, sneered, and some even spat. He could hear their whispers of, demon. He never understood why they did that. He had never done anything to deserve that nickname. So shaking his head at the previous thoughts, he wandered into what looked like a clothes shop. Then he began to look around for anything to buy. As he was looking, the store owner immediately walked over to him and with a fake smile, said, do you have anything you like? Naruto of course, immediately saw this. He had learned how to read people and had already seen through the fake smile so deciding to copy the man, he also smiled a fake smile. However, his fake smiles were so good, that only if you really knew Naruto then would you be able to distinguish between his fake and real smiles. No, I'm just looking around sir, Naruto wanted to be polite, but as he said this, he saw the man grit his teeth then gave that obviously fake smile and said, well, I got something that you might like. Wanna see? Naruto, born curious, just nodded his head, but was still wary and watched the man carefully as the man walked away. He followed the man until they reached a rack with what looked like an orange jumpsuit. This is one of our best. Why not buy this? The man was obviously giving yet another fake smile. Naruto just thought, that jumpsuit. So ugly. ERHMM. I'm okay. I was just looking anyway. Then with that, Naruto turned to exit the shop but not before hearing, the demon brat. He clenched his fists together, then just walked off, thinking, nobody will probably sell me anything. So. Then Naruto walked to an alley and slowly whispered, Voltus. Amoveo, shapeshift. As Naruto walked out of the alley, he no longer looked the same as before, but he now had brown spiky hair and wore the same clothes. He then went back to that same shop and began to look around. This time, however, the man from before didn't sneer or give fake smiles, but actually offered to help the boy. 
Naruto just shook his head and politely answered, and no, thank you. Then the man walked off, but not before giving a genuine smile. So the people here aren't necessarily evil, they just hate me. Then he found what he was looking for and walked to the counter. He took out Gama Chan from his pocket and handed the money to the cashier, who smiled gently. He instantly thanked her and then looked at his purchases. He had bought three shirts, black, red, and blue. He had also bought three pairs of pants. And finally, he had bought himself some socks and underwear. Then he carried his bags and walked out of the shop, but as he walked away, he heard, Thank you. Please come again. He just smiled as he walked out of the shop. Then he went back to an alley and a second later, two clones slowly appeared into existence. Then Naruto said, Please bring these bags back to the apartment. Then turning to the other clone, he said, And you, follow me. The clones slowly nodded and both clones' shape shifted into different looking boys. One took the bags from the original then began to run to the apartment. While the other followed the original as he walked out of the alley and toward a grocery store. Once inside, Naruto began to look for some food to buy and the clone did the same. After finding what he wanted to buy, he double-checked each and every item. Eggs, check. Milk, check. Bread, check. Ramen, check. Bananas, check. Bacon, check. That's good. I got everything. Then after double-checking, he went to the cashier, then paid for the items and once outside the shop, he spoke to the clone, Siang, here, please bring these stuff to the apartment. Then clean up the apartment. After saying that, the clone nodded, then after taking the bags from the original, he nodded, then went to complete his task. Naruto then walked to the clearing where he trained from the day before. After getting there, he whispered, Proficio de sum sindo, art of body splitting. Then seventy clones faded into existence. He smiled at them, then spoke, Twenty of you please practice the tree walking exercise, another twenty please practice the water walking exercise, and then another twenty please practice the meditation and leaf balancing. And the last ten of you go to the library, but shapeshift first and then please read about something, anything that seems easy. Start with the basics of chakra and the basics of cooking or something. And with each clone having their own task, they each proceeded to complete their tasks. He then wandered into a secluded place, a place that only he knew since he occasionally wandered around the area anyway. It was a small meadow inside of a cave. Only Naruto could enter since the entrance was very small. Inside there was grass and a small stream. Sunlight came from various gaps in the cave's ceiling. The wind flowed freely inside also and Naruto felt the wind's caress cover him. He had never before felt so peaceful. Then sitting down on the grass, he took out the small scroll in his pocket and once again took out his father's scroll. Opening the scroll, he put some blood on the blood seal that was hidden inside the scroll. He took out the scroll that his father had said, held the Namikaze clan's techniques. I'll make my parents proud. Then with that thought in mind, he opened the scroll and saw the beginning of the scroll. This is the ancient scroll of the Namikaze. Only those worthy may be able to read the secrets of this scroll. If this scroll finds the reader worthy, he, she must place a drop of blood below. Then below those words was a large circle. Guess that's where I put my blood. Then he continued to read. With your blood, the scroll will assess the reader's skill level. Then using the knowledge gained, the scroll will show the reader what he, she may be able to learn. Then with that, he pricked his finger, then placed a drop onto the blood seal. The scroll glowed a bit, then words began to form on the scroll. To the reader of this scroll, Celestia Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. Then Naruto continued to read and noticed that there was at least one technique. That's a good start. Then Naruto began to read carefully. The voice of the wind allows the user to hear and communicate with the wind. This forms a somewhat spiritual bond. The wind will be able to help and even save the user. Also, the user must be sure to listen to the wind's wise words. As the user grows, his, her bond with the wind also grows. The first exercise would be to just, be still, and to listen to the voice of the wind. Naruto understood this, then sat down in a meditative position and closed his eyes. At first there was nothing, but then after Naruto calmed down, he could hear it. I am the voice of the wind, you must be a Namikaze child. Then Naruto smiled and spoke, why yes, my name is Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. I see, I accept you with this gift. Well. I will continue to watch you child. Naruto smiled, then got up and began to continue to read from the scroll. 
After hearing the voice of the wind and having the wind accept you, you can now practice some techniques. Normally wind techniques can be used by anyone with a wind affinity, but with this gift, the voice of the wind, the techniques are far more effective and dangerous. There is also no need for hand signs. The blade of wind. This technique is a pinpoint slashing strike, where the user emits chakra from their fingertips and materializes it into an invisible sword that assaults the enemy in a gust of wind and making a slicing sound. This technique is an uncatchable, unavoidable longsword. It leaves very deep slashes on the enemy. Naruto paused and then began to practice the use of performing the technique. At first nothing came out, but then he remembered the words of the scroll. So gather some energy at my fingertips, then materialize it into an invisible sword. Then after doing so, he said, blade of wind. Then a long blade of wind materialized from his fingertips and shot out to the tree. The tree fell, as if cut down by an invisible axe. Naruto smiled, oh, this is definitely useful. Once the user is able to perform this technique with his, her fingertips, continue to practice until the user is able to create these slashes from the palms of his hand or even his feet. Naruto marveled at that. From my feet. Then he looked on to the next technique. Wind release. Great breakthrough this is a relatively simple technique that creates a sudden gust of wind, but its scale varies greatly depending on the user. If used by a superior shinobi, it has enough destructive power to knock down a large tree. The wind from the squall can blow away all things in the user's line of sight. A variation of the technique involves a smaller blast of wind which gets ignited with flame. So Naruto began to practice this technique also, but unfortunately, he could only create a small gust. I'll practice it later. Now on to the last technique. Wind release. Body flicker this jutsu is a high-speed movement technique, allowing a ninja to move short to long distances at an almost untraceable speed. To an observer, it appears as if the user has teleported. It is accomplished by using chakra to temporarily vitalize the body and move at extreme speeds. The amount of chakra required depends on the overall distance and elevation between the user and their intended destination. Naruto actually understood this, and he imagined a location, which was a few feet away, and then he body flickered. However, there was no smoke, but instead, the wind formed a small gust. Naruto smiled, then resealed the scroll and took out his mother's scroll, but before that he created three clones and told them to practice the new techniques. He slowly opened the scroll with his clan's history, when a small note appeared. Relatively curious, he read the note, which said, Aperio. Then two figures slowly faded into existence right in front of him and the wind began to swirl around the figures. When the wind stopped, Naruto saw the two figures. He noticed that one of the figures was Hanako Ne, while the other was a red-haired beautiful woman, who wore a pink robe. She seemed to smile at Naruto and then Hanako spoke. Naruto-kun. This is your mother, Kashina Uzumaki. In the library, the Naruto clones, with their shape-shifted forms of course, were reading. They were all intrigued at all the books and each one began to read in on some books. One clone began to read a book about cooking, while another took one about herbs. The others however, began to read about the human anatomy, the basics of chakra, and strategy. However, one clone wasn't looking and accidentally bumped into a pink-haired little girl. Slowly getting up, he spoke a single word as he nursed the bump on his head. Sorry. Then not wanting to be rude, he offered the girl his hand. The girl blushed in return, but took the offered hand nonetheless. After both getting up, he once again apologized. I I'm sorry. I wasn't looking and I, then the girl interrupted him, saying, oh oh, it's f fine. M my name's s Sakura. Then the boy smiled in return and was about to say his name when he thought, oh, no one knows I'm Naruto. I'll just have to lie. E air. My names are Riku. Yeah, that's it, Riku. Then he smiled again. The girl just blushed again in return and then spoke, You um. Nice to meet you Riku kun. What are you doing here? The boy just blushed a bit at the kun suffix, but answered back, You um. I'm looking for a good book to read. W what type of book? E air um. Anything interesting, I guess. Then the girl looked to be in thought for a bit then suddenly grabbed his hand and smiled, I know, follow me. He didn't really have a choice since she just grabbed a hold of his hand and dragged him away. Back to the real Naruto, W what? Naruto said, unsure of what to say. However, his mother had other plans and immediately hugged him. He, though, had sort of gone into a panic attack. M mother? 
She then began to hug him tightly, but not so tight that he wouldn't be able to breath. Naruto had now already gathered his thoughts and began to cry. M mom. And with that, Kashina just held him even tighter and began to rub his back and spoke sweet nothings to his ear. Hanako was smiling at the scene and allowed them to have their moment. Then after a few minutes passed, the mother and son slowly detached from each other. However, Naruto still held onto his mother's hand like a lifeline. So now, the truth. Back at the library again, Sakura had dragged the clone Naruto to a section of books entitled, Konoha's Heroes. She then took out a book, but still held onto Naruto's hand. When she took the book, he slowly asked, So, are you gonna let go now? Sakura hadn't realized that she was holding his hand and after realizing that, she let go, then blushed. Naruto, however, didn't understand and tilted his head a bit and said, Are you sick? Sakura then shook her head vigorously and then remembering what she was about to do, she took hold of the book that she grabbed and then told Naruto, S so, Riku-kun, look at this. Riku blushed again at the kun suffix and then looked at what the pink-haired girl was pointing at and noticed a picture, which he could read. It said, the legendary Sanin. However, Sakura was pointing to a certain figure, which Naruto now noticed and asked, who's that? Sakura gasped and then said, why you don't know Tsunade-sama? Naruto then thought, but never having heard that name before, said, and no. But before Naruto could go on, Sakura interrupted him and began to talk and talk about Tsunade. Naruto rubbed his eyes with his free hand and then looked at Hanako with a confused look. W what truth? Allow your mother to explain. Then Naruto looked to his mother, who had also just finished rubbing away her tears. Kashina then spoke, Naru-chan. I see that you know who I am and let me tell you again. I am your mother, Kashina Uzumaki. It may seem that you are too young to be hearing this, but I know that you are more than ready. You see, like I wrote in the letter, I am an angel. A death angel to be more precise. And well, I was a kunoichi of Konohagakure, the village hidden amongst the leaves, but I originated from Uzushiogakure, the village hidden among the whirling tides, but before that. I was once known as the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsun. W what? Naruto said, confused. You see, before the destruction of Uzushiogakure, the elders had sent me to Konoha to become the new Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsun. They did this because I possessed a very strong chakra, as well as great will power. The previous Jinchuriki of the Kayubi was Amito Uzumaki, who was a distant relative of mine. She was the wife of the first Hokage, Hashirama Senju, and using the abilities of our bloodline, she sealed the Kayubi no Kitsune into her. She used a Fuenjutsu technique that she created. At first I was completely terrified. Terrified at becoming the second Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune, but Mito had helped to comfort me and told me that only love could tame the Nine Tails' hatred. Mito-san was an amazing Kunoichi and very wise also. Tsunade was her granddaughter. Well, after the Kayubi was sealed into me, I soon learned to adapt and then I returned to Uzushiogakur. But due to the popularity of the village, it was destroyed. You see, the people of Uzushiogakur were noted to have notoriously long lives, so it gained the title, the Village of Longevity and also its ninja were renowned for their fuenjutsu to the point that it led to its destruction in war, but a few were able to survive, and then we, the survivors, moved to Konoha where we were welcomed. Uzushiogakur had close ties with Konohagakur, due to Uzushio's Uzumaki clan and Konoha's Senju clan being distant relatives. Because of this, all Chunin and Jonin vests of Konoha Shinobi bear the crest of Uzushiogakur, symbolizing the strong friendship that resided between both villages. I resided in Konoha where I met your father and at first. Dot dot dot, I had thought of him as a wimp and had even called him, flaky, and even, girly, but through the years he proved himself to be a strong individual and one day when I was kidnapped by Kumo Shinobi, due to my strong chakra, I cleverly plucked and left behind single strands of my red hair in hope that someone would find me. Out of all the other Shinobi, only your father proved clever enough to pick on the clues and was able to rescue me. Afterwards, he complimented me on my hair, calling it beautiful, and that was the reason he noticed them. I was taken aback by someone actually complimenting my unusual hair, which I had always hated, and I immediately loved Monado and came to love my hair as it was what led Monado to notice me. However, as we were traveling, Uchiha Madara suddenly appeared and attacked us. He began to fight with your father, but your father was still weakened from his previous fight and had unfortunately lost. Madara kidnapped me and demanded that I give him the Kayubi. 
However, I refused, but I too was weakened and it was then that I noticed that the seal containing the Kyubi was weakening. I fell into a state of unconsciousness, but during this time was when Madara had forcefully removed the Kyubi. It was thanks to my strong chakra and clan's longevity that I was able to survive the extraction process, but I was barely left alive. When I woke, Madara was attempting to control the Kyubi, but then. Naruto who had been listening intently, asked, then what? This time, Hanako spoke, I came. I immediately removed Kyubi from that Uchiha's grasp. Then I sent Madara away and took away his memories of me. I let the Kyubi go after cleansing him of his hatred. And he left and you know the rest of his story. At this, Naruto nodded, remembering the words of the nine-tailed fox. Then Hanako continued, then I healed your mother and soon your father came back and rescued her. Your mother eventually became renowned for her beauty and unique ninjutsu style, including the fuinjutsu of her clan. At some point, your mother married your father and they conceived a son. During her pregnancy, they decided to name you Naruto after the main character of Jiraiya's first book. When Jiraiya asked if they were sure, stating that it was a name he came up with while eating a bowl of ramen, your mother said that it was a beautiful name. She also became friends with Makoto Uchiha, who expressed that their sons, Naruto and Sasuke, would become friends in the future, when your mother told Makoto of Naruto's soon-to-be birth. Then after Hanako spoke, Kashina began to speak, yes, Makoto was one of my best friends. After she heard that I was pregnant, she was ectastic since she also was pregnant. Hanako then began to speak, it was soon the day of your birth and though the Kayubi was no longer sealed inside your mother, traces of its power still lay in the seal and your mother needed to keep this power away from evil hands. Prior to your birth, your mother and father knew that the seal that kept the nine tails remaining power within her would weaken during childbirth, so they set up a plan to prevent that from ever happening. Your mother was taken a short distance outside of the village to give birth in secret, with Bawako Sarutobi, who was your Gigi's wife third Hokage's wife, and Taji, a medic nin, as her midwives, a few Anbua's security, and with your father keeping the seal in place. Their location was eventually tracked by Madara Uchiha, killing the Anbu, Bawako and Taji, as well as holding the newborn Naruto hostage. Madara, however, did not know that the Kayubi was no longer sealed inside your mother. Then Madara ordered your father to step away from your mother lest he kill you, a newborn. While your father was able to save you and remove the exploding tags rigged on your body, he was forced to teleport, with you away back to their home, allowing Madara to run off with your mother. After finding out that the Nine Tails no longer was sealed inside your mother, Madara went into a rage and instead took the remaining power of the Kayubi and was about to try to destroy Konoha. Again thanks to her strong chakra and clan's longevity, Kashina was able to survive the extraction process, barely left alive. Before Madara could finish your mother, your father teleported in time to save her and bring her back to their newborn son. Afraid for the worst, your mother was happy to see her son safe from harm, and then wished your father good luck as he headed off to stop Madara. However, I had once again come and defeated Madara Uchiha and did the same as before, I took away his memories and left him in water country. The Kayubi then suddenly came right after Madara's exit and began to attack and destroy all he could see. However, I could not interfere, as I had already done so. It was then that your mother died in the process of resealing the nine tails into you as she gave her chakra, together with your father's, as fail safes to the four symbols seal. This is why the third Hokage gave to you, Naruto, Uzumaki, as your surname, in hopes that nobody else would discover the connection between you and your father. Naruto was wide-eyed, and felt a mix of emotions. He was sad that his parents died. He was angry that Madara Uchiha had caused all of the problems in his family. He was happy that his mother had been the one to say this to him, despite his mother being dead. However, he was confused why his mother was friends with an Uchiha. Then Kashina hugged him again and said, It doesn't matter now, I'll always be with you. Naruto, not wanting to cry, felt the tears build up and just rubbed them off, as he hugged his mother. So this is what a mother's hug feels like. Then Kashina began to speak, Once again, you see, the Nine Tails was in a rage and seeing that there was no power to destroy him, your father and I formulated a plan. When the Nine Tails tried to fire another blast of chakra, Minato teleported himself and the Nine Tails away from the village, letting the blast detonate with no one hurt. He met up with me and I then held down the Nine Tails with my chakra. After hearing my plan to take the Nine Tails to the grave with me, if only to buy them time before it revives, Minato made a plan of his own. 
Having understood what a threat Madara still was to the village, and the threat of the Nine Tails revival without a host, Minato decided to give me and him a chance to see you again and give Konoha the means to combat Madara if he should ever attack the village again. He used the dead demon consuming seal to seal the Nine Tails into your body, hoping that you, our son, would someday be able to use its power. When Minato sealed the Nine Tails within you, he split its chakra in two, the yin and yang. Minato sealed the yang half within you with the eight trigram sealing style, which used my chakra, and sealed the yin half with the dead demon consuming seal into himself, thus making it inaccessible to Naruto. The act cost Minato his life, and he died as the village's greatest hero, as did I. Naruto now began to openly cry. Why you? Sniff why you? Ari al li love ed sniff em me. Kashina smiled and still hugging her son, she said, of course I do. Your father and I love you more than anything in the world. And you should know that. Then Naruto said, s so will you stay with me now. Kashina suddenly had a sad look, but still smiled to Naruto. Unfortunately, my time is not yet, but soon we will be together. Then Naruto nodded, understanding of what she said, p promise. This time Kashina smiled genuinely and kissing her baby's forehead, she said, promise. Then this time Kashina suddenly had an angry face, but, if I see anyone and I mean anyone hurting you Naru Chan, I will come and just take you. Then Kashina suddenly adopted a gentle expression and said, and anyway, it is soon time to when I shall see you again. This time Hanako spoke, I'm afraid, it is time to go. Naruto pouted, but was still understanding, really, now. Then Kashina spoke, sorry, Naru Chan, got to go. Naruto just nodded sadly, but then was hugged by both Hanako and his mother. Then they let go and silently said, Remember that your dad and I love you. Be strong Naruto-kun, we will always be watching. Then they faded out of existence and Naruto rubbed his eyes from the tears and then with a determined look, said, I have to train. Then he remembered the scroll that held the Uzumaki clan history, but noticed that it was all blank but for a few words. Soon. Naruto, soon, you will know. For now, just train hard, and do your best. I love you. Your mother, Kashina Uzumaki P.S. I expect you to be brushing your teeth every day. Then Naruto blushed, embarrassed that his mom would even put that. Then setting his eyes hard, he began to train physically. I will make you proud Datbeo. Back at the library, the clone Naruto, who had gotten tired of Sakura's rants about, Tsunade-sama, said, I'm sorry, but I have to go now. Sakura, obviously saddened at the departure of her friend, said, W will I see you again? Then the clone Naruto smiled and stood up from his seat and said, of course you will. Then he stood up to leave and walking towards the exit, he had actually whispered to Sakura as he passed her, my real name's Naruto and I don't really look like this. I trust you to keep my secret, Sakura-chan. And with that, he left, but not before smiling to Sakura at Sakura-chan, and then leaving. Time skip. Hours later Naruto was exhausted and dead tired. He had trained very hard and besides being tired physically, he was having a headache at the sudden overload when he accidentally dispelled ten clones at the same time. Nevertheless, he was able to walk, limp, to his apartment and after laying down on his bed, closed his eyes, and soon fell into a blissful sleep. The next day, it was once again a bright morning, though not as bright as the day before. Naruto then stood up and getting ready for training, he couldn't help but think. Only today. Then Kusto's sensei will check what I've done. I've worked hard, and I know I'll make everyone proud. Mom, Dad, Gigi, Hanako Ne, Kazu Ni, Kusto's sensei, Weasel San, and Snake San. As he exited the apartment, after eating a healthy and nutritious breakfast, he couldn't wait to try out his new trick. This new trick was something he developed after dispelling the clones who were practicing the shapeshifting technique. He had somewhat created a special variation of it that instead of shapeshifting, he would become invisible. This new trick of his could not have been developed just like that. Using his father's bloodline and his mother's bloodline also, he shapeshifted into air. However, normally the shapeshift would just be an illusion. He had mastered it to a level where the it was no longer an illusion, but it was real. This meant that he could get hurt and his shapeshift wouldn't cancel out. Also, using his father's bloodline, he was able to picture air and combining both, he had created a new technique. He could now become air itself. He calmed himself and then whispered, Elementum mutatio, air, elemental transformation, air. 
Then he slowly see inverted himself into air. Pure air. It was genius. Then he floated to the hidden clearing and after scouting the area for anyone, he silently muttered, Ricoligo quad estendo sum, gather and return. Then he slowly reverted back to solidity. After doing so, he began to train. He once again sent clones to the library, but increased their number, so now, 20 clones were going to the library, shapeshifted of course. He then instructed 60 clones to continue his training in control and meditation. Time skip again. Hours later Naruto was proud, proud that he had trained successfully, and proud that he was doing this for his precious people. Now it was time for Naruto to rest. Naruto laid down on his bed and slept, but not before switching the time on his alarm clock to 8 o'clock. He did deserve rest and he was a growing boy. I can't wait to show Kusto's sensei what I've done. This was his last thought before he fell into a gentle sleep, with the wind gently caressing him. Naruto woke up at the exact time as his alarm clock had began to ring. Turning of the annoying thing, he slowly stood up and stretched a bit, then made his bed. After making his bed, he turned to go brush his teeth, then take a shower. After taking a shower, he had a healthy breakfast, which contained some toast, a few scrambled eggs, a bowl of cereal, a glass of water, and two bananas. Then after brushing his teeth again, he looked at his wardrobe and smiled at the new clothes that he had managed to buy for himself. Flashback. Clone Naruto had just finished his rounds at the library and was about to go to his original when he saw a certain shop, Higarashi's Shinobi Store. Intrigued, the clone Naruto decided to walk inside. As he walked past the door, the bell from the door jingled, signaling to the owner that there was a customer. Albeit a few seconds later, an old man came from around the corner and spoke, in a friendly manner, welcome, welcome. Then he spoke again, so anything you might want? Naruto nodded, and said, well. Then Naruto proceeded to tell the old man exactly what he needed, but of course in his shape-shifted form. He no longer looked like a five-year-old, but actually twelve. Then the old man spoke, so, I think we already have those supplies here. Naruto nodded and smiled, happy that he would not need to wait. Then the man walked away and signaled to the clone Naruto to follow him. You don't need to hide yourself, you know. Naruto was shocked, and stuttered, hh how. The old man just smiled, I know it's you Naruto. Your father would do the same sometimes. Naruto just gaped at him. He knew my father? Then Naruto sighed and just released his shape shifted form, Eximo. Release. Then Naruto slowly shifted back to his original form and said, I'm just a clone. My creator is training. Now it was the old man's turn to gape. W what? You're so young. Then Naruto chuckled, yes. So. Then the man slowly reverted back to his original posture and shook off the bewildered expression on his face. He smiled and said, let's get your measurements then, shall we? The old man also held out his hand to the little boy. Then Naruto, looking at the offered hand, placed his hand on the old man's and then nodded. After finishing up, Naruto smiled and looked at what he was able to buy. With the old man's help, he had managed to get a hooded cloak, that fitted him just right, and covered his whole body. Despite its long fabric, it was made so that it would not hinder the wearer, but would provide mobility. So it looked as if it would hinder the wearer's mobility and speed, but it was made to do just the opposite. Besides the cloak, the old man had provided fingerless gloves, shinobi sandals, shorts that stopped just mid-knee, and a shirt with sleeves that stopped right at the elbow. The cloak was black color, designed for stealth purposes. The fingerless gloves, shinobi snaddles, shorts, and shirt were also black. After paying the correct amount, the clone Naruto smiled and said, thanks Oji-san. The old man just smiled in return, then ruffled the little boy's hair affectionately and said, just be sure to tell your friends to buy here gaki. The boy just nodded and taking the bags which held the clothes, he walked out of the shop and spoke a final, arigato. Then he ran to his apartment, holding on to the bags carefully. Flashback end. Naruto put on his new clothes, then body flickered to the clearing. The only evidence of his departure was the small gust of wind that blew over his previous position. Naruto appeared in the clearing and once again spoke the words, Aperio, appear. Then Kustos once again appeared in a bright light, and said, are you ready? Naruto had just finished training with Kustos sensei and after Kustos evaluation, Kustos was more than pleased with his students latest accomplishments. His physical training had gone great. His stamina, strength, and endurance, as well as speed and stealth, had improved greatly. 
He still had to work with them, but they had improved anyway. He was still five years old. The clones that he had sent to the library had helped him greatly with his search for knowledge and he realized that he had made a new friend after one clone dispelled with the knowledge of said friend. He was currently studying strategy and planning, botany or plant science, the human anatomy, and medicine. He was also currently learning the basics of cooking and this was a skill that he definitely wanted to learn. Overall, his knowledge on different subjects had also improved, but he had much much more to learn. After hearing this, Kustos was once again very proud of Naruto and then asked Naruto to demonstrate the techniques that Kustos himself taught to Naruto. Naruto of course, obliged and began to demonstrate. He first demonstrated the first technique, the Mutatio Ars, Voltus Amoveo, Transformation Arts, Shapeshift. He had fully mastered this technique and had shown and explained to Kustos what he thought to be the technique's full potential. Naruto no longer needed to utter a word or anything like that, but he would simply transform with just a thought. The transformation did not produce smoke or make any loud noises or distractions, but instead Naruto's whole body shifted as if it were an illusion. Then a second after, there it was, transformation. The technique had truly become its namesake and was no longer a pathetic illusion, but a full-fledged transformation. Naruto's body mass would be reformed and would then shapeshift into whatever Naruto had wanted to become, be it man, woman, animal, or object. However, he did not gain their memories or their abilities, just their appearance, body, and voice, if it had a voice, because it was not an illusion, Naruto could get hurt, but still be in his shape-shifted form. He could also have the same effect on other people, animals, plants, or objects, and he could do that with just a thought and in a second. Next, he demonstrated the second technique, the subpono Rs, substitution technique. He had not yet fully mastered this technique, but could use the technique quite effectively. He could substitute with just a word and in a second's time. He could substitute almost anything, trees, logs, animals, different objects, and even people. However, he could only substitute people and some rather large animals in a mile's radius from his position. He could obviously not substitute himself with a building or something far bigger than a building. The pressure would be too much and the strain would immediately cause energy stores to drain, causing instant death by energy loss. He had somehow modified the substitution technique by changing the ordinary small smoke explosion when performing the technique. He found out that this small explosion of smoke was like throwing a mini smoke bomb. This was a norm in the technique as it helps to fool the opponent by creating an optical illusion, making the enemy think the attack was successful. The user can then use this confusion to escape or launch a counterattack. However, Naruto's modification changed the normal smoke bomb explosion and besides a normal smoke bomb, he could now create a much larger smoke bomb explosion, resulting in adding more confusion. Besides smoke bombs, he could also change the explosion to that of a stink bombs, sleeping gas bombs, and poison gas bombs. However, he had to make the materials himself. This is one of the reasons why he studied botany or plant life, so he could create different concoctions and potions. True mastery of this technique was when the substitution could be performed with an object, person, or animal in at least a 10 mile distance, Kustos had said to Naruto. He still praised Naruto regardless and had said that with devoted practice, Naruto would master it quickly. After demonstrating and explaining the substitution technique, Naruto then demonstrated the last technique he had learned from Kustos, the Profesio de Sum Sindo, Art of Body Splitting. Like the Mutatio Ars, Voltus Amoveo, Transformation Arts, shapeshift. Naruto had also mastered this technique and could use the technique to the fullest. He could summon at least a thousand perfect clones without falling into unconsciousness. Naruto realized that he could summon more because of his stamina and large energy reserves. Naruto had then realized that in the future, he could create thousands upon thousands and then not feel the loss of energy. His clones were very strong and were very different from the normal cage bunshin. The cage bunshin would dissipate immediately after one hit and could probably take more hits if given enough chakra. However, cage bunshin or cage bunshin, shadow clones, they do not have minds of their own, and they also have a low chance of survival. The body splitting technique, however, was amazing. Instead of being dispelled immediately, they can take hits and will only dissipate when dealt with a fatal blow, such as a strike to the heart, decapitation, or a strike to the brain. They did not have regenerating abilities as their original has since the Kyubi is only sealed in the original Naruto. These clones also have a mind of their own. However, these minds are no different from their original. 
It is more like a case of there being two Naruto's. The clones and the original are the same, but have different mindsets. This helps with their survival as they do not have to completely rely on their original since they can make plans of their own. The clones could not revolt against Naruto since they were in fact still him. Naruto had demonstrated his mastery over the technique by being able to perform the technique in a second, by being able to create a clone without any noise or distraction, but most importantly by using the clones to their full potential. He could perform the technique in a second with just a simple thought. Usually, when one creates a clone, there is some form of a small explosion, such as a small smoke explosion when using the cage bunshin, but when using the body slipping technique, there is no sudden explosion of smoke or any kind. Instead the clones somehow fade into reality, making them the best clones. Kustos was once again impressed at Naruto's determination and commitment and praised Naruto graciously. However, Kustos spoke to Naruto of the true level of mastery over the technique. This level could only be achieved to constant use of the technique, as well as physical and mental training. Kustos explained that at this level of mastery, the user of the technique would be able to somehow tap into the clone's senses, meaning the original could see through the eyes of each and every clone. The mechanisms were complicated, but it was like that. Not only the eyesight of his clones, but also their hearing, smelling, and sixth sense, which was a sort of, warning, sense. The good thing about these techniques was that it was only Naruto or a magic using angel who could perform these techniques so Naruto did not have to fear about anyone taking his techniques. After congratulating Naruto, Kustos asked Naruto to show him any other things that Naruto had learnt. Naruto once again did so and demonstrated to Kustos, the wind techniques that he had taught himself from his father's side's clan scroll. He demonstrated the blade of wind, wind release, great breakthrough, and wind style body flicker. He could perform the blade of wind technique without having to use hand signs. His blade of wind was quite strong and could break through two thick trees. Naruto could create the blade from his fingertips, from the palm of his hands, but not his feet. Not yet anyway. His great breakthrough had definitely improved and he could now create a strong gust, that could blow away an unsuspecting ninja. Though strong, Naruto was far from mastering the technique and was still training heavily. He still needed to use the hand signs in order to perform the technique. He could perform the wind style shunshin flawlessly. He no longer needed hand signs, and could body flicker in less than two seconds. His performing distance was a five mile radius, but increasing. Naruto also told him of his other bloodline, the voice of the wind, and his constant practice in using the bloodline. Kustos, very pleased at his student, taught Naruto three new techniques and explained to Naruto the basics and uses of the said techniques. After that, Kustos asked Naruto if the chakra exercises were helpful and Naruto, being Naruto, said that they were. However, he told Kustos that he had already mastered all three exercises, from the water walking to leaf balancing and the tree walking. Kustos just agreed and gave Naruto another exercise to practice and eventually master. Kustos taught him the leaf concentration exercise, which was similar to the leaf balancing. This exercise was taught in the academy to teach students how to control their chakra more effectively. However, the true purpose of the exercise was actually to hone the individual's concentration and to keep their mind from becoming distracted. The training method is done by placing a leaf over an individual's forehead and having them direct all their chakra onto the leaf, using it as a focal point. Naruto took the training to heart and when Kustos finished teaching Naruto and left, Naruto began to train and train. Now he was finished for the day and it was already quite late. As Naruto walked outside, he noticed that there was a full moon. There were also little to no people around. Naruto walked around the corner, but then suddenly saw a figure running. Hum. Who's that? And why's there a bag over he's a kidnapper? Then Naruto began to run to the man and while he ran, he also spoke in whispered tones, Masero, weaken. And then the man suddenly hunched down in pain and dropped the bag he was carrying. Naruto quickly ran to the bag and opened it, seeing a small girl, around his age. He quickly ushered her out and she ran to go behind him. TT then NKYU. Naruto nodded in return and was about to run away when he heard the kidnapper speak, T Tisk, you'd better give me the girl brat, or I'll kill you. Then Naruto suddenly remembered his lesson with Kustos. Flashback. Kustos began to teach Naruto the first technique for the day, Masero, weaken. Kustos first demonstrated the technique to Naruto before explaining the technique. Kustos summoned a human looking figure, which he had said he would use as a training dummy. Kustos then said, Masero, weaken, 
and then the figure suddenly hunched in pain and then seemingly disappeared. This technique allows the user to weaken an opponent using willpower alone. It is similar to killing intent, but is far more effective. To perform this technique, you must use your will and emotions and then gather energy from them, then release. The result should be instantaneous and should be as I have shown you, but it all depends on your opponent. This technique might work, but only for a few seconds, if the opponent uses his own will to overpower yours. Therefore, this technique will only work if the opponent is weak-willed or if the user is very strong-willed. To be able to sustain the attack, the user must stay within close proximity of the victim, otherwise the attack will weaken in strength. However, usually a strong burst of willpower will usually be enough and the victim will be weakened for a short while and then the user can use this as a distraction and then escape. Usually, this technique will always work when some certain emotions intensify, such as anger, rage, or another strong emotion. However, this technique will also work without those emotions, but just a strong will. Naruto nodded and began to train. Flashback end. Naruto cringed, remembering that little detail about willpower. I'm only five years old. Despite this, Naruto tried again, but this time enforced more of his will and emotions. Masero, weaken. Naruto screamed and then watched as the man once again, screamed and doubled over in pain. Using the time as a distraction, he took the girl's hand in his own and then ran as fast as his little legs could carry him. However, the man suddenly stood up and screamed, How dare you little brat! I'll show you not to attack me! Then the man began to rapidly perform different hand seals and Naruto began to get scared. Naruto stopped running and just performed the second technique taught to him by Kustos earlier in the day. Then the man suddenly stopped and said with a shout, Lightning release, Thunder Barrage. Then the sky began to darken and thunder began to gather above them and after a second, a large bolt of thunder suddenly surged down from the sky to them. Hanada screamed as the thunder came closer, then Naruto said with a shout, Contigo, protect. As the thunderbolt was about to strike the two children, there was suddenly a blinding light and a large circle seemed to form around them like a force field, then the thunder was seemingly blocked by the shield. The kidnapper, now identified as Akumo, Cloud, Ninja from his Hatai ITE, Shinobi headband, then seemed shocked for a while, but got out of his shock and began to scream in rage, I don't care what you can do. I'll kill you. Then he began to do hand seals again, and Naruto could only gasp in shock as the ninja was about to do the same technique, but then Naruto began to gather energy around him as Kustos had said and both said at the same time. Lightning release. Thunder barrage. Contigo. Protect. The same thing happened and Naruto silently thanked Kustos for teaching him that technique. Flashback. Now this next technique that I'm going to teach you is called Contigo. Protect. This technique is a defensive technique and will allow you to create a makeshift shield out of your life energy. To be able to perform this technique, you must also need willpower, but most importantly control. Gather energy around your body and then will it to come to life using your willpower and life energy. This will create a large shield that can protect you and or someone else. This technique requires a lot of energy and will for it to be truly strong. If used correctly, the shield should be able to withstand anything but attacks from underground. The proximity of the technique depends on the amount of energy placed in the technique. Let me demonstrate. Then Kustos motioned Naruto to walk back and give him space, which Naruto did. Then he suddenly chanted, Contigo, protect, then a large shield of white covered Kustos. After the technique diminished, Kustos said, the blinding light is a bonus and can help provide a distraction or temporarily blind the opponent. Now you try. Flashback end. The Kumo ninja then growled and ran to Naruto. Naruto widened his eyes since the Kumo ninja was going to fight him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Naruto was quite good, but he was only five. As the opponent drew closer, Naruto chanted, Masero, weaken. The man once again doubled in pain and using this as a temporary distraction, Naruto suddenly sucker punched the ninja, which then threw the ninja over to a tree. The ninja then grunted and stood up from his position and ran to Naruto again. The man threw a punch at Naruto, who dodged in return. I can use my small height as an advantage. As the ninja began to punch and kick, Naruto just dodged in return, but then the man got irritated and suddenly kicked Naruto faster than before. Naruto got kicked to the ground and then looked at his opponent who was now beginning to go through hand seals, and also looked at the little girl for a slight second, who was just shaking in fear. 
Naruto stood up and then began to gather up energy, but it was too late, the man had already finished. Lightning release. Lightning storm. Then Naruto screamed in pain as a giant bolt of lightning hit him from the sky. The lightning bolt shocked his whole body and even the grass at his feet turned black. Naruto then fell on his stomach and cringed in pain. The lightning was still slightly shocking him and small sparks of lightning still continued to randomly shock him. Naruto stood up shakily and saw that the man had turned his back and was about to go and get that little girl again. Naruto grit his teeth together and then muttering his energy, he said, wind release, great breakthrough. A great wind then attacked the unsuspecting ninja and the ninja screamed as he was carried from the wind and then brutally slashed. At the same time, Naruto said, Masero, weaken. The man just screamed louder as more pain went through his body and when the wind stopped, it threw him to a tree as if it threw a ragdoll. Naruto then ran to the little girl and said, Sano, heal, and then a white energy surrounded the little girl as she watched in amazement. When the light cleared, the little girl felt so much better. More better than even before she was kidnapped. She felt as if she had all the courage in the world. Naruto smiled at her bewildered expression and remembered just what Kustos had said regarding the technique. Flashback. Now Naruto, this is the last technique that I will teach you, Sano, heal. This technique uses life energy to heal. This technique needs focus and proper control of energy to be able to perform. I already know that you are ready for this technique since you have the control and power needed. This technique is a very useful technique and not really draining if done properly. It heals not only injuries, but also cures any body ailments and poison. The greatest effect of the technique is that it completely rejuvenates the body, making the one affected feel better than before. Once mastered, the technique should be able to heal anything, but old age. Flashback end. Are you okay? Naruto said, as he offered her his hand. She took it, but seemed to be trying to cover up a blush and failing miserably. You you um. Tth then nkyyou. I I'm hi Hanada. Naruto smiled in return, but seemed not to notice her blush. He then said, I'm Naruto. Naruto just nodded in return and then a figure suddenly landed next to Hanada. Hanada. Are you okay? I I'm okay f father. Nnar Ruto kun saved me. Then her father suddenly took notice of the figure next to Hanada and turned to look at him. The kidnapper is over there. Then Naruto pointed to the twitching body of the Kumo ninja. Hiyashi looked at the twitching figure, then his eyes widened and he turned to look at Naruto and said disbelievingly, W what? You did that. Naruto nodded in return and Hiyashi just sighed in return and then walked over to the figure and carried him over his back. We're going to bring the kidnapper to Hokage-sama. Then Hiyashi using his free hand held onto Hanada and said, Naruto, come here. Naruto nodded in understanding then placed his hand on Haishi's. A second later, all four figures disappeared in a swirl of leaves. In the Hokage's office, the Hokage was doing what he hated most, paperwork. He sighed in annoyance at the vast piles of paper. Then suddenly, four figures appeared in front of him from what the Hokage guessed was a shunshin. The Hokage widened his eyes, then stood up from his chair and took a fighting stance. However, as all four figures came into proper view and the Hokage saw them, he sighed in relief, then sitting back in his chair, he asked, Hiyashi, and Naruto, mind explaining why you're here? Hiyashi laid the man down and then bowed in respect, and said, Hokage-sama, this man was about to kidnap my daughter, but then Naruto here defeated him and waited for me. The Hokage's eyes widened and he said, W what, Naruto? Hi, Gigi, I walking home. But then I saw this weirdo man carrying a bag and I figured out that he was a kidnapper so I went and then I attacked him. He kept trying to hit me, but I just kept ducking and running. Then I did this move that I saw someone doing. I can't tell Gigi yet. The Hokage just nodded his head skeptically not exactly trusting all that little five-year-old Naruto had said. I'll talk to him in private later on. Don't worry Hiyashi, I'll make sure that Ibiki takes care of the kidnapper. The Hokage then walked over to the man who was laying on the floor on his stomach and turned his head. The Hokage gasped, then growled. This is that Kumo ambassador. Then the Hokage gritted his teeth and said menacingly, I'll make sure that Ibiki takes good care of him. Hiyashi just nodded in return, then said, Well, I trust that you will take care of him. I'll be taking my leave now. Come Hanada. Why yes. F fat there. The Hokage nodded in return as Hiyashi disappeared with Hanada via Shunshin. 
Then he turned to Naruto and said, We need to talk. Naruto gulped and said, Eer. Naruto scratched the back of his head and said, Eer. Why you see? Gigi. The Hokage looked at Naruto skeptically, Yes. Do you have something to tell me? Naruto sighed and then thought, He would find out anyway. Can you tell the Anbu to go away and then put privacy seals in the room? The Hokage widened his eyes and his jaw dropped. How did Naruto find out about the Anbu? And the privacy seals? How does he know about that? The Hokage then got out of his shock and signaled the Anbu to leave the room. After they left, he activated the privacy seals in the room and said, There, no one can hear or see anything here. Naruto nodded and then closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Then he explained to the Hokage what had happened, starting from when he was nearly beaten to death. Then he went on about Hanako and Kayubi. He also told the Hokage about Kustos and about what he could do. He also spoke about Kashina and what she said. After their talk, let's say the Hokage was shocked and his jaw dropped and he stared at Naruto for a minute. Then suddenly, a bright light filled the room and when the light faded, the figure of a woman could be seen. Naruto looked in shock, then after seeing just who it was, jumped up to the figure's arms and said with a shout, Hanako ne. Then the Hokage went into more shock and fainted. Half an hour later, the Hokage woke up from his new position on his seat and looked up blearily. You luck. Then as he saw Naruto and that woman, he remembered just what happened and sighed deeply. Then the woman spoke and said, we need to talk. After their talk, the Hokage nodded his head in understanding. So Naruto is a celestial. Hanako had spoken to the Hokage about Naruto's current living conditions and told Serutobi that he would need to live in a proper house. Also, his inheritance. Normally, he wouldn't even inherit any of it, till he became Chunin or reached the age of 18. The Hokage had agreed and had made some agreements with the celestial woman. Naruto would live in the Namikaze residence and would have a monthly allowance. He would also be allowed to train to become a ninja, despite his young age. Hanako had wore him out about that. Then as Hanako disappeared with Naruto, the Hokage sighed deeply. Ugh. All this paperwork. Then the Hokage began to bang his head in annoyance. Back to Naruto. Hanako had brought Naruto to his father's family home. The Namikaze residence. It was located behind the Hokage monument and only a select few knew where it was. However, no one but Namikaze blood would ever be able to find it. It was in the middle of a thick forest. The Hokage had said that the forest was known as the Forest of Illusions since no one had ever been able to get anywhere there. The residence itself was quite large, but not too large. It was covered by large gates. Naruto had placed his blood in the blood seal and some chakra at the chakra seal in the entrance gate. The gate then opened slowly and Naruto felt his jaw drop. There in front of him was a big beautiful house, but the unique thing about the house was that it was stuck in a tree. It was as if the tree and the house had merged. It was a large tree and sprouted up. The house was very beautiful and looked new. In front of the house was a vast garden of different flowers and plants. There was even a small stream that trickled to the back. Then Hanako spoke, shaking Naruto out of his minute-long shock, the house is rather amazing. It was built first, then a distant family member of yours created the tree. The tree is known as the Tree of Magic and was created using the life energy of the three clans, Namikaze, Uzumaki, and Senju. The Senju are the Uzumaki family's distant family. So you are actually related to three Hokages. Then Hanako giggled at Naruto's shocked look and just as he was about to faint, she put her hand on his shoulder, and continued speaking. The first Hokage made the tree grow. The Namikaze created the house and using their bloodline, caused the air here to be completely perfect and the Uzumaki used their spirit energy to make the tree have special properties. The flowers here never wilt since the elemental spirits reside here. W what? Elemental spirits? Yes, the elemental spirits came to reside here. You will meet them soon. Besides the big house and flower garden, there's more. There are many rooms in the house, three bedrooms, one is the main bedroom and the other two are guest rooms. There are bathrooms for each room and there is one big kitchen. You may never have to buy any food, since all the food is in the gardens. The food is organic and much more nutritious and delicious than the normal food. Besides the kitchen and gardens, the dining room is up in the tree. There are also herb gardens and a small lake. The gates that cover the compound only cover the north, west, and east sides of the compound. 
The south side has no gate, but stretches onto the forest. There are many animals there and rare fruits also. Only a namikaze can go beyond there. Also, there is a great library in the tree. It contains a vast collection of techniques, all owned by you. Naruto smiled and looked up at the sky. I've got a lot of exploring to do. Meanwhile, an Anbu member with a Nei symbol spoke, so he found out about his heritage. I must report to Danzo-sama. Then he disappeared. A week later, Naruto smiled from his position at the top of the great tree. He had already explored through the compound, met with the animals, as well as spoke to the elemental spirits. He had moved to the main bedroom, which was a beautiful room. The walls were painted a light blue color and the room itself was quite large. There was a large king-sized bed in the room. On the right wall was a large mirror along with a dresser. Opposite to the door, there were two window doors that led to the balcony. Once opened, large curtains would sway slowly with the wind, giving the room a beautiful midnight effect. There was also a door to the bathroom, which had both a shower and a bathtub, as well as a sink and toilet. Hanako had told him that everything there was man-made and organic. The furniture was made from a special wood created specially by the first Hokage. The water was filtered underground, in a special water cleaning system made by the Uzumaki and the second Hokage. Besides that, the kitchen was located on the ground floor. It was rather large and the room was shaped as a square. From the door, there was a straight path all the way to the other side of the kitchen. Opposite the door, there were two large doors, which led to the gardens. On the left side of the room, there were blue tiled counters arranged in a square. The only gap was on the right side of the square. Hanako had told him that they were arranged that way by Naruto's mother. It was where she would prepare the food with other women since a lot of people would usually be invited for dinner there. On the right side of the kitchen, there was a door, which Hanako had said, led to the freezer room. Next to the door, there was a large fridge and a big wood burning stove. Hanako had said that the stove was powered by chakra. The freezer room was also powered by chakra. Outside from the door to the kitchen, there were gardens, which Hanako had said were created by both the first Hokage and an Uzumaki who controlled nature. The gardens were beautiful and were very large. Hanako had said that they produced every vegetable and fruit, as well as herbs, both known and unknown to man. They were bred by and cared for by one of the elemental spirits. Beyond the garden, there was the forest, which housed the different animals. Hanako had said that Naruto would come to know them and he did. A day after Naruto's arrival the animals had come and met with Naruto. Naruto had also spoke with the elemental spirits who agreed to help him. There were actually a lot of them and Naruto had been able to form a bond with all of them as he had with the animals in the forest. Naruto had also been to the library and had been reading more about his bloodlines and its history. He had read that the voice of the wind would forever remain with him and that because of this, wind would be an affinity of his. He remembered the words of the book. The voice of the wind is unlike any of the other bloodlines since it is not a physical manifestation such as the Kaguya's dead bone pulse. It is also not an eye manifestation such as the Hyuga's Byakugan or the Uchiha's Sharingan. It is more of a spirit ability such as the Senju's Mokaton, which also has the ability to calm demons. Instead, the voice of the wind allows an almost god-like control of the wind. The voice of the wind is merely its namesake, however, just the ability to hear the wind's voice. If the wind will accept the individual, he, she will then be able to start the cycle of awakening. This awakening is needed for the individual to be able to fully utilize the ability of the bloodline. The spirits of the wind themselves will decide what abilities the individual may have. However, should the spirits find the individual unworthy, then the individual will suffer the ultimate penalty death. The awakening ritual will take as long as the spirits permit. During this ritual, they will test the individual, to see if he, she is worthy. Naruto had definitely taken the words to heart. He had been training well with his bloodline. He had also done the same with his other bloodline, the heavenly gift. He had found out just what his angel abilities permit when he read some books. He had found out that the Uzumaki family scroll, which was once empty, began to reveal more information. It was about the celestial angels. The celestial angels are a special branch in the angel clan and are known for their unique abilities, as well as pure and innocent personalities. Among the angels, they are the ones who are treated the most highly, not because of their abilities, but because of their purity. They are also very respected since they are very rare. 
A celestial angel will be born almost every thousand years, which is why they are very rare. The celestial angels are not only well respected among the angels, but also among the other races, such as the demons, elementals, spirits, undead, and animals. The humans do not really know the celestial angels well, however. The celestial angels are known for their amazing feats for all the races, such as the birth of the Keke Jenke, the gift of Chakra, the Hell Gates, the Spirit Realm, and many more. The first celestial is Kami himself and the other gods and goddesses are also celestial angels. The celestial angels have different abilities, which can range from psychic ability, elemental ability, the gift of prophecy, even raising of the dead. However, one thing is known, all celestial angels will have to go through a certain change. This is a form of their awakening. During this time, the celestial angel will be in extreme pain and agony and may not survive. Because of this, many celestial angels die because they are not given the right treatment. If the celestial angel will pass through his, her awakening, then he will be completely changed from his physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional areas. Each celestial angel has his, her own guardian angel. However, unlike normal guardian angels, the guardian angels must find their celestial angel themselves. Because of this, these special guardian angels are born with a specific birthmark, which will signify their position as a guardian. Most guardians to celestial angels are far stronger than any normal guardian. This is because the celestial angel may need his, her own guardian's help. However, the guardian angel will not be allowed to search for his, her celestial angel to guard, but are given the opportunity to do so when the celestial angel awakens. Should the guardian angel die, he, she will be reborn again to protect the celestial angel. However, if the celestial angel dies, the guardian angel will feel nothing but sadness and pain. This will cause him, her to commit suicide, which happened when the celestial angels were cruelly massacred by the humans. The celestial angel, if he, she passes through the awakening alive, will grow to be strong and such will become a god or goddess. This will grant them the gift of immortality and they will never die. Should they die, they will be reborn. However, this only applies to a celestial angel who has fully gone through the awakening and has become strong enough to claim his, her own place as a god goddess. In another place, a crippled figure smiled at the news that his spy had just given him. The child is a celestial, and alive, then the man slowly thought of his plans and smiled. The angels are organized in several orders, or angelic choirs. In the first sphere of the celestial hierarchy of angels were the seraphim, cherubim, and orphanum. These were the heavenly guardians of God's throne and were said to be never sleeping, but always watching and guarding the throne of God. The seraphim were known as the burning ones, and belong to the highest order of the hierarchy of angels. The seraphim serve as the caretakers of God's throne and were concerned with keeping divinity in perfect order. The seraphim have six wings, two covering their faces, two covering their bodies, feet, and two with which they fly. There are four of them that surround God's throne, keeping order. The cherubim sat closest to the throne of God, but were the second highest rank in the angelic hierarchy, following the seraphim. The cherubim were a tetrad of living creatures, each having four faces, of a lion, an ox, an eagle, and a man. They are said to have the stature and hands of a man, the feet of a calf, and four conjoined wings covered with eyes. However, the ox face is the true face of the cherub. Cherubim are considered the elect beings for the purpose of protection. The cherubim guard the way to the tree of life in Eden's garden and God's throne. The orphanum, also known as the thrones or elders, are angels of the third order of the first sphere of the celestial hierarchy of angels and are living symbols of God's justice and authority, and have as one of their symbols the throne of God. The orphanum are unusual looking even compared to the other celestial beings and appear as a barrel-colored wheel within a wheel, their rims covered with hundreds of eyes. They are closely connected with the cherubim and moved and stopped in accordance to the cherubim. So in other words, when the cherubim moved, the orphanum moved, when the cherubim stopped, the orphanum stopped. The orphanum, or thrones, are beings of tremendous power and movement. They are the keepers of higher more expanded energies. They ensure that these energies maintain connections and flows through the realms. They act as the conduits of the physical worlds and tend to be more stationary in their existence. They are known as the bringers of justice and this position makes them some of the most powerful angels. The thrones also have the task of pondering the disposition of divine judgments. They, despite their greatness, are intensely humble, 
and a tribute that allows them to dispense justice with perfect objectivity and without fear of pride or ambition. The angels in the second sphere of the celestial hierarchy of angels work as heavenly governors and among them were the dominions, virtues, powers or authorities. The dominions were known as the lordships or the hashmalam, hold the task of regulating the duties of lower angels. It is only with extreme rarity that the angelic lords make themselves physically known to humans. They are also the angels who preside over nations. The dominions are believed to look like divinely beautiful humans with a pair of feathered wings, much like the common representation of angels, but they may be distinguished from other groups by wielding orbs of light fastened to the heads of their scepters or on the pommel of their swords. There is a dominion in every nation, known or unknown. They are very powerful, yet graceful and beautiful. Kami himself is a dominion. The virtues or strongholds lie beyond the Afanum thrones, wheels. Their primary duty is to supervise the movements of the heavenly bodies in order to ensure that the cosmos remains in order. These are the angels that rule over the sun, moon, stars, and other heavenly bodies. They are not spirits of these heavenly bodies, but watch the spirits. They are similar to dominions, but rule over heavenly bodies not nations. The powers or authorities appear to collaborate, in power and authority as their name implies, with the principalities rulers. The powers are the bearers of conscience and the keepers of history. They are also the warrior angels created to be completely loyal to God. Their duty is to oversee the distribution of power among humankind, hence their name. The third sphere of the celestial hierarchy of angels hold the angels who serve as heavenly soldiers and messengers. These are the principalities or rulers, the archangels, and the angels. The principalities or rulers are those who collaborate in power and authority with the powers, authorities. The principalities wear crowns and carry scepters. Their duty also is said to be to carry out the orders given to them by the dominions and bequeath blessings to the material world. Their task is to oversee groups of people. They are the educators and guardians of the realm of earth both individuals, as well as groups. They were the ones who inspired to living things ideas of art and science. The archangels are the first in rank in the third sphere of the celestial hierarchy of angels and are messengers. The archangels had two large wings and among them were the seven archangels. The seven archangels are guardians of nations and countries and have the duty of protecting their countries. And normal angel may ascend into the rank of an archangel if he is found worthy. Only guardian angels have this honor. The angels, Malachim, messengers or angels, are the lowest order of the angels, and the most recognized. They are the ones most concerned with the affairs of living things. Within the category of the angels, there are many different kinds, with different functions. They can also either be male or female. There are the messenger angels who have the duty of messenger. They have wings like an angel, but do not exhibit them when serving their duty, but instead rely on their abilities. These angels are gifted with the ability of super speed and sometimes teleportation. The messenger angels hold an important duty as messengers and send messages to both angels and demons alike. It is a grave offense to kill a messenger angel and the penalty is instant death, no matter who has done so. There are the death angels, or reapers, who have the duty of sending souls to hell. Among the humans, they are known as the death gods. They have dark black wings, but are hardly ever seen with their wings and have as their weapon a scythe. These angels seek the souls of corrupted men and women. They have the supreme task of taking their souls and then sending them to hell. The great leader of the death angels is known as the Shinigami, who holds the keys of hell. There are the guardian angels who have the role of guardian. They are given a person whom they will guard and they will be watchful. They cannot completely interfere or show themselves, but they can give small pushes every now and then. However, should the one they guard become corrupted, the guardian angel will be forced to leave. This is why only a select few have guardian angels. The corruption had caused the guardian angel to be forced to leave. Also because of the corruption, more and more humans die. The guardian angels themselves hate corrupted humans since that is what caused the death of the celestial angels. There are the healing angels who have the role of healers. They have the ability of healing, to heal injuries. They are a special branch in the clan of angels since they have these abilities. Most healing angels are female. There are the angels of prophecy who have psychic abilities and have the gift of prophecy. They are able to see the future. However, they only see glimpses and most of these visions are warnings to the whole clan. Before the attempted murder of the humans on the celestial angels, an angel of prophecy had seen visions and had tried to warn the others. However, he was ignored and the consequences of their ignorance was dear. 
After that incident, the angels have truly come to respect and listen to the angels of prophecy. All the angels of prophecy departed the shinobi countries to Eden so there are none left. Although there are priestesses, they do not have half the power that the angels of prophecy have since the angels of prophecy also had psychic powers. It was thanks to an angel of prophecy that dwelt in Eden that the angels of Eden were able to foresee the birth of the last celestial. There were the warrior angels who were skilled warriors. They had elemental abilities, meaning they had control over the elements. They were also skilled in the use of weapons. They were the ones who went to war. There were also Pudi, who were more of spirits than angels. The Pudi are not a part of the angelic hierarchy, but are innocent souls, looking like winged children. They stayed with the cherubim in the orphanum. Now only one angel was left in the world and that angel was a celestial. However, both the angels and the celestial angels would not leave him unprepared. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto. Words spoken, thoughts. Hanako or an angel speaking, Kayubi or Kazuki speaking. Magic or the wind, Naruto was walking around his compound when he remembered his meeting with the elementals. Flashback. Naruto was still exploring the gardens when he saw a small lake. And a woman. She was naked and was bathing. Naruto, who was just five, approached the bathing woman and asked, Who are you? Naruto had said this while tilting his head, making him look quite cute. The woman turned to him and smiled, then got out of the water and took a towel and said, I'm Andine, a water elemental. Who might you be, child? Naruto smiled, then said, My name's Naruto, nice to meet you Nei-chan. You have a cool name. Andine smiled and then said, So little Naruto, what brings you here? I live here now. My daddy and mommy used to live here. Andine smiled, then thought, So Minato and Kashina's child. So you're a water elemental. That's so cool. Andine giggled at his cuteness, then said with a smile, Why, thank you, Naruto. I'm very happy to see Minato and Kashina's child. Naruto opened his mouth in amazement. Nei Chan knows my mommy and daddy. So you know mommy and daddy? Yes, yes, I did. Then Andine put on her clothes, which was a pure white tunic and light blue sandals. Naruto looked at her properly and saw that she was very beautiful. She had blonde hair, not as bright as Naruto's though, and she also had a small necklace of a blue dolphin. You're really pretty Nei Chan. Andine smiled at the child and said, Thank you Naruto. I accept you and pledge myself to you. Naruto smiled and said, Really? Thanks. Andine smiled and then disappeared in a swirl of water, but not before saying, Watch out for the other elementals. Naruto just watched in amazement and when she disappeared, continued to explore the garden. After exploring the garden, he began to explore the big tree of magic, which he had decided to nickname, the big tree. As he was climbing on the branches, he saw a man sleeping on one of the branches. He then climbed up to the man's position and took a good look at him. The man had brown hair and wore nothing, but a pair of pants. Confused, Naruto shook the man up and asked, Hey, mister, why are you sleeping on the tree? The man opened his eyes and looked blearily. He saw a small blonde child and then said, H hum. I was tired. How'd you get here kid? I climbed. Then the man completely opened his eyes and looked at Naruto. Hum. Looks like Minato's and Kashina's child. You climbed. Naruto nodded his head and then said with a big smile, Yep. I'm Naruto. What's your name mister? Naruto once again tilted his head. The man chuckled, then ruffled his hair and said, Nice to meet you. The name's Golem. Then Golem jumped down from the branch, I'm an earth elemental. And I accept you. Then Golem bowed and after bowing, walked backwards until he was against the tree and then merged slowly with the tree. See ya Naruto. Naruto looked in confusion then ran to where Golem had disappeared. See you. Then Naruto continued to explore the tree. He passed the dining room, which was in a clearing up in the trees. It was a large circle made completely of wood. In the middle of the circular clearing was a big circular dining table. Beyond that, was a sort of balcony, which let Naruto see the whole compound. Naruto continued to explore the tree, however, and kept climbing up. He eventually climbed to the top and looked out from his place on a branch. He then saw a woman in the sky, laughing. Naruto felt his jaw drop and he said with a shout, Wow! That's so cool! The said woman stopped in the air and hovered, then looked at the little boy watching her with stars in his eyes, and then she smiled, Kawaii! What's your name little boy? The little boy looked at her in amazement and said while tilting his head, My name's Naruto. 
What's yours nay chan? Naruto. Little fish cake. Then she giggled and then said, My name's Sylph. I'm an air elemental. Naruto then smiled brightly and said, That's awesome, wanna be friends? She giggled, then hovered down to Naruto's position and gave him a kiss. I wouldn't mind being your friend. I accept you and pledge myself to you. Then she giggled and disappeared in a swirl of air. See ya around Naru chan. Naruto smiled. I've got three elementals to accept me. Then he climbed back down to the ground and went to explore the underground. He saw a door to a big room and decided to walk inside. After walking inside, he gasped at the amount of scrolls located inside. There were more than 500 scrolls and each scroll was arranged in alphabetical order and in order of category. Fire, water, wind, earth, lightning, etc. Then as he was walking around, he saw a man, dressed in robes, reading a scroll on one of the many chairs on the table situated in the middle of the very large room. He walked over to the man, who had yet to notice him, and due to Naruto's height, Naruto couldn't see what the man was reading so he instead tugged on the man's robe. At least he's not like that other man, he's wearing clothes. The man then noticed him and spoke in a friendly manner, What are you doing here little boy? Are you lost? Naruto shook his head and said quite cutely, Nope, I live here. I'm exploring. Then he grinned widely. The man chuckled and said, Might your name be Naruto? Then Naruto tilted his head and asked, How do you know that? The man once again chuckled again and ruffled his hair, I was a friend of your mother and father. Really, that's cool. Are you an elemental? Then the man smiled and said, Yep, my name's Hotaru. I'm a fire elemental. Will you accept me too? Too? Wow, that's amazing. He's already got the others to accept him. Then Saul stood up and bowed, I accept you also. Then he disappeared in a swirl of fire. After that, Naruto didn't see them anymore. Naruto giggled at the memories, it was time to go back to the library. After reaching his destination, the doors opened. It's always like that. It opens by itself. Naruto smiled at the sight and walked to the history section. He had managed to finish reading the book on the hierarchy of the angels. However, he still wondered which angel he was. Then reaching out for a book entitled, The Elementals. He examined it first, then slowly opened the cover, and began to read. Elementals are beings either born from or with a strong affinity to one or more elements, and often with a debilitating weakness to opposing elements. Elementals are usually anthropomorphic or humanoid in shape, however, they each have elemental manifestations, which are the elements they represent, such as an earth elemental having a body of stone, or a fire elemental being a living flame or a dark figure enshrouded by smoke and fire. Elementals are said to be but mythological creatures, but they are in fact real and are actually supernatural beings. The elementals each have different abilities and are grouped with their own element. Elements are properties of various objects, living things, and the environment. These elements work together in harmony as not to upset the balance set by the celestial angels. Fire is the element of power, consisting of overpowering force tempered by the unflinching will to accomplish tasks and desires. Fire is most commonly depicted as a destructive but a life-giving element. Environments with an affinity to fire tend to be hot, hostile and dangerous. Fire is invariably opposed by water. The elementals of this element tend to be quite destructive and aggressive when angry, yet very passionate and warm. Elementals of this element are said to draw power from the sun and other solar objects. The leader of the fire elementals is Saul, who controls the sun. Water is the element of change, being able to adapt to almost any situation as well as dealing with the flow of energy. Water is often depicted as a restorative element, due to its real-life importance in sustaining life. Water environments tend to be serene and abundant with life. Water is opposed by fire. The elementals of this element are peaceful, but can be very violent when provoked. Master water elementals are able to control all forms of water and can use their defense as their offense. They can also use their opponent's own force against them. Elementals of this element draw power from the moon and the ocean. The leader of the water elementals is you, who controls the moon and ocean. Wind is the element of freedom and caprice. Environments which have an affinity to wind tend to be at high elevations or actually suspended in the air. Wind exists in opposition to earth. The elementals of this element tend to emphasize speed over strength, along with offense over defense. They are also peaceful and are also able to adapt to almost any situation. Though much more peaceful than water elementals, they also become violent, but only when all things precious are at stake. Elementals of this element draw power from air around them. 
The leader of the wind elementals is the angel Ananiah. Earth is the element of substance, making earth elementals in general proud, persistent and enduring. Earth is depicted as an element of stability, and most earth elementals are physically strong or imposing. Elementals aligned with this element can have tendencies toward either passive or aggressive behavior, and most favor defense over offense. Its environment can be either barren with soil or with abundance in life. Earth is naturally opposed to air. Elementals of this element draw power from the earth and are quite similar to nature elementals. The leader of the earth elementals is also the leader of the nature elementals, Gaia, or Mother Earth. Ether or ether is the element of purity and goodness, often commonly associated with life and the living. Ether tends to be more abstract than the other four elements in that it has no clear physical manifestation. It can be depicted simply as pure energy with no properties, or as the power underlying the other four elements. The celestial angels are the only ones to use this element. The planets and other heavenly bodies are said to be created from this element. Ether can have either restorative or destructive tendencies, but sometimes it can be both. Ether is what separates the celestial angels from the angels, who have a limited control over ether. Celestial angels have full control over ether, but must train to truly be masters of this element. The leader of this element is the leader of the celestial angels. Ice is a deprivation of water, but is often treated as a separate element. Ice elementals are not water elementals and can control only ice, but not water. These elementals are more likely to bear a cruel disposition, and exhibit more aggressive behaviors. Environments with an affinity to ice also tend to be more hostile and treacherous to navigate, not unlike icy environments in the real world. The leader of this element is Shiva, the Ice Queen. Electricity, regarded as a derivation of air and or fire, is sometimes treated as a separate element. Like elementals aligned with air, those aligned with electricity or lightning can be whimsical, but, like fire, it has a greater penchant for aggression and is very energetic or spontaneous. Elementals aligned with electricity apply the idea, the best offense is the best defense, the leader of the elementals of this element is the witch, Maya. Nature is the element of life. Nature is both a derivation of earth, water and a separate element, but it mostly connects and concerns with all life. Its attributed characteristics are various in earth characteristics like an appreciator of nature, philosophical, but a little bit stubborn, often detaches off from the world and sometimes refuses to cooperate or share ideas with others. Also, plant characteristics have the potency to be feral, but can be also tame. Nature is a very important element and coexists with the four elements of fire, water, wind, and earth. Its attributes can be strong and flexible at the same time, like a bamboo, and has a warm and expansive character. It is nourished by water and it ignites fire. It outgrows earth but is shredded off by metal. Nature elementals are very connected to the earth and can speak to and hear the voice of the earth. Also, nature elementals are very spiritual and many different spiritual races are nature elementals. The leader of the nature elementals is also the leader of the earth elementals, Gaia, or Mother Earth. Darkness is the element of shadows and death, often commonly associated with the forces of evil, dead, or the undead. However, not all dark elementals are evil. Darkness is both an offensive and defensive element and wielders of this element are very powerful and sometimes present some kind of threat to everyone. Different races are able to use this technique, but only a few are able to fully use darkness to its full potential. Some vampires, death angels, demons, and other races are able to use this element. Master users of this element are able to use the powers of the void, which involves black holes. There is no ultimate leader of this element, but there are great figures who are able to fully utilize the element of darkness to its full potential, such as the Shinigami, the Vampire Queen, the King and Queen of the Underworld, the King of Demons, and many more. The void, though not considered a living being, is where the dark elementals draw their powers from and is considered by some the true leader of the darkness element. After reading, Naruto put the book back and went for a walk, but then the seals of the door shone brightly, which meant that Naruto had a guest. Naruto was confused, but decided to answer it anyway. When the seals would activate, Naruto would receive a psychic message. So walking to the gate, he opened it warily and saw a masked figure, who closely resembled the Anbu, but was slightly different, due to the Nei, root, sign on the mask. Naruto then asked, still wary of the masked figure, who are you? The masked figure, spoke, I mean no harm Uzumaki-san, but Danzo-sama has requested a chance to speak with you. Then the masked figure bowed in respect. Naruto noticed that it was a man who spoke, but was slightly unnerved, due to the way the man spoke, without emotion. 
Who is this Danzo Sama of yours? He is my master and has sent me as his messenger. Naruto nodded in understanding and then, after a few seconds of thinking, spoke, I see. Then I will meet your master here in my home. We will speak then. Though he was only five, Naruto was not stupid and knew more than a five year old child knew. He had taken care in speaking with the man and had been reading the man's hidden intentions, whether there be any, but Naruto noticed no lie or doubt. This was another ability of Naruto's, to see the aura of others for any deception. The man spoke in monotone, very well Uzumaki-san. I will inform Danzo-sama. He has already decided a certain time, should you accept his invitation. And what would that time be? Danzo-sama has requested that the time be noontime. Nado smiled and bowed, saying, very well. Give my regards to your master and I will see him tomorrow noon for lunch. The man bowed back and disappeared. Naruto sighed, then walked back to his house, closing the gates as he passed. Then he slowly prepared to sleep, and dream of tomorrow's activities. The masked figure appeared in an underground facility and bowed after appearing, saying, he has accepted your invitation Danzo-sama and will see you tomorrow in his home at noon for lunch. Then he went on one knee. Danzo nodded and said with a voice that demanded respect, very good, I will see him tomorrow. Then Danzo thought for a few seconds and spoke again, you are now dismissed. The man stood up again and bowed, saying, thank you Danzo-sama. I will now leave. And the man disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Danzo smiled and spoke softly, I will meet you tomorrow, celestial angel. In another place. A young girl was training with swords, sparring with a clearly older man. After a few minutes of nothing but swordplay, both stopped and bowed to each other. Training is finished. You have done very well. The girl smiled and then said, Thank you sensei, I do my best. The man then smiled back and walked away. Meanwhile, the girl looked up at the sky and smiled softly, the time is nearly come. Naruto woke up to the bright light of the sun from his balcony window doors. He slowly got up and closed his eyes, reveling in the warm embrace of the sunlight. Then he slowly got up and with the saying of a word, his bed was made. He walked over to his bathroom and began to brush his teeth, to get rid of the morning breath. After brushing his teeth and washing his face, he relieved himself and then washed his hands after. He slowly stripped and turned on the shower's warm water. Then he walked inside and relaxed in the warmth of the water. He washed, shampooed, rinsed, and then scrubbed his body with soap. After taking a shower, he walked to his room and got changed. He put on simple training clothes, a white t-shirt with the Uzumaki swirl in the front, some black shorts, and black shinobi sandals. Then after changing, he went to the garden and began to pick out some strawberries and raspberries. After picking enough, he walked to the kitchen and washed them thoroughly. After placing them in a small basket, he walked up the stairs to the dining room up in the tree. There, he began to eat, thinking of his meeting at noon. I wonder what we're going to talk about. After eating all the berries, he began to train. He set out some clones to go to the library, some for chakra control exercises, and then some for his different jutsus. He himself was meditating. While meditating, he found himself in his mindscape, a large meadow with beautiful flowers and trees. There, he saw Kazuki sleeping against a tree and being the devious little child he was, he pounced on the unsuspecting demon. Kazuki almost choked since Naruto had jumped on him, but just made a grumbling noise. Tisk. Kit. Be careful. Naruto smiled from his position on Kazuki's chest and then buried his face in Kazuki's neck, then mumbled something. What's that, Kit? Kazuki said, bringing his ear close to Naruto's head. Then Naruto mumbled it out again and Kazuki just chuckled. Sorry. Naruto had said, head still in Kazuki's neck. Then Kazuki adjusted their positions so that Naruto was on his lap, head still buried in his neck. Kazuki ruffled his hair, then spoke. You okay, Kit? Naruto turned his to look at Kazuki as he answered the question, saying, I'm fine. It's just. W will my parents be proud of me? Kazuki snorted, then replied, of course they'll be Kit. I'm already proud of you myself. Naruto then smiled, buried his head in Kazuki's chest and said, thanks Kazuni. After a few minutes of silence, Naruto stood up and said, time to train, Kazuni. Kazuki smirked and then after standing up, got ready to train Naruto. After their training, Naruto was on the floor, panting and out of breath. However, he had a happy expression on his face. Then taking the hand that was offered to him, Naruto got back up to his feet and smiled brightly, then spoke, 
Thanks Kazuni. The training was awesome. Kazuki smiled, then replied, No problem, Kit. Never knew you could last that long. Naruto smiled, then got out of his mindscape. After getting up, he noticed that his muscles were kind of stiff, so he stretched for a good amount of minutes, then looked at the time. It was almost noon, 11.20. So Naruto created more clones to prepare lunch, while he himself took another shower since he felt sticky, even if his body didn't. After taking a shower, he wore a pure white kimono with the Uzumaki swirl and Namikaze family symbol at the back of the kimono and golden foxes at the side of the kimono. The belt used to tie the kimono was an orange color. Then he combed his hair and looked at his reflection and smiled. He looked at the time and noticed it was only 11.45. He then went to the dining room up in the tree and prepared the table. After that, he checked with his clones and noticed that lunch was nearly finished. He then went down to the basement and activated the security seals and protection seals with his blood and chakra. Then after doing so, he went to the front yard and looked at the flowers. After a few minutes, the seals for the gate activated, meaning a visitor. He went to the gate and opened it. There, he saw an old man, who looked crippled. He was with two masked men. Pleasure to finally meet you Naruto-kun. I am Danzo. Likewise, please come in for lunch, but please don't bring them in. Ah, very well. Then Danzo dismissed the two masked men, who bowed to Danzo, then disappeared. Naruto opened the gate and let Danzo in. Danzo looked around in amazement at all the life, as well as the compound itself. However, Naruto led the way and walked down the straight path which led to the tree. This is the front yard. The flowers never wilt since elemental spirits take care of the compound. Danzo nodded, but was intrigued. Elemental spirits? Then as they neared the tree, Naruto spoke. This is the big tree, known as the tree of magic. My ancestors created the tree, as well as the house. Danzo listened attentively and watched as Naruto teleported them to the dining room, which Danzo saw was in the tree. There, Naruto smiled gently and then spoke, please sit. Lunch should be ready. Danzo sat, but looked at the amazing view and noticed that he could see beyond the mountain. Then as he was thinking, food was placed in front of him by what Danzo noticed were clones. They placed different foods on the table and then bowed to Naruto. Please eat. Danzo nodded and both spoke, Itadakimatsu. Then they began to eat and talk between themselves. Naruto spoke about the compound and of himself, while Danzo spoke about his adventures as a young shinobi and he also spoke of Root. So you made Root? Yes, yes I did. I saw the need for another force that would take care of the more difficult missions. Naruto nodded, understanding. There were always missions that no one wanted to take, due to the difficulty of the mission. Would you like to join Root? Naruto then looked at Danzo, socked at the sudden invitation. After a few minutes of silence, Naruto finally answered, Yes, I'll join Root. Danzo smiled. He had a soon-to-be shinobi with more than enough potential. All he needed to do was train him. In another place, a girl was sitting, looking at the sky. It's soon time. She was waiting. Waiting for her time. However, she was very patient and knew that there would be a perfect time. All she had to do was wait. She was a guardian angel, entrusted to guard the last celestial. However, she could not yet guard him since he had yet to awaken. So in the meantime, she trained. Trained to be the best. She was very gifted, they had said. She was very well trained in the areas of sword fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat. She already had her own sword, named Serenity. This sword was hers and only hers. No one could use Serenity unless they were the owner. She remembered the first time with Serenity, when she was but a young girl. Now, she was very skilled and had already beaten her own master. She smiled. Since that was the last test for any master and apprentice. To surpass the master. She was also strong the area of hand-to-hand -hand combat and could take down even those five times her body's height and weight. She had already awakened her wings and they were a pure white color. She was also very gifted in the use of the elements. She could use the elements of air, water, and ether. She had already mastered them. Air and water first, then ether. However, she could not fully use ether since she was not a celestial, but she made up for her limited expertise in ether with her unlimited ability in air and water. She also had experience in the area of healing and she was already in her intermediate studies in medicine. She had far to go for that, but she was still very strong. Now all she had to do was wait. As Danzo left the compound, Naruto continued to think back at the time. Would you like to join Root? 
Naruto then looked at Danzo, socked at the sudden invitation. After a few minutes of silence, Naruto finally answered, Yes, I'll join Root. Danzo smiled. He had a soon-to-be shinobi with more than enough potential. All he need to do was train him. However, I am already training with someone. You are already training in your keke Jenke? Naruto was a bit shocked at that. How'd he know? Why you know about my keke Jenke? Danzo chuckled at the boy's shocked expression. Yes, I know about it. Don't worry. I'm sure I can help in that too. Naruto smiled brightly, then said, Thanks Danzo Oji-san. Danzo chuckled a bit. I have a nickname. After that they just spoke a bit, then Danzo had left, leaving Naruto to his thoughts. Was that a good choice? Time skipped four years later. Naruto bowed to Danzo as he approached him and from the confines of his mask, spoke, How are you, Danzo Oji-san? Danzo shook his head at the disrespect, but accepted it nonetheless. The conditioning did nothing to Naruto as he never became like one of Danzo's other root members, Naruto had emotion. No matter how Danzo made him take the emotion conditioning, nothing worked. However, that did not matter as Danzo came to see Naruto as his most powerful weapon, as well as his surrogate nephew. Despite Naruto's continual cheerfulness, Naruto knew when to be serious and when he was, he was just like the rest of the root, emotionless, in battle that is. I am fine Naruto. I see that your mission is finished, yes? Hi Danzo Oji-san. I completed the mission given to me. Very good. Naruto smiled at the praise and responded, Thank you Danzo Oji. That was one thing that Danzo could not stop Naruto in doing. Naruto always referred to him as, Oji-san. However, during times of seriousness, Naruto of course referred to him as, Danzo-sama. But that's not the point. Eventually, Danzo just gave up on the reprimands and mental conditioning. How is your training Naruto? I hope you are doing well. Hi, I am almost finished in my elemental training. This was an issue that shocked Danzo at first. For when Naruto was first trained, Naruto would absorb the information given to him like a sponge. This made it all the much easier and Danzo had finished training Naruto after two years, when Naruto was but seven. Naruto was now nine years old, yet had the experience and ability of a much older man. Danzo had already guessed that Naruto had surpassed him by far. Naruto was a prodigy and his bloodlines made him all the more stronger, for even without the bloodlines, Danzo knew that Naruto would still be very strong. Danzo was continually supervising the boy's training and was very impressed at the progress of his youngest and strongest student. Naruto had mastered more than one taijutsu style, the northern Shaolin style, the praying mantis style, and the dance of the leaf were but some of those styles. Each style Naruto mastered was performed at perfection. So perfect that the Sharingan could not possibly copy them. Naruto had slightly altered each style to make sure of the fact. He had already stated to Danzo that, I don't want those cheating copycats to steal my style, and had altered each style to suit him. Naruto had also created a few taijutsu styles himself, such as the Tripudio de Uranicus Angelus, Dance of the Heavenly Angel, and the Donum de Luna, Gift of the Moon. Naruto was also a master at Kenjutsu. He had managed to create a style by himself since no style could complement his weapon. He created two styles. The Donum de Luna, Gift of the Moon, which he had managed to create into a Taijutsu style also, and the Tripudio de Nex Angelus, Dance of the Death Angel, which he had created in memory of his mother. His weapon was a scythe called Falx de Nex Angelus, the scythe of the Death Angel, which his mother had passed on to him. The scythe was very large and was about six feet in height, meaning it towered over Naruto. However, Naruto could carry the scythe with much ease, as if he weren't carrying one. The rod itself was black and the blade was created of a certain indestructible metal. He had read in his mother's scroll that the Shinigami created the scythe himself and that the scythe had a mind of its own. Naruto had found the scythe's name when he had created a bond with it. The scythe's name was Anima, meaning life or soul. Naruto could also use the scythe to further strengthen his spells. No one could touch his scythe or wield it but Naruto. Many others had found out the hard way. If one who is not the owner of the scythe take hold of the scythe, the scythe will take the offender's soul. It was a scythe created by the Shinigami himself, Naruto had said, so those results were expected. Beyond Taijutsu and Kenjutsu, Naruto was an absolute master at Ninjutsu and Fuinjutsu. Naruto was still training in his elemental training, however, but he was still very powerful. 
Naruto at first had an affinity with only air, but after receiving the elemental's gifts, he had become an omni-elemental, meaning he could control any and all elements. Naruto trained with the elemental spirits in this area. He also trained with Hanako and Kazuki in his physical, mental, and elemental training. Kazuki helped him boost his physique and physical qualities, as well as in Naruto demonic abilities, which he had inherited from Kazuki himself due to their bond. Hanako instructed him in his angelic abilities and needless to say, Naruto was doing well. He had awakened his wings, but had not yet fully awakened. Hanako also taught him in the art of healing and Naruto had easily gotten this since he had perfect control, despite his unlimited energy. When Danzo had been teaching him different jutsus, Naruto had mastered them all to an extent where he did not need to use hand seals. His other bloodline, the voice of the wind, was already mastered thanks to the wind spirits and Hanako. He was also a renowned seal master, and had surpassed both Jiraiya and his father since neither had ever been taught in the art of angelic and demonic sealing. His genjutsu had also been built to perfection by Danzo, Kayubi, and Hanako. This perfection awakened an ability in his angelic bloodline and he now had a dujutsu called the Eye of Truth. He could see through any lie and could also analyze and scan any situation. This ability caused him to become a genius and he could see a person's strengths, weaknesses, etc., just through close observation. He also had different summons. He could summon kitsune, demon fox, doves, butterflies, wolves, and many more. He had developed a spirit bond with animals and as such, could summon them. He had many animals in his compound and he had managed to earn the respect of each animal species. He could fully summon Kazuki, or Kayubi, as the others referred to him. Also, his training with Kustos was still progressing and Kustos was teaching him angelic skills, just like Hanako. He had also mastered his family's techniques, including his father's Hiraishin and Rasengan. He did not use Horaishin, unless needed to. However, he had altered the Horaishin so that the seal that was to be placed on the designated area, no longer needed to be put manually. Instead of having to touch the designated object, or living thing, he could mentally create the seal and then place it on the designated object or living thing without having to touch it him, her. This was an amazing ability, but had taken him a very long time to create and then master. It required perfect control, focus, and mental ability. His father's other technique, the Rasengan, had also been mastered by Naruto. Naruto had completed all the stages and had created many variations of the technique, such as the Rasen Shuriken, Great Ball Rasengan, Twin Rasengan, Wind Release, Rasengan, Wind Release, Rasen Shuriken, Fire Release, Rasengan, and Fire Release, Rasen Shuriken. However, he had yet to mix earth, water, and lightning with his Rasengan. Now Naruto was standing before Danzo, wearing a blank mask on his face and the occasional Anbu-style uniform. These were his work clothes as Naruto had dubbed them. You are dismissed. Hi, Danzo Oji. Danzo smiled and then watched the young boy disappear, leaving no trace of his presence. Naruto appeared in his compound and took a shower, then got changed. He was the only one who was able to teleport so easily to his house. His house was very beautiful and Naruto was proud of it. Only Danzo and the third Hokage had been inside, and needless to say, whenever they entered the compound, they could not hold their shock. Then Naruto laughed as she took a shower, at the mention of his other Oji-san. Flashback. Naruto was standing in front of the Hokage and the privacy seals were activated. You what? I joined Root Oji-san. No, no, you will quit now, who knows what Danzo might. Oji-san. You might become like. Oji-san. And then you'll just be an emotionless. Oji-san. Naruto finally shouted. He was getting quite irritated at the third's words. I'll be fine Oji-san. I've already done the conditioning thing and Danzo Oji said it's fine if I have emotions, as long as I complete the mission. And I want to make my parents proud. I want to be strong so I can honor their memories. The third Hokage sighed, knowing that this discussion would most definitely end up with Naruto winning. Fine, fine. Then Naruto suddenly brightened up and jumped on the poor old man. Thank you, thank you. I promise to do my best and. But you'd better not end up dying or something. Of course I won't die Oji-san. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. The Hokage chuckled, then released the little boy. Good. I give you my blessing. Then Naruto smiled and deactivated the seals and was about to leave when he heard his surrogate grandfather sigh in annoyance and then glare at the thick piles of paperwork before him. 
Naruto tilted his head in confusion and then said, Oji-san. If there's too much paperwork, why not just let the cage bunch into them? Then the Hokage suddenly lifted his gaze onto Naruto and his mouth fell into an, oh. Naruto just smiled, then disappeared in a wind shunshun, but not before saying, Yane Oji-san. Flashback end. Needless to say, after that incident, the Hokage had allowed Naruto entrance into the Hokage library. Let's just say, Naruto finished reading all the scroll in just two months. He had also managed to master each and every technique, but that took much longer than two months. Then Naruto finished his shower and got out, putting his towel on. Then he went to his room and got ready for the day. His usual attire was that of a black tank top, then an armored vest with Konohas, the Uzumakis, the Namikazes, and the Senju symbol on it. He put on black armored fingerless gloves and also some weights on his arms. Then he put on a pair of trousers that reached down below the knee. He also put on leg weights and then put on some combat boots, specially designed to absorb any impact, no matter how strong. He put on his mask, a blank mask with nothing on it but a kanji of Shinigami's death angel. Then he took his special coat crafted by the elementals. It was a black cloak that provided intangibility, invisibility, and comfort. It was crafted from a special type of fabric that could meld into shadows. With the cloak, he could not be sensed, seen, or recognized. Not even the Byakugan or Sharingan could negate its effects. Also, he could meld into shadows, thanks to the cloak. The cloak was like the Grim Reapers in which it had a hood, was very long and black. It covered his blonde hair and even his shoes. However, it did not hinder his mobility or speed. Then after putting it on, he slowly appeared in the Hokage's office. There, the Hokage was waiting, along with Danzo. When he arrived, the seals in the room activated and it was then that Naruto removed his mask. Kanichi wa Serutobi Oji-san, Danzo Oji-san. Then both of the elders smiled, and replied, Kanichi wa Naruto-kun. This time the third spoke, Naruto, it seems that you are not really socializing with any of the children your age. At this, Naruto scoffed, he was clearly not impressed with the current generation's ninja-to-bees. We want you to take a team, Danzo finished for Serutobi. Naruto widened his eyes, and immediately, what? Why? I don't want to take a team. Then the Hokage replied, we want you to socialize with those of your age so if you don't take a team, we'll make you join a team. That's even worse. F fine. But not a team. I'd rather have an apprentice. The Hokage sighed, at least he'll take someone. Fine. An apprentice. Then Danzo spoke to Naruto, look at their files, then observe each student in class today. Naruto nodded and created some clones to read the files, while he went to observe the students. He could do this since his body splitting technique had been mastered to an extent that Naruto could see through all his clones, no matter the distance. So Naruto bowed, then put on his mask, and left through the shadows. The Hokage sighed once more, saying, at least he's taking someone. Naruto arrived in the academy and was hiding through the shadows, watching each and everyone closely. No one had sensed him. Not that Naruto expected them to. Then Naruto looked at each person, until he saw a certain bunch. Yamanaka Ino. Clearly a fangirl, but has great potential. Hum. File says she's got potential. Might even become just like her father. Good scores, above average. Taijutsu is low genin. Hum. She seems to have the potential to become an interrogator since her chakra control's pretty good. Also, has potential in becoming a medic nin or genjutsu specialist. Nara Shikamaru. Typical Nara. Lazy and like they say, troublesome, looks to me like a hidden genius. Has potential to be a strategist and interrogator. Akamichi Choji. Likes to eat a lot, eh? Seems to be quite good in his family's jutsu. Has potential to be a close range fighter. Inazuka Kiba and his ninja Akamaru. Dead last. Seems to be the boasting type. Feel sorry for whoever his sensei is, but seems to have potential too, as a hunter nin and close range fighter. Abarame Shino. Typical Abarame. Quiet, yet a genius. Seems to be one of the most qualified in being a ninja. Potential to be hunter nin and strategist. Hayuga Hanada. Hum, Hanada chan's definitely grown. Wonder how Neji is. Ha. Huh. She has the most potential out of all the girls in the room. Just needs a bit of confidence and she'll be perfect in close range fighting, as well as in becoming a medic nin. Haruno Sakura. Pathetic. File says Kunoichi of the year, yet she's weak. 
typical fangirl too, though she seems to have the book smarts. Not as smart as me, but oh, well. Seems to have perfect chakra control, but small capacity. Has potential to become a medic nin. If she gets out of that fangirl phase. Uchiha Sasuke. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Seems to be an avenger. I can't believe this is Itachi Ni's brother. Quite pathetic. I wonder. How'd he survive the massacre? Hmm, definitely not my pick. Has potential though. But he's too much an Uchiha to reach that full potential. After analyzing each student and reading their files, Naruto had selected the perfect apprentice. He appeared back at the Hokage's office. So picked yet? Naruto took off his mask, showing his grinning face, yep, I've picked. Naruto took off his mask, showing his grinning face, yep, I've picked Hanada as my apprentice. The Hokage smiled, then spoke, well, that's good. But you won't exactly have to train her just yet, if you want anyway. Naruto nodded, their graduation is three years from now, right? When they'll be twelve. Not just them, you'll be twelve too. Naruto rolled his eyes, yes, I know. I'm just saying. The Hokage shook his head, then spoke, well, you're dismissed Naruto, you can go. Naruto smiled brightly and hugged his surrogate grandfather, thanks Oji-san. I'll see ya later. Then Naruto disappeared, or faded more like it. The Hokage sighed, kids. Naruto appeared back at his compound and quickly got changed. He put on some black pants and a tight black vest, as well as his shinobi sandals and black fingerless gloves. Then he went to train but first created some clones to cook for him. After finding his usual spot in a clearing in the forest, he created more clones to multitask. After assigning jobs to each clone, he began to meditate. He appeared back at the meadow that was his mind. There, he saw Hanako and Kazuki. Hanako was standing there as if expecting him, while Kazuki was just leaning against a tree, also waiting. After seeing him, Hanako smiled, then spoke, Good afternoon Naruto-kun. Good morning Hanako Ne, Naruto said, as he smiled back. Good morning Kazu Ni. Then Naruto ran to Kazuki and tackled him from his place against the tree. As usual, Kazuki choked a bit, but smiled and ruffled the hair of his little brother figure. Good morning Kit, Kazuki said, as he continued to ruffle Naruto's hair. Then he looked at Hanako and she nodded. Naruto noticed there was an uneasy silence so spoke, Su. Kazuki chuckled a bit and decided to speak, well, Kit, Hanako-sama and I have found out that you are very strong already so we would like to have you begin the awakening ritual. Right now. Naruto said, confused. No, no, not now. The awakening will happen in its own time. But for that to happen, we need you to complete the first stage. F first stage. Naruto said, still quite confused. Yes, Kit, the first stage. This will remove all the limits on your body, meaning that illusion of you will be gone. Naruto nodded then looked at Hanako for further explanation. Well, remember the illusion I placed on you when we first met? The one that makes you have the whisker marks. Oh oh. Okay. When I neg in the awakening ritual, it will awaken your angelic blood and also demonic blood also. Meaning that once you pass through the awakening, you will receive the full power and all abilities of both celestial angel, as well as demon, Kyubi's chakra, and elemental, gift of the elementals. I understand. So can you explain more about the awakening? Okay then. You see. Through the awakening ritual, you will be tested if you are truly worthy of your celestial angelic blood. Your physical body will be unconscious. Should you pass the awakening ritual, you will be able to reach your full potential as a celestial angel. However, should you fail, you will die. Naruto nodded, understanding exactly what she was saying. With great power comes great responsibility. If I am found unworthy of the gift given to me, then why should I be allowed to live? I will do my best and I'll make everyone proud. However, Kit, due to the fact that the seal placed on you by your father converts my chakra to usable chakra to you, you have inherited the title of demon. But at the same time, since you are a celestial angel, your blood has not become one of a demon's, but your blood is still that of a celestial angel's, pure and perfect. So you have the full capabilities of a demon also. This makes the awakening ritual of yours even more difficult since you will also awaken your demon powers. But there is once again another complication. Since the elementals granted you their gift, the awakening ritual will now be twice as difficult. But do not worry. We trust in you Naruto. Naruto smiled at her encouraging words, I know I'll be able to do it. Hanako ne, Kazu ni, 
Danzo Oji, Saru Oji San, Ayame Ne, Tuchi Oji San, the elemental spirits, and Mama and Papa. They're all cheering for me. I will not lose. Meanwhile, in the classroom where Naruto had been, Hanada was listening intently to the words of the guest speaker, who was Anko. So let me demonstrate some interrogation techniques, Anko said, as she chewed on a piece of dango. Then Aruka immediately shook his head and moved his hands vigorously, and no, thank you, Anko san. I don't think that. Well, Aruka sensei here has decided to volunteer. Isn't that great? Anko interrupted, then after finishing her dango, threw it carelessly onto the floor. Then she spoke, now, watch this kitties. And no, Anko, no, Aruka said, as he dodged Anko's snakes. The whole class widened their eyes at the crazy snake woman, but Hanada seemed to be the only one unaffected and instead began to write notes, while she watched Aruka sensei continually dodge the snakes that appeared from the sleeves of Anko's trench coat. It was nighttime and Naruto was still busily training in his compound. He had clones do all sorts of things, some were going over each and every chakra exercise that Naruto had managed to learn, water walking, tree walking, leaf concentration, weapon balancing, and others. Some were in the library reading every single book all over again, some were cleaning the compound, some were tending to the gardens, some were going over each and every technique he knew, and some were being taught by an elemental spirit, Hanako, Kazuki, and Danzo. The original was meditating and thought of every single accomplishment he had. He had managed to achieve a near-perfect control, which would become truly perfect after the awakening ritual. He could water walk subconsciously and could fight very easily on water. It was the same for his tree walking, which he had mastered a long time ago. He mastered both weapon balancing and leaf concentration and could do both flawlessly. Other chakra control exercises he had mastered were the whirlpool balancing exercise, the waterfall walking exercise, and the elemental exercises. The whirlpool balancing exercise had three parts. To make a whirlpool, maintain that whirlpool, and then balance on the whirlpool while maintaining it. Naruto had completed the first step quite easily, but steps two and three took longer to complete and eventually master. He would practice on the lake in his compound's lake. The waterfall walking exercise was similar to both the tree walking and water walking. It needed focus, balance, and control. The difference was that both the tree walking and water walking exercises had no interference or opposing force, while the waterfall walking did. The water would crash down on Naruto as he tried to run up the waterfall and then down again. He had mastered it after a long time of practicing and could both run and walk up the waterfall. Walking up the waterfall was obviously more difficult, but Naruto had proved that, practice makes perfect. The elemental exercises were very different from the other exercises since they required an elemental affinity and since Naruto was an omni-elemental, all the elemental affinities, he was able to perform and perfect each elemental exercise. Each exercise involved creating a certain element. For fire, Naruto would hold a piece of paper and then try and burn the whole paper from the edges. Naruto soon mastered this and could easily create a spark of fire with just the snap of his fingers. For water, Naruto would hold onto a semi-wet towel or cloth, and then try to make the whole cloth wet. Naruto mastered this and could form water from the air itself. For wind, Naruto would try to cut a leaf in half using wind chakra only. Naruto had mastered this in just a few minutes, due to his unnatural gift in the wind element, as well as his father's bloodline. For earth, Naruto would try to move a boulder, without breaking it, through just a punch infused with earth chakra. Naruto took the longest mastering this since earth was the polar opposite of wind. For ice, Naruto would try to change normal water into ice. For lightning, Naruto would have to try and create a bolt of pure lightning. Another part of the exercise was redirecting lightning, which was a very dangerous exercise since it could prove fatal if performed incorrectly. However, Naruto managed to master this and could cover his body in pure lightning subconsciously. Naruto also had a large array of effective and powerful techniques. His control over wind had reached its mastery and his father's bloodline made his wind techniques five times stronger and more effective. He had also mastered his control of the other elements due to being taught by the elemental spirits and Naruto could summon any of the elemental spirits to aid him, should he need them. Also, Naruto was a master at hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as in kenjutsu, sword fighting. However, instead of a sword, he used a scythe. 
he rarely used his perfected styles of the Tripudio de Aranicus Angelus, Dance of the Heavenly Angel, and the Donum de Luna, Gift of the Moon, unless he needed to. He had other perfected styles, however, such as, the Northern Shaolin style, the Praying Mantis style, and the Dance of the Leaf. The Tripudio de Uranicus Angelus, Dance of the Heavenly Angel, had been created by Naruto himself and consisted of flexibility, precision, speed, and strength. The style required flexibility in both dodging and attacking, was both offensive and defensive, and consisted of fast, precise strikes in certain areas of the body. Naruto would use his wings while performing this style, making the style quite formidable and earning the style its name. Naruto would use his wings in evading and blocking. In short, the style consisted of dangerous palm strikes, swift kicks, mid-air gliding, and incredibly fast movement. The Donum de Luna, Gift of the Moon, had also been created by Naruto and was first a style he used in consistency with his scythe. However, Naruto had managed to make it both a hand-to-hand -hand style and a style for his scythe. The style was based on each cycle of the moon, meaning the style had over nine stances, all slightly different. The style also required flexibility, speed, and agility. In hand-to-hand, -hand, the style was designed to overpower or paralyze the opponent. When using the scythe, each stance required that the scythe be swung a certain way. Like the crescent stance, Naruto would swing the scythe in a crescent shape. However, in the new and full moon stances, Naruto would perform different combos that were incredibly fast and powerful. Naruto was also able to infuse elemental energy with the style, such as lightning to shock or stun wind to cut, or fire to burn. The other styles that he had slightly altered such as the Northern Shaolin style, the Praying Mantis style, and the Dance of the Leaf so that they could not be copied by the Sharingan. The Northern Shaolin style generally emphasizes long-range techniques, quick advances and retreats, wide stances, kicking and leaping techniques, whirling circular blocks, quickness, agility, and aggressive attacks. Naruto had practiced each empty hand technique through predetermined combinations. Naruto had mastered it so much that he could perform the style naturally based on instinct. The style in itself was not only practical in application, but also graceful and artistic in nature. Each movement had to be done in a fluid-like motion combined acrobatic techniques, making it a very beautiful, yet deadly style. The Praying Mantis style placed heavy emphasis on close-range fighting. The style involved short, yet powerful movements and also a knowledge of the human anatomy since the style had aspects of both internal and external techniques. The heavy emphasis is on hand and arm techniques, and a limited use of low kicks. The application of close combat methods with an emphasis on hands and short kicking techniques make the Praying Mantis style a very powerful and effective style. The hands are the most readily available for attack and defense of the upper body, and protect the stylist by employing ruthless techniques designed to inflict serious injury. The legs are moved quickly into range through footwork to protect and defend the body, and attacks are limited to short kicking actions so as to never leave the mantis combatant off balance and vulnerable. Another style that Naruto had managed to create was the Tripudio de Nex Angelus, Dance of the Death Angel, which Naruto used with his scythe. Naruto also used his wings in this style and the style is very similar to Tripudio de Uranicus Angelus, Dance of the Heavenly Angel, but instead required the use of a scythe. The style consisted of strong, powerful strikes and use of the elements. Naruto did not use kicks or punches, but relied on his scythe. Naruto had to train very hard in mastering the style since it lacked in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but heavily relied on attacks with a scythe. Naruto's wings were used to block and also perform attacks. So with his wings, he could create gusts of wind with just the flap of his wings. Also, Naruto's wings would become black whenever Naruto fought using this style since the style required dark energy. Due to Naruto's near-perfect control, Naruto could perform a vast number of medical techniques. However, he was still far from Tsunade's level. Naruto could only heal first, second, and third degree burns, bone damage, infections, and other common infections and injuries. However, he was a master in Genjutsu, or the art of illusions since he was trained by Kazuki who was a master in demonic illusions, Danzo, as well as himself from the scrolls he had read. Naruto had also achieved a lot in his mother's bloodline. He had awakened all the stages before the initial awakening ritual. Naruto had free will over his wings and could awaken them anytime, although he did so slowly and carefully as not to cause any injuries. Naruto also achieved control over his spirit bond and used that skill when communicating with the animals. 
Naruto's omnigualism would not yet fully awaken until his awakening ritual. It had been two days since Naruto had spoken with Hinako concerning the awakening ritual, and Naruto was sitting in the meditation room of his house, which was located up in the big tree, when the seals to the gate suddenly alerted him of a guest. So Naruto got out of his meditation, wanting to be polite, and went to the gate to greet his guest in person instead of sending a clone. When he arrived at the door, he saw someone he had not seen in over a month, Hayuga Hanada. Hello Naruto Nisan. You don't mind if I come in for a visit. Naruto smiled. Hanada had already gotten over her shyness years ago. Instead of a shy, timid girl, Hanada was a very strong and stubborn woman. She was also incredibly scary whenever she was angry, Hiyashi had told Naruto. Of course I don't mind. We haven't seen each other for about a month, right? At this, Hanada slowly nodded, but as she was about to speak, Naruto suddenly took a hold of her hand and led her in, while saying, Come in, come in. Hanada smiled and allowed Naruto to lead her in. Hanada had began to call Naruto Nisan after her ordeal with the Kumo ambassador. She was very thankful and began to see Naruto as an older brother, and Naruto did the same by seeing her and treating her as his little sister. Also, thanks to Naruto's interference that night, she was not kidnapped and possibly used as breeding stock. The Kumo ambassador was put into prison for the attempted kidnapping of the Hyuga heiress and when Kumo heard of it, they immediately demanded the head of the Hyuga head, but the third Hokage had gotten very angry and instead of sending the head of the Hyuga head, he instead sent a threat letter saying that it was Kumo who was in violation and the Hokage had also written that Kumo was to send them compromise money lest Konoha attack them for their foolish actions. Needless to say, Kumo had immediately sent back money since they couldn't afford to have a war with the Hidden Leaf Village, said to be the strongest hidden village. Also, the Hokage had the Kumo ambassador executed for illegal trespass in Hyuga territory and for the attempted kidnapping of the Hyuga heiress. Then Hinata was once again in awe of the beauty of the Namikaze and Uzumaki compound. Naruto chuckled, they always did that every time they entered the compound, be it the Hokage, or even Danzo. Then Naruto led her to the dining room up in the tree and held out the seat for her, to which she took, uttering an, arigato. Then some clones entered the room and placed some tea and sandwiches on the table. Naruto began to eat, kindly offering Hanada some of the food, to which she took graciously. Then they began to talk about this and that, both simply laughing sometimes. Hanada smiled and kissed her Naruto Nisan's cheek chastely. Naruto smiled and then spoke, I'll see you soon Hanada Imouto. Hi. I'll see you again soon Ni-chan. Remember don't overwork yourself. Naruto rolled his eyes, which got him a slap on the back of his head courtesy of Hanada. Gomen, Gomen. Don't worry about me Hanada Imouto. I'll be fine. Hanada smiled once more before suddenly taking a scary look, with fire in the background. Naruto widened his eyes as Hanada did that, and instantly became silent. Now. Listen Naruto Ni-chan. You'd better not overexert yourself. Hanada said dangerously, as she adopted a scary look, fires blazing in the background. Naruto then began to nod vigorously and said, Why yes, Hanada Imouto. Then Hanada suddenly took a happy expression and kissed Naruto on the cheek again, who said, Bye Imouto. Tell me if you need any help, in anything. Of course Naruto ni chan. Then Hanada was about to walk away, but then Naruto suddenly hunched to the floor in pain. Hanada immediately took a concerned expression and quickly knelt down to her Ni Chan. Are you okay, Ni Chan? What's wrong? Naruto just felt even more pain and grunted in pain. It's happening too early. Then Naruto fainted as the pain began to increase, the last thing he heard being the concerned cries of his Imouto. In Eden, multitudes of angels felt the sudden burst of pure angelic energy. It was felt by all in Eden and among them. One angel put her hand over her heart and slowly whispered, be careful. However, in a large citadel located in the center of Eden, the council of angels had gathered and were discussing the sudden burst of angelic energy. The council consisted of several angels, each seated on a chair in the large circular table. Each of the angels, regardless of gender, wore a long white tunic, held together by a golden clip. They also wore sandals on their feet. The angels did not look old at all, but seemed to be in their twenties. Also, there were not only male angels, but also female angels. It seems that the last celestial has begun the awakening ritual. Yes, it's true. However, I wonder if he will pass. Don't say that. Surely, we must have faith in him. 
Yes, I agree. For now all we can do is hope that he does pass. Then and only then can we bring his guardian. After her training that is. We can't send her when she has not finished with her training. I, I. Well, concerning her training, how far is she? Then all the angels look to a certain angel, also seated in the large round table. The said angel smiled, then replied, her training is going well. I believe that it is but a few more days, till she finishes with her training. Then an angel, who seemed to be the oldest and wisest, judging from both his appearance and the look in his eyes, spoke in a baritone voice, that is wonderful news. I can only hope that during the last celestial's awakening, someone will be there to watch him. Another angel, a female, smiled and spoke, yes, it seems that little Naruto already has someone protecting him. Then she gestured to the large screen that was suddenly projected in the middle of the large round table. All the angels smiled softly as they saw the image. Hanada was placing a wet cloth on the sweating forehead of her knee Chan as he lay on a large bed, his face visibly showing pain. Hanada had immediately carried him to the bedroom after seeing that he had fainted and using what knowledge she had in first aid, she checked his temperature first and noticed that he had a very high temperature. Seeing this, she was not idle, and immediately went to the kitchen to fetch a warm cloth, as well as a basin of water. And now, she was continually changing her knee Chan's wet towel, as well as trying to figure out what was going on. Back in Eden, a young girl was slowly going through different katas, stances, with her sword. After sensing the influx of pure angelic energy, she had immediately began to train. She was determined to finish her training so she could fulfill her role as guardian. That was it, her creed, her destiny, her life. She would never give up and with that thought in mind, she continued her deadly and beautiful dance with her sword. Meanwhile, Naruto, after fainting, had suddenly found himself standing on a large stone circle that seemed to float by itself, float on nothing. He quickly closed his eyes and focused his energy, determined to truly find out what was happening. What's going on? It is the awakening ritual. You are finally going to begin with the ritual. So it's true. Yes, it is very true Kit. Now, open your eyes and get ready. This test will be nothing close to easy. Naruto mentally nodded and after thanking the fox, opened his eyes, the fire of determination visible. After finishing her training, Tokiko went to get herself clean. Then after doing so, she got dressed in a white kimono with long sleeves that had a red collar and stopped above the knee. She also tied a light pink belt around her waist in a bow that reached down her back right behind her knee. She wore light pink fingerless gloves that reached just below the elbow, tight dark red shorts that were just above the knee, light pink shinobi sandals and had a red ribbon tied to her right ankle. Her hair was tied together in a bun by a long red ribbon and she had a long earring on her right ear with a moon hanging at the end of the chain. She looked at the mirror and smiled. She always took care of her body and the result of her constant training, as well as careful minding of her body had resulted in her well-kept and beautiful figure. She was happy with her height also, which was a five foot. She also had beautiful skin, not too white, but at the same time, not at all tanned. She held beautiful blue eyes and had long golden hair, not as bright as Naruto's, but not like Ino's either. Her training had gone well and after so many years, she had finally finished with her training. She was a master at swordplay and also at illusions. Her sword's name was Mucro de Putus Curator, Sword of the Pure Guardian, and it was a sword given to her by her mother and had been passed from generation to generation. The sword itself was beautiful and was a bit longer than the normal sword. The hilt of the sword was colored black and from the hilt, a light pink ribbon was tied together as a bow and was the same color as the ribbon tied around her waist. The blade of the sword was silver and despite the age of the sword, the blade was flawless and not one gash was on it. It was said that the blade was made of a strange metal that upon damage, would instantly repair itself. It was both very durable and strong. Inscribed on the sword were the words, in kanji, spirit is the sword and experience the sharpening stone. The scabbard, case, for the sword was beautiful and had inscribed on it the wings of a cherubim, and also the kanji for its name. It was a platinum silver color. She smiled at the thought of her sword, which she had received when she first started her training in swordplay. She had after so many years, finally mastered the use of her sword and her family's style of the sword. Now, it was finally time to go and holding her sword with its case in her right hand, she smiled and thought, it is finally time. Then a pair of large pure white angel wings sprouted from her back and she took flight. Naruto stood in attention with the fire of determination visibly burning in his eyes as he stood atop the large floating stone. 
He looked at his current state and noticed that he felt none of the previous pain that had plagued him and instead he felt alive and the feeling was amazing. Then mysterious figures appeared in front of him instantly making Naruto alert and ready. The figures slowly dimmed into vision and Naruto widened his eyes at the unexpected guests. Tokiko grunted as she blocked an attack with her sword. Just as she was about to leave, her wings ready, some demons suddenly appeared and attacked her. Now she was blocking each attack, while at the same time looking for an opening. Uck, who are these demons? The demons themselves looked absolutely horrendous. Their bodies were composed of rotting pieces of flesh that seemed to have been sewn together, the stitches visible. Their faces were like those monsters seen only in the most dark of nightmares and each demon was foaming a yellow fluid, which Tokiko had deduced was either poison or acid. Their bodies had none of the distinguishing characteristics of a human such as toes, hair, or even skin. There were three demons in total. Tokiko once again dodged the claws of one of the demons. She slowly lifted her hands in a defensive stance, her sword being gripped tightly by said hands. Illusions don't work and I don't even want to know what that yellow foam is. Guess I'll have to use my sword. Suscitatio. Mucro de Putus Curator. Awaken. Sword of the Pure Guardian. Tokiko shouted and with those words, her sword began to pulse and light up. The light covered the whole place and the demons screamed in pain as the holy light surrounded them and caused them a great deal of pain. After the light dimmed, Tokiko was now in her battle outfit, the outfit described in the previous chapter, her sword in her right hand. Then she closed her eyes for a second and after opening them, she vanished from her spot and appeared next to a demon, her expression emotionless. Then as she appeared in midair, she swung her sword in a half circle and decapitated the demon before disappearing again. And before the demons could even figure out what just happened, she decapitated them all in just three seconds. After doing so, she appeared on the ground, in a half kneeling position, her left knee on the ground, her right foot firmly on the ground with her knee up, her left hand also placed above the ground with her head facing down, and her right hand, which still held her sword, raised up at the sky. Then she stood up and cracked her neck with her left hand, her right hand holding onto the sword. After cracking her neck, she lifted her left hand and pointed it to the decapitated bodies of the demons but with her left hand in an open palm position. She closed her eyes and then whispered, Sanctus Incendia, Holy Fire. White flames appeared on the demon's body and slowly but surely burning them, not even leaving ashes behind. So Tokiko opened her eyes again and willed her wings to appear, to which they did, on her back. Then she took flight once again and continued on her journey. Naruto was in a fierce hand-to-hand -hand battle against a dangerous opponent. Who was his dangerous opponent you ask? Well, you'll just have to see. Naruto grunted as he was kicked back, but not too much as to push him out of the still floating stone circle. He got up immediately, and just in time too, as a small crack appeared where he had just been kicked back into. Not wanting to be put into the defensive for the whole battle, he ran to his opponent and delivered a strong roundhouse kick, which was blocked by his opponent. Then as the opponent held onto Naruto's foot, Naruto spun and sent back the kick, which hit the opponent right in the face and eventually pushed him back due to the power in the kick and the speed at which it was delivered. Naruto then watched as his opponent immediately got back on his feet, no indication of the kick harming him. Naruto's eyes widened as he watched his opponent's emotionless face. So he steeled himself and without a second thought, sprung to action, an emotionless expression also on his face. He then backflipped in the air and brought his foot out to strike. His opponent dodged to the side just as the heel of Naruto's foot hit the ground and Naruto immediately got into the praying mantis style after delivering his heel kick. With the quick transition, Naruto got into the position with his hands hanging lazily as he lifted each arm and one leg bent in front of him, the heel of his right foot planted firmly on the ground and his left leg slightly bent in order to balance. In a show of speed, he brought his bent right leg up to kick his opponent in the stomach, which did hit. However, he was not yet finished with the attack as he used the palm of his right hand to push up his opponent's chin and said with a shout, Mantis uppercut. This caused his opponent to launch in the air and then land unceremoniously on the stone's edge. Not giving his opponent any time to spare, Naruto launched himself from the kick of his left foot and brought his right hand in a palm strike, aiming straight for his opponent's heart. However, just as fast as his earlier kick, his opponent grabbed a hold of his outstretched arm from the side and flung Naruto to the side of the stone circle, causing Naruto to widen his eyes and then grunt in pain as he landed painfully on the ground. 
Just as Naruto was about to get up from where he had landed on his stomach, his opponent struck his back with a palm strike, pushing Naruto rudely against the stone ground and causing him even more pain. Naruto rolled to the side and just in time, as his opponent delivered another palm strike, which caused a crack to appear on the hard stony ground. He cringed as the pain had caused damage to his bones. Kit. Be careful, he's really fast, what did you expect? Sorry. Now go and defeat this guy. I'm already healing you as fast as I can. Thank you Kazuni. Then Naruto dodged as his opponent began his combo, which consisted of low kicks and palm strikes. However, one of the attacks hit and Naruto cringed in pain as he was pushed back. Arg. That really hurt. Naruto then got up and went back to his praying mantis position and ran to his opponent, who looked absolutely normal. Then Naruto began his combo, while shouting, hidden palm combo. Then Naruto's hands, which were held in an open palm, blurred and after a second, his opponent was thrown back. The hidden palm combo was a combo that used only open palm attacks on vital parts of the body, but only lasted for a second. However, after hitting some of the major parts of the opponent's chest, the user, in a show of speed, adds energy into the last attack and strikes the opponent's stomach. The result would be the paralyzing of the nerves in the parts of the body that were hit, as well as a deep pain in the stomach that could cause one to vomit. The result was instantaneous as Naruto's opponent was thrown back and then began to cough out blood. Still with his impassive mask, Naruto sprung into action and did the same as his opponent had. He struck with a palm strike to the back, while his opponent was on his four still coughing out blood. This time, however, Naruto managed to complete the attack by adding more energy into the second open palm strike, while shouting, double palm. His opponent screamed in pain and Naruto then took a hold of the opponent's arm and threw him out of the stone circle, to which he fell and fell. Naruto panted for a while as he spoke to his tenant. So how'd I do? Not bad. Though you could have finished the whole thing faster if you hadn't underestimated your opponent. Sorry. You'd better be, you almost fell off the circle. Naruto sighed, as his knee chan continued to rant about the dangers and of what could have happened if he lost. Sorry sorry. Next time I won't underestimate my opponents, especially not myself. Hanako sighed as she watched Naruto finish his first test, a hand-to-hand -hand only battle with, your own self. That trial was quite hard and although most angels completed that trial, there were still some who lost. Besides that, it was also a test of humility. It taught never to underestimate anyone, even yourself. For pride is the downfall of many and only in humility will you be raised up. Now, it was time for the next test, one that would prove to be far more difficult than the previous one. Tokiko stood once again in a battle stance as she faced off with another group of demons, the 15th group to be more precise. Why do these annoying demons keep appearing? Then she quickly blocked, as one of the demons had with him a sword also. With a quick spin, she managed to decapitate the demon and the others too. You'll never stop me, Tokiko thought as she took flight, for the 16th time today. Naruto once again heard that deep booming voice that he had heard in the beginning of his trial, well done celestial angel for finishing the first test, a physical battle with oneself. Now it is time for the next test, which will be much more difficult than the previous test. Beware and be ready celestial angel. Then the voice once again disappeared and there appeared before him his next opponent, his mother. Naruto grunted as he parried scythes with his mother, who he had to fight and then defeat for his second test. At first they had spoken softly with each other, but Naruto knew that his mother was really serious about the test and when she surprise attacked him with a quick punch, he instinctively blocked it but cringed in pain at the force and sheer power of the single punch. It is my mom. Then both mother and son exchanged punches and kicks, Kashina's being very strong and almost overpowering Naruto due to his small state, while Naruto's punches and kicks were faster and aimed efficiently. Because of this, they reached a stalemate and decided to test each other in armed combat. So Kashina brought forth her original scythe, Falx de Nex Angelus, scythe of the Death Angel, which left Naruto confused since he thought that he was in possession of said scythe. Don't I have that with me? Then Naruto opened a storage seal, which was inscribed at the palm of his hand and there appeared on his hand the same scythe. Falx de Nex Angelus, scythe of the Death Angel. He looked at the scythe in his hand first, then turned to look at the one in his mother's hand. He kept alternating between the two, confusing himself even more. Kashina sighed and shook her head as she saw her son's face contort into one of confusion, then into more confusion, and even more confusion. 
Naruto. That got Naruto's attention though he still looked to be confused. His mother sighed as she held her side with both hands, you're having your awakening ritual now so don't be so confused. Anything can happen here. Then Kashina shook her head as she remembered her awakening ritual, it was different from Naruto's one of course, and her own bewildered face at seeing two identical scythes during her fight. I guess it's true then. Like mother, like son. Kashina then adopted a serious expression on her face and slowly spoke, now we continue the test. And with a burst of unnatural speed, attacked Naruto with a downward strike. Naruto quickly blocked, but just like in the earlier hand-to-hand -hand battle, his mother was very strong and almost overpowering. Almost. Using every ounce of willpower, he returned the attack and both figures began their deadly dances. Naruto used his created style of Donum de Luna, Gift of the Moon, while his mother used her own style that surprisingly, was very similar to Naruto's own. Despite his small physique and young age, nine years old, Naruto excelled faster than anyone in his age group and even those above his age group. It was due to his genes of an angel, which usually guaranteed a faster learning and understanding of things, and Kyubi's own demonic chakra, which changed his whole body by enhancing it. From muscles to bones, to his senses, to his own brain activity, everything had improved. This was why Naruto could withstand such difficult training routines and rituals since usually someone of his age could not even awaken their own chakra yet themselves. So Naruto could eligibly be a prodigy, as one called it. His abilities now were all because of training, not power boosts since what happened to his body happened to him as a baby not when he was growing. Therefore, each thing that distinguished him from the normal nine-year-old child was either in his blood or in the effects of demonic chakra being forcibly sealed into his body as a baby. So as Naruto parried strikes with his mother, his strikes being faster and much more swift than his mother due to his small physique and training, Naruto thought of the hard work and training he'd done. I won't let all of that hard work be in vain and with one final downward strike from Naruto, he leapt back and with an outstretched hand, he uttered, Windblade. And with that, wind began to gather around him and as he finished uttering the two words, blades of pure wind began to shoot from his hand and then he sprung back to Kashina's position and with his scythe, he struck downwards, uttering, Wind Aura. This gave his strikes even more power and edge since the wind reformed around his scythe and spread over the blade of the scythe, like a whitish aura. Surprisingly, Kashina was able to block it, after blocking and dodging the other wind blades that Naruto had sent from the palm of his hand. She was able to block due to her strength and power though without that, she would surely fall due to the added speed and power the wind granted to her son's scythe. Then they exchanged strikes again, this time Kashina was on the defensive, continuously blocking and dodging since the aura of wind granted Naruto more speed and strength. Naruto's scythe glowed white as Naruto leapt back once again in the sky around Naruto and Kashina also changed into a dark night sky with a crescent moon illuminating the sky along with some stars. Naruto closed his eyes, sighed softly, then opened his eyes and began his deadly combo, after uttering, Tripudio de Luna, Primoris Crescent, Dance of the Moon, First Crescent. And with that, he leapt over to Kashina and swung sideways again and again, and again, Kashina had managed to dodge, but after the first five strikes, it became faster and faster until she couldn't keep up and was instead hit repeatedly. Then Naruto crouched and used the non-sharp end of his scythe to hit his mother on the chin, which caused her to be lifted in the air. Naruto stepped back as Kashina was lifted in the air and with his palm outstretched yet again, he uttered, Valdi Efrejoper. Anelo de Andine. Great breakthrough. Breathe of the Andine. Kashina was engulfed in wind that swirled around her and kept her immobile and floating, while whips and blades made of wind appeared around her also and began to strike mercilessly at Kashina, who still clutched at her scythe. Then Naruto held his scythe firmly with both his hands and delivered with his scythe, a silver crescent-shaped attack that seemingly shot out from Naruto's scythe itself and hit Kashina. The sharp blade hit Kashina's side and gave to her a long wound that was shaped as a crescent across her stomach. Kashina screamed in pain as the blade tore through her stomach, leaving behind a crescent-shaped wound that could have tore through her and cut her in half if she didn't possess a healing factor as a death angel. After the initial blade attack, the wind around her suddenly pushed her back and sent her flying. She would have fell off of the stone circle had she not used her scythe. She used her scythe's blade to strike the ground and to keep her from going back any further. Naruto panted and watched his mother as she prevented herself from falling. She then stood up and Naruto widened his eyes and watched in amazement as the crescent-shaped wound on her mother's stomach slowly disappeared, 
but left behind a crescent-shaped scar as evidence of Naruto's attack hitting her. Kashina was also panting albeit more than Naruto since she had been the unfortunate victim of Naruto's combo. Then focusing her energy, she healed herself. First the various cuts on her body and then the main wound on her stomach, which eventually faded away. However, there was a crescent-shaped scar across her stomach. She didn't mind since the scars of battle reminded her that she herself had survived. She had other scars of course, but that was currently irrelevant. Naruto gaped openly at his mother as she healed every scratch, cut, and wound that he himself had earlier inflicted on her. How'd she do that? It's even more grand than my healing factor. As if reading his mind, Kashina spoke, us death angels have a very strong healing factor, if not the strongest, and only the most serious of wounds will be very difficult to heal. Naruto nodded his head in understanding, then prepared himself for her as she was not yet defeated. Kashina saw her son get into a battle stance and as she flexed her arms, she said, well, time for the big guns, ready Naruto. Naruto looked at her confused. What did she mean by that? Oh. He watched as she bowed her head and then black wings emerged from her back. However, as she slowly lifted her head, she had looked different. Her red hair now had several black strands that collaborated with each other perfectly and her eyes were now dark red. Instead of looking very demonic, she looked more as an angel since her eyes did not look demonic or hold any ill feelings. Her wings, dark black in color, slowly woke to life and Kashina flapped them as if stretching. She then looked at Naruto in expectancy and Naruto eventually realized what she wanted, after 15 seconds of silence and staring, and he too brought out his wings. Since he had yet to awaken, Naruto's eyes did not change either or his bright blonde hair. The only evidence of his transition from normal human looking boy to yet to awaken celestial were his pure white wings, which he too flapped. Then both figures held their respective sides, both identical, and charged at each other, their wings flapping and lifting them from the ground. As they both clashed with their sides, a shockwave of energy erupted from their sides but did not harm them. After clashing, both would retreat back and then disappear after a step and would once again appear at the center, clashing swords. It continued on like this, only blurs and bursts of energy seen from the fearsome battle between mother and son. It eventually ended as both Kashina and Naruto grinned, focusing their energy on their sides, making their sides glow. Then they leapt over to each other again as blurs and clashed. Kashina pushed her scythe forward and kept doing so slowly, due to her overpowering strength. However, Naruto gritted his teeth and also pushed forward, causing both scythes to slowly move away and then move toward Naruto. Naruto was slowly losing energy and due to his mother's strength, he was failing and the scythe continued its slow journey towards Naruto's neck. No. I can't, see can't lose. Naruto thought and images of his precious people appeared before him giving him their own word of encouragement. Papa. Mama. Serutobi Gigi, Danzo Oji, Ayame Ne Chan, Tuchi Oji San, Hanako Ne San, Kazuki Ni San, Kusto Sensei. I can't and won't lose. Then with new energy, Naruto pushed back and Kashina's eyes slowly widened and she pressed even harder. However, Naruto's new strength was much too overpowering and with renewed vigor, Naruto completely pushed back at his mother's scythe and caused her to be pushed back and she fell to the ground. Kashina opened her eyes and then widened them as she saw the blade at her throat. And with a smile on his face, Naruto said, yield. Hanada was still tending to Naruto. However, his condition seemed to worsen and she looked as his face displayed different emotions. Pain. Nervousness. Happiness. Pain. More pain. Determination. Then finally happiness. Naruto was of course smiling due to his victory against his mother, but Hanada didn't know that. Naruto ni san needs help, but I can't leave him. She continued to look at her options in her mind and in the end, she decided, she couldn't leave Naruto alone so she had to somehow alert someone without leaving Naruto's side. I I don't know if I can do it though. However, as she looked at Naruto, whose face was now set in an pain-filled expression, she decided she had to do it. So putting her hands in the correct hand seal, she burst her chakra, which she hoped would alert someone. Someone. Please come. Kashina smiled back to her son and said, I yield. Naruto then offered her his hand, which she gratefully took, and he lifted her back up. You have passed this test. I am proud of you. Kashina then disappeared from sight, her final words echoing in Naruto's mind. She is proud of me. Well done Celestial, you have passed the first test. 
You are willing to fight your mother, if you had to. Now this is the next test. A test of emotions. The deep booming voice disappeared and Naruto immediately fell on his knees, holding onto his head and closing his eyes. Demon. Monster. Go and die. We hate you. Demon. We hate you. Then Naruto screamed in pain. Hanako looked sadly at Naruto's hunch figure and a tear fell from her eye and down her cheek. The next trial. To be forced to endure all the pain you had felt before, but this time. Altogether. Naruto screamed again. And that's it. Not. Sorry. I was about to stop here, but decided not to. Was deciding for a long while too. Well, sorry for doing this again, but like I said, I was simply debating. Oh. Please continue the rest of the chapter, it's not exactly over yet. I wonder how many of you people can figure out exactly what trial Naruto's in. Sorry, I was babbling. Well, anyway like I said, please continue with the rest of the story, sorry for the inconvenience equals. Naruto screamed and writhed in pain as each memory, each repressed memory made itself known once again, and what Naruto thought he would never ever feel again, well, he was wrong. Each lie, betrayal, backstab, beating, abuse, and all things negative weighed down inside Naruto's head. He continued to scream and cry, asking for the pain to go away, but alas, it would not. Demon brat. Murderer. Monster. Evil demon. We hate you. No one cares about you. Go and die. Then Naruto fainted after screaming in pain at the sudden memory, his mindscape changing from a beautiful meadow, back to a wet, vile sewer. W where am I I? Naruto looked around and looked at his hands and feet. What's going on? Fortunately, the pain had gone from Naruto's head. However, he had no idea where he was. Wasn't this th kit? Are you alright? Naruto immediately widened his eyes and looked around for the owner of the voice, but found no one. Kazu ni! Naruto exclaimed, deciding on just shouting as loud as he could, mindscape or not. Kit. I'm here don't worry. Unfortunately, I'm unable to be there with you, but I can at least talk to you for now. F for now. What do you mean? This is still part of the test so I'm guessing you'll have to do that. That. What do you mean by, that, earlier, you were in pain because all of your repressed memories suddenly broke out of your mind block and well, engulfed you at once. B but why? Don't I block certain memories subconsciously? Yes, but something caused all those memories to suddenly be unblocked. I'm guessing it's part of the whole test thing. Yes, and because of the influx of repressed memories, your mindscape changed into what it was in the beginning. A sewer. But didn't I get rid of that? You didn't exactly get rid of it. Then Naruto had a look that just said, spill, and so he did. You only repressed it and along with your deepest fears and dark memories, buried them deep in the depths of your mind. So right now, I'm in the deepest darkest part of my mind. Yes. You can probably really get rid of this place if you manage to defeat the Guardian. Guardian? Yes, Guardian. Since these are your repressed memories, your mind subconsciously created a Guardian to protect those certain memories. So all I have to do is defeat this, Guardian, then I get rid of this place? Yes, but it's not exactly easy to defeat the Guardian. Since he's possibly your dark side. What? Did you think your mind would create some old man or something? Your mind just created a personification of the darkness that dwells within you. So I have to face, me, again. This won't be the same as earlier, but it will be much more difficult. You see, since he is dark and everyone's got their dark side, he won't just be some mindless robot who looks like you, but he really will be you. Figuratively of course. What? So what do I have to do to defeat him then? Well, can't help ya their kit, but I'm sure you'll think something up. Well. I have to go now. Wait. Kazu ni, I believe in you. Then with that, the voice disappeared and Naruto was once again left alone. Thanks a lot for the advice Kazu ni. Naruto muttered, shaking his head as he paced around the large sewer he called his mindscape. Then out from the shadows emerged a dark figure. Hello there. Fortunately, Hanada was able to create a big enough burst of chakra that alerted some of the ninja around her. When they went to investigate, Hanada told them to alert the Hokage, to which they did. The Hokage then alerted his old teammate Danzo, who went to wait for the three Hanada, Naruto, and Sarutobi in the Hokage's office, while the Hokage himself went to Naruto's house and with Hanada, brought Naruto to the Hokage's office. After arriving shortly, 
The Hokage activated the security and privacy seals around the room, while Danzo closed the blinds and windows, and Hinata took the still unconscious form of Naruto and laid him down on the floor. All in five seconds. DDUK no W what's wrong W with Naruto ni? Hinata asked, still gazing at her beloved brother's pain-stricken face. The Hokage placed his hand on Hinata's shoulder and smiled reassuringly, don't worry Hinata, he'll be fine. Hinata nodded and smiled back at the Hokage, then went back to gazing at her knee chan. Danzo spoke next, explaining, this is caused by his bloodline, the heavenly gift of the angels. A hey, angels? Hinata spoke, wide-eyed as she turned to look at the old warhawk. Yes, Naruto's clan descended from angels and at some point in their life will be tested if they are worthy of their ability. The Hokage spoke, continuing on from what Danzo explained. S Naruto ni will be be fine. I'm not really sure, Serutobi replied, a sad tone in his voice. But all we can do is hope. Danzo continued, with words that no one would have ever thought he would say. And Hinata smiled, gazing at Naruto's face. Yami Naruto, Dark Naruto, looked at his counterpart and then smiled widely, unknowingly scaring real Naruto. So you must be my darkness right? Naruto said questioningly, still keeping his gaze at his counterpart. Wrong. Then Yami Naruto paused, closing his black orbs, then reopening them, just as he continued. I'm the real you. The true self that lies at the bottom of your heart. Real? Naruto's eyes widened and he replied, No, you're not. I'm the real me. You're nothing but. I'm the truth inside you. The real you. Yami Naruto interrupted. T the real me. And no, it's then Yami Naruto interrupted once again. I'm the hatred you hold dear. I'm your darkness. Real, Naruto narrowed his eyes, is that what you think? It's not what I think, it's what I know. I'm the real you, you can't get rid of me, imposter. Real, Naruto spluttered, I imposter, I'm no imposter, it's you. Then, real, Naruto pointed at Yami Naruto accusingly. Then Yami Naruto smiled, and set into a run, in, real, Naruto's direction. As Yami Naruto ran in a burst of speed, his fist was pulled back and ready to strike, and when he reached, real, Naruto's position, he punched down with his left hand, which, real, Naruto blocked. Then both Yami Naruto and, real, Naruto engaged in a purely taijutsu match, and as, real, Naruto blocked a punch from Yami Naruto, he exclaimed, you're the imposter. Hanada looked, still staring at the still face of her Ni-chan, Naruto Ni-chan. The third and Danzo were still there, discussing several, political, things. Hanada just sat there, carefully watching over the face of her Ni-chan. Then suddenly, his still face contorted into that of a pain-filled expression, then determination. What's going on? Hanada thought quietly. In Naruto's mindscape, both, real, Naruto and Yami Naruto were on the ground, huffing and panting. Real, Naruto swore, then thought, he really is just as strong as me. If we keep fighting, we'll go on forever. As both Naruto's slowly got up, Yami Naruto smirked, then said, You can't take me down. It's impossible. Naruto spoke. Then I'll beat you with numbers. Then, real, Naruto created clones and they appeared by the hundreds behind him. However, Yami Naruto just smirked, and then did the same, which left the, real, Naruto surprised. W. -wa. When Kazu Ni said that he was me, he wasn't kidding. I'm guessing the number of clones are the same, real, Naruto said. Yami Naruto smirked yet again, then replied, you catch on quick. A few hours later, both Naruto's were once again sprawled at the floor panting, panting hard. Yami Naruto stood up once again just as real, Naruto did too. Then he smirked, nothing's gonna change, you can't beat me. Real, Naruto was still catching his breath, but he had gone through every strategy he knew, but none seemed to work. Yami Naruto was his equal. He wasn't any better than the real Naruto, but he wasn't weaker than Naruto at the same time. As, real, Naruto was brainstorming, he finally realized it. There's no way to overpower him, he has all the same moves as me, but then. Since I can't beat you, you must already know right. W what? Yami Naruto said, actually confused for once. Oh, I'll bring up a mental image. Then Naruto closed his eyes and opened them, just as a huge screen appeared, of the hidden leaf village. I want to protect this village. Yami Naruto snarled, 
then began shouting. WHO gives a shit about them. They are the ones WHO have been abusing US and betraying US. It was their rules that made US a pariah, an outcast. Yami Naruto then placed his hands above his heart, and continued his tirade, it hurt right. It was torture right, I'm the only one WHO really understands. You can't trust them. Real, Naruto replied, well, the villagers are important, but first there's someone else I need to believe in. Yami Naruto looked in confusion and shock, I need to believe in myself. I need to show the people that I'm someone they can be proud of. Yami Naruto stood there silent, wide-eyed. Then after a moment of silence, Yami Naruto fell on his knees, back still straight, but head bowed down, then he laughed. Laughed. Hu hu ah ha 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 ha. Yami Naruto then shook his head, muttering, nnh. They. They hurt us so much. Why? Yami Naruto continued. Real. Naruto then spoke, it was the third Hokage, and all the other Hokages. They all possess the will of fire. The burning desire to protect those precious to them. A and all those Hokage. They all had complete faith in themselves, they never sulked or whined about their responsibilities, they're proud of who they are. So what? What am I to you then? Am I just an obstacle to you? Yami Naruto shouted out. Real. Naruto replied. Thanks to what you've made me realize, you've made me stronger. Then what? What am I supposed to do now? Yami Naruto had already broke into a run, fist pulled back and ready to punch his counterpart. However, real, Naruto stayed still, unmoving, and just replied, what do you think? And as Yami Naruto was about to punch, real, Naruto, real, Naruto simply swerved a bit to the side and caught his counterpart in a hug, the punch forgotten. Answering the unanswered question from earlier, real, Naruto spoke, you be like me, because you are me. Yami Naruto simply stayed silent, in shock of what, real, Naruto had just said and done. Thank you. For showing me the light. Then Yami Naruto's eyes brightened and turned to white and slowly, he faded. And in a few seconds, Yami Naruto had faded away. Hanada smiled as she saw her Ni-chan's face light up and smile, however, she wasn't the only one. Hanako looked in happiness as she watched Naruto pass the test. You actually did it. Amazing. Naruto watched as both Yami Naruto and the sewer-like background disappeared and faded back to what it was before. A beautiful meadow. There, he saw a quick image of his mother, father, and Kazuni, each smiling. Well done son. You managed to defeat me. I am so proud to be your daddy. We believe in you. I knew you could do it Kit. And as the image faded away, Naruto couldn't help but smile and let a lone tear fall down his cheek. Well done. You have finished this test. Now your final test. He is in much danger, the regal demon finally spoke. And. Tokiko questioned, her eyebrow raised in suspicion. It's not just someone after him. They have come, the demon said nonchalantly. Who exactly are you referring to? Ex sinus sinerus adveho everto quad inconcessus, the demon said, as his face was bowed down. Out of the ashes come the demons and the forbidden. Naruto stood patiently waiting for the next task. He was quite tired already from the various trials that he had to overcome by himself. As he waited, the taskmaster spoke, your next trial shall be. One of your soul. Then just as suddenly as the dark voice spoke, it disappeared and Naruto was left waiting. Hanada was still kneeling in front of her beloved Ni-chan and it had already been quite long since she had been sitting there. However, there was still no progress and her Ni-chan was still left in a coma-like state. The third and his advisor had already spoken to her of the trial and of what was wrong with Naruto, but she still couldn't believe it. Ni-chan was an angel the whole time. How could I have not known? Hanako watched attentively as Naruto got ready for his last trial. The last trial. To test one's willpower and strength of spirit. The final trial. The visage of a dark figure emerged and it seemed that the figure was not human itself. It wore a large cloak that was seemingly made up of raven feathers. The cloak was itself very thick and looked as if it were made up of more than one cloak. The figure also wore a cloak with the hood on and only glowing red eyes could be seen from the front of the hood, giving the figure a dark, mysterious visage. The figure was also wearing black gloves and besides that, he held a dark black staff since the dark cloak was very big and thick. He slowly approached the shocked figure of Naruto and then spoke in a deep voice that held power, Hello boy. I will be giving you your last trial. Are you prepared? 
At first, Naruto spluttered nonsense until he finally got over the shock and answered with determination in his eyes, Yes, I'm ready. Then the dark figure bowed its head for a while and Naruto could have sworn that it, he, she whatever it was had just smirked. Am I being mocked? The dark figure lifted his head and Naruto could clearly see the glowing red eyes and was extremely shocked when he suddenly felt as if his soul was being pulled out. The taskmaster smirked in response as if reading his thoughts and addressed his unspoken question, Yes, I am pulling out your soul. And yes, this is your test. Naruto responded with a pain-filled scream. Tokiko was thinking as she walked along the path to the human realm, no more demons suddenly attacking her. What do I need to do, to help my master? Then in a flash of light, she disappeared. Why you're e enjoying ing tth is, a aren't cha. Naruto said and grunted in pain as the taskmaster suddenly grabbed on harder. I'm actually surprised that you have managed to survive until now boy. The taskmaster then smirked, though it could not be seen from under his hood, when Naruto suddenly grunted in pain, this time louder. But I doubt you will last any longer. Naruto gritted his teeth in response and remembered the words of Hanako. Within yourself, you hold the power of a great angel. If you embrace your gift, then you will never be defeated. He then closed his eyes and began to bring out his gift. Hanada gasped as Naruto's body began to glow a pure white. When the Hokage and the Elder turned their head, they also gasped, but did not remain stationary. The Hokage set a privacy jutsu around the room while the Elder closed all the windows and closed the blinds. Yes, there are blinds. This is fantasy do so yeah. The Hokage had already shooed the Anbu that were hidden in the room after placing Naruto's limp but breathing body on the floor hours ago, so it was just Hinata, the Hokage, and the Elder there and obviously Naruto also. Then something happened that caused all three people to gasp again. Naruto's wings had appeared. The Taskmaster watched in disbelief as Naruto began to push away the Taskmaster's hand, without touching him. He must finally be using his gift. Maybe you'll pass, Angel. Then with a shout, Naruto managed to push away the Taskmaster's hand with pure willpower. However, this caused the Taskmaster to push it away at least a meter away. After getting up, the Taskmaster finally took off his hood, revealing the face of none other than his father, the fourth Hokage. Hello. Son. H. Hokage-sama. W. What's wrong W. with na naruto kun Hayuga Hanada said. After checking his vitals, the Hokage sighed in relief and spoke in his old yet sage-like voice, Naruto-kun will be fine. He does not seem hurt. It must an effect of his trial. A about that, H. Hokage-sama, H. How am much longer? Hanada said, albeit very timidly. I do not know Hanada, but all we can do, is pray that he will even come out alive. The Hokage said, with a serious expression on his old wrinkled face. The elder nodded in response and then assured the girl, Naruto is very strong. I know he will get through this. Hanada smiled in response and what she saw next shocked her. After seeing his father, his mouth dropped to the floor at his very large gape. However, his father then disappeared in a yellow blur and before Naruto knew it, he was already in his face. Why so shocked son? Naruto then proceeded to fall back on his butt, but his father had caught him by the waist and Naruto was left red in the face, because of embarrassment not incest. D dad. Naruto hugged his dad with his face in his dad's chest and arms around his waist. However, after a few seconds, Naruto snapped out and punched his dad roughly on the chest, saying, why didn't you tell me? Minato scratched the back of his head in response then replied, sorry son, but it's customary for the father to administer the test and when that happens, the father has to be dead serious, and well, I wanted to play around a bit with you. What? Why did you say, dead serious, then? Naruto said as he tried to punch his father in anger, but Minato just dodged each punch with ease and responded with a scratch on the back of his head and a ehehe. Then Minato disappeared and appeared behind Naruto and said, far too young to be trying that son. Naruto sent a punch behind him, but when he turned, his father wasn't there, so he turned around again and saw his father smiling right at him. Su, they had a repeat, with his father catching him and shaking his head. Naruto pouted in response and after getting out of his father's grasp, he smiled and said, I did it dad. Minato ruffled his son's hair as he replied, yeah, yeah you did. Then his face went serious and he spoke to his, I am very proud you have finished your trials. Your first trial being known as the expertus de ego, test of self, 
where you were made to face yourself. Well, your current or should I say, old self. Your greatest enemy isn't the one that hunts you down. But is yourself. Always remember that. Naruto nodded, indicating that he was indeed listening. The second trial is known as the Expertus de Vires, test of strength. You are pitted against your own family member and have to defeat them with all you have. With all your strength. Naruto smiled at that, remembering the fight with his mother, which he had unbelievably won. The third trial is the Expertus de Obscurum, test of darkness, where you must learn to accept yourself for who you are. No one is perfect so you must learn to embrace every part of yourself, good and bad, since you cannot be wholly one or the other. And of course, the final test, the Expertus de Mos Quad Phasmatus, test of will and spirit, is where your pure will is tested. Not your physical capabilities, but your fighting spirit. Those with weak wills will not survive in this harsh world. They will be cast away and will die an early death. So, I'd like to congratulate you son. For passing all the required tests. You didn't even cheat. Not that you knew how. Then Minato turned his head to the sky as he spoke again, but unfortunately, because of the influx of power and limitless potential, you will no longer be able to utilize your chakra. Naruto's eyes widened at that and he turned to his father in surprise, why you don't mean that? Minato just smiled a sad smile, your chakra pathways will cease to exist. Tokiko found herself in front of the gate that would eventually lead to the human world. So with no regret behind her, she walked and then disappeared in a bright light. Hanako smiled from her place watching Naruto's final trial. You finally embrace your gift. However, because of that, you will be hunted down. A and I was about to end it here, but I figured my chapters are short so I will continue on. Please continue reading if you like the story. If you don't, please remember, I hate flames and that this is a fantasy story and fanfiction. That means that this is all created by imagination, which is limitless, as such, this story is not ridiculous. B but how will I be able to fight? W without chakra? Naruto questioned, absolutely shocked at the prospect since he had trained a very long way and for it all to just disappear wasn't such a happy thought. Your chakra will be replaced by angelic energy, but because of the Kyubi's constant contact with you, you will also be able to utilize purified demonic energy, which is not the same as angelic energy. Naruto sighed a sigh of relief, then voiced out his thoughts, so I won't be all useless, but I'll have to train all over again won't I? Minato responded with a cheeky smile and by replying, I'm afraid so. Naruto slumped his shoulders and huffed with annoyance. All that training. Gone to waste, and then I have to train all over again. But before you leave, I have to talk to you about your partner. Partner. Time skipped three years later. Naruto is now twelve years old. A figure lay against the tree and appeared to be sleeping. He was wearing a beautiful, long white coat, which was strapped together with white belts across the figure's chest. The coat had a long white collar that covered the neck of the figure. The resting figure also wore matching tight white pants that didn't seem to be stained at all, even from contact with the ground, laced boots, white fingerless gloves with gold markings on it, and a necklace with a strange symbol hanging from it on the figure's rising chest. All in all, the sleeping figure was beautiful. It was obviously a male and had long, shoulder-length spiky hair that was a faded yellow with prominent white highlights. He had bangs from the sides of his head and also a long chain earring with a cross on the end of the chain on his left ear. He seemed to just lie there peacefully and after a few minutes of beloved silence, two new figures emerged from behind another tree, but these two figures were female. One was pale-skinned and had pale lavender eyes and shoulder-length hair that was a dark lavender color. She wore a light blue jacket with tight shorts that came just below her knee. She also had blue ninja sandals and a ribbon tied to her right arm with a leaf insignia and also a strange symbol that resembled the wings of an angel. The other figure was a brunette who wore a red kimono with black adorning the edges and had a pair of black tights. She wore sandals that were light brown in color and tied to her hair was the same ribbon with the exact same insignias. She also had a chain earring but on her right ear with a crescent moon hanging at the end. Both girls then approached the sleeping figure and knelt down right next to him and a few seconds later, the male opened his eyes and gave a bright gentle smile. Naruto. Naruto stood up from his position on the grassy ground and stretched his muscles. Meanwhile, both Hinata and Tokiko also stood up from their kneeling positions and it was Hinata that spoke, Happy birthday Nisan. Hinata had already lost her stuttering habit long ago thanks to both Naruto and Tokiko, who both encouraged her. 
their continued support helped her gain back her self-esteem. That, and the fact that Tokiko had told her off every time she stuttered. Now, Hanada was both a confident and beautiful girl, at a young age of 10 years old. Her hair's not long yet since she's only 10 and she's two years Naruto's junior. Yeah, happy birthday Naruto. Tokiko said with a smile on her face as both girls gave Naruto a hug. Naruto smiled, saying, thank you. I know I'm only 12, but still. At the age of 12 Naruto had indeed changed, both in physique, strength, and spirit. He had grown and was quite tall for a 12-year-old, towering at 5 feet 7. He had also grown more handsome even though some of his baby fat was still present. He was obviously more mature and this fact was supported by the look in his eyes, the way he spoke, the way he walked, and his facial expressions. Despite the loss of chakra in his body, Naruto discovered that he had another power source that replaced the chakra, mana. Mana was not exactly the same as chakra, but was quite similar. While chakra was both physical and spiritual energy, this explains chakra capacity and chakra control, mana was purely spiritual energy and could be drawn straight from both the air and the earth itself. Because mana was purely spiritual energy, using mana did not take a toll on his body and since he was apparently the only one with access to this special energy, he would never run out. Mana was actually present in all things living and ghosts and spirits were actually a form of mana. Mana could manifest into different types of energy and that fact made mana very powerful. However, since mana was only spiritual energy and since Naruto had previously had chakra, his body destroyed his chakra pathways and all traces of chakra and then modified his body to be able to hold mana. This meant that it was very painful for Naruto and after passing his test, he went into a comatose state for a whole week, just because of his body changing itself. Kayubi aka Kazuki also had some part in this and upgraded Naruto's physique so that he wouldn't be weak. After waking up from his comatose state, Naruto couldn't feel anything. He was literally numb from all the pain and had to spend another week of bed rest. Let's say he wasn't happy at all because even after the one week of bed rest, he was still quite numb and had to take a lot of physical conditioning sessions to get his muscles back in shape. However, they were worth it all. He was back to shape in physical standards and was still learning. Also, after the test, his spirit had grown even more stronger than ever and his willpower rivaled even the Hokages. This was good since mana took its toll on spiritual energy and not on physical energy. This didn't mean that mana took away vast amounts of spiritual energy, but only took small amounts. However, after extended use, mana would become like a second skin and wouldn't need any sort of payment for its uses. Naruto was not yet at this stage, it would still take him some years more to fully understand and then master the use of mana. His current state was still at its middle, meaning his mana was still developing and growing every second. In short, he was very different from the normal 12-year-old and not in a bad way. Don't forget that you have to be my teacher, Hanada exclaimed, obviously happy. Naruto sighed but smiled, of course. I always follow through with my promises. Naruto had indeed promised Hanada that he wouldn't ever change his mind about teaching her after she found out. Hanada smiled and gave her Nissan a big hug, yay. Tokiko felt kind of out of place but then suddenly a thought popped up in her mind, by the way, when are you teaching her? Yeah, when are you teaching me? Hanada asked, her grip tightening abruptly after hearing what Tokiko said. Naruto gulped and looked at the sky in question. In a beautiful meadow, it was empty but for one person who seemed to be meditating. In a lotus position, eyes closed, and feeling the elements, Naruto was at peace. He could hear the songs of the birds, the trickling of water from a nearby stream, the leaves being rustled from their place on the tree by the wind, and even the movement of the little ants not even a meter away. His senses were more enhanced after his test and he couldn't help but be extremely thankful for that. However, his time of peace was soon disturbed by the rushing footsteps coming his way. N Naruto ni chan, Hanada said, softly panting from the running she had done. Naruto opened his eyes in response and after having gotten up from his meditative position, he walked over to Hanada and gave her a hug. Hanada squeaked in response but nonetheless hugged back. How are you Hina chan? Naruto asked the girl, still hugging her. Hanada smiled at her ni chan and responded, I'm fine ni chan. Tokiko-chan told me to call you back to the mansion. It's already late evening. Indeed it was, for the moon was already there at the sky and providing light in place of the sun. Ah. Sure. 
It is already quite late. Let's go. Naruto then took a hold his Imaudo's hand and together, they left the now empty meadow. Meanwhile, Tokiko was at the Namikaze courtyard, practicing her swordplay with Daisuke, great help. She was practicing the katas for a style that the guardian angels were all taught, Mucro Proficio de Curator, Sword Art of the Guardian. She had been practicing since she was a young girl and was already quite a master of it, but one wise saying of the angels was, there is always room for improvement. And so, she continued with each motion, performing with perfection and beauty. This was the scene that both Naruto and Hinata had gone home to. It would sound weird that Hinata was at Naruto's house late at night, but Naruto and Hinata had become like blood siblings and even Hiyashi saw that, so it was perfectly okay for Hinata to be there since she was sleeping over and doing some training with both Naruto and Tokiko. As soon as both Naruto and Hinata were in view, Tokiko closed her eyes in anticipation and without warning, attacked Naruto with her sword. Naruto was used to this already and just blocked her sword with his own sword that he had just summoned. However, Hinata was not amused and did not like the feeling of two swords pressed against each other right next to her and she did only what a Hyuga could do or someone with deep medical knowledge could do and immobilize the both of them by hitting their nerve points, leaving them on the floor immobile. Their swords clanged as they fell to the ground and the two now paralyzed ninja glared at her from their positions on the cold ground. Hanada smiled cheekily in response and proceeded to walk past them, but not before gently picking up the two swords and apologizing to the both of them, which would be considered weird for a normal person but no one in this story is normal so it wasn't so weird. Anyway, Hanada knew that the effect would soon wear off, especially for Naruto who was already picking himself off the ground and smiling at Tokiko who was still immobilized and on the cold hard ground. It was a few seconds after that Tokiko herself stood up and stretched but both Naruto and Hanada were already out of sight. Tokiko huffed as she walked inside the incredibly large mansion and after closing the door, she saw Naruto holding his own sword and petting it. Hanada was holding her own sword and was holding it with the utmost care. Seeing this, she smiled and walked over to the young girl, who smiled and handed the sword back to his rightful owner. Tokiko accepted her sword back and after checking for any damages, and finding none, she went to Naruto who was sitting on the sofa with Hanada on his left side. So how is the strain Naruto-kun? Naruto slouched, saying, it's getting worse and worse. I see. Tokiko then put her head down and began to think. Because of the sudden change in his body, he's still having a hard time adapting to the mana, even if it's been three years. Even after three years of having mana, Naruto was still not fully adapted to it. This was because he was born with Chakra, father, and because his mother never had mana since she was only a death angel not a celestial angel, Naruto was having a very difficult time with having to adapt to a foreign energy that he'd only had for three years. Also, Naruto was so used to Chakra since he had started using it at such a young age. However, his physical strength, endurance, qualities were perfectly fine. Besides adapting to mana, he had trained his body like mad. He started with normal weights and eventually got heaver ones since one did not just adapt to having so much weight so Naruto started small and went higher from there. But I'm getting better with it so after a few more years, I should have fully adapted. Naruto said, breaking Tokiko out of her thoughts. Even if you manage to fully adapt to it, it will take even more years to master it, Tokiko said matter of factly. At this, Naruto bowed his head in resignation. But if you never give up, you'll be a master in no time ni chan, Hanada said, trying to bring her brother's spirits up. And it worked. That's true. I never give up or back down. Naruto then held his fist in the air, his eyes sparkling with renewed hope. Tokiko shook her head, but was smiling. Hanada's right, and with our help it'll take even less time, Tokiko said. Naruto smiled in response, then hugged his two sisters. Naruto's training was not the normal chakra control exercises or elemental control exercises. Instead, he would meditate for hours on end. This would help with his concentration since mana required utmost concentration and full control over emotions. Naruto had been doing this for three years and if you never watched from the beginning of his training, you'd think that there had been no improvement, but Naruto had seen it and he knew he had definitely improved. When he first started, he couldn't even lift up a pencil with mana. But now after three years of meditation and concentration, he could easily lift up a very large boulder with mana alone. This didn't mean much, but Naruto had changed from a level 1 in his mana training into a level 4. 
mana was separated into different levels. Level 1 being the beginner level and above level 12 being the master level. However, even reaching up to level 8 would take years of training, but Naruto had help. Concentrate Naruto, Hanako exclaimed as she caused different sized boulders to be thrown over to Naruto, who was in his meditative position and had his eyes tightly shut. I'm trying. Naruto was being stretched beyond his current limits as he could not move from his position and could only use mana to deflect the rapidly approaching rocks. This was a test of his. He had to divert the rocks without moving from his position, meaning mana alone. However, without total concentration, the speed of the rocks would overpower the mana used and basically hit Naruto, who still wasn't allowed to move. Come on Kit, you need to concentrate. Kazuki was casually watching from the sides at Naruto's test exercise. You're not the one having to do this. Shut up. Naruto shouted, eyes still closed tightly. Hanako was supervising Naruto's training with mana since she was the only one fit to do so. She is one of the few that can use mana. Come on Naruto-kun, Tokiko said, even as she was reading a book from the sidelines. However, Naruto did not respond as he was too busy concentrating to even hear what she was saying. Naruto was actually tied to a boulder and his test was to use mana to try to lift up all the leaves, which was a lot considering it was fall season and he was in front of a tree, which was still dropping its leaves. But Naruto remember, patience is a virtue, and with that thought in mind, he continued with his almost impossible task. Now Naruto's training was learning how to use that skill in pushing, pulling, deflecting, and lifting. An easier reference to this skill would be telekinesis. Mana had different forms and telekinesis was one of them. Naruto had also been training in flexibility and dodge training since he had a fragile body, being a celestial. Mixed with his telekinesis, he was a very strong adversary for any enemies he had or would have. However, he still far to go until he was really strong. Meanwhile, Tokiko was sparring with Hanada, who considered this as her own training. As Tokiko swung her sword in a half arc, Hanada sidestepped, bent down, her left hand behind her back focusing energy. Then she swung her own left hand in a palm strike, to which Tokiko blocked with her own sword. Amazingly Hanada's hand was not injured or even scratched. Her secret was that she was able to coat her hand in chakra like a second skin, which both protected her hand from injury and gave extra power, damage, and speed to her palm strike. However, surprisingly, she was not using her Byakugan. She had decided from the beginning not to be so dependent on her bloodline. Before Tokiko could strike back, Hanada did a leg sweep, which caught Tokiko unaware and she unceremoniously fell on her back but using her sword, she supported her own weight with it and quickly got back to her feet and just about blocked the double palm strike that Hanada had used on her. Hanada withdrew again and before Tokiko could strike back, Hanada quickly immobilized Tokiko with extremely fast and powerful palm strikes. However, it would have worked had Tokiko not blocked each chakra-coated palm strike with her sword. The end effect caused the both of them to be pushed away from each other and both girls just strengthened their resolve and after a blur, were at it again. Naruto was doing dodge training once again but this time with Kayubi Kazuki. So Kazuni, after I master this dodge stuff, what'll we do? Naruto asked, even as he was quickly evading the rather large fireballs that Kazuki was creating. Kazuki responded first with his eyes raised high, meaning he was thinking, then he replied, after this, I guess we'll work on rebuilding your stamina and endurance. Naruto just nodded and responded to Kazuki's answer with an, ah, and a slow nodding of the head. Then Kazuki smirked and he said, time to up your training, and with that saying, Kazuki increased both the size and speed of the fireballs, which made Naruto gape for about a second before he saw the fireballs head his way and he dodged instinctively. Kazuni. Hanako was sitting on the grass of Naruto's mindscape and thinking. He's going well in his training. I should up his training. It was then that Kazuki, Kayubi appeared and sat down next to the celestial. The kit's growing stronger isn't he? Hanako smiled at him and at his words, yes, yes he is. It was early morning when Naruto stood up from his meditative position on the forest floor. He had been meditating for more than five hours and as he stood up, he began to shake off and stretch his muscles, which were painfully cramped from having been in the same position for more than five hours. Then as Naruto looked at the slowly rising sun, he smiled. He would start his new training on mana today. Keitai Henka, Shape Transformation. 
This was what the fourth Hokage had used to create his well-known technique, the Rasengan. However, while the fourth Hokage and basically every ninja had chakra, Naruto did not. So what he was doing was different from what the fourth had done since he would have to use mana and not chakra. However, even if you had chakra or mana, Ketai Henka required control. Chakra control or mana control, whichever one. In ninja terms, Ketai Henka is an advanced form of chakra control and more known as a technique that is pivotal and needed for the manipulating of chakra and of course, the creation of new jutsu. This is why shape transformation is important. However, in terms of mana not chakra, Ketai Henka was quite similar to the chakra version, but they both had differences that distinguished them. Hanako had told Naruto that this would need very good control which was exactly why Naruto had been doing some particular exercises for about two months. It was all to build his control. Despite not being fully adapted to mana, thanks to the exercises in telekinesis, his control had improved. If he had not done the exercises, his control wouldn't even be half of what it was now. The telekinesis exercises taught Naruto control since they required focus and concentration. The meditation helped also since it helped focus his mind and relax in what Hanako had named, Naruto's mana core. Basically, his brain. Ketai Henka involved changing the shape and movement of his mana, such as creating weapons such as arrows from pure mana alone. Ketai Henka was required in both chakra and mana terms in creating new techniques. However, in mana terms, Ketai Henka was just another form of mana. It was also used to determine the size, range, purpose, and effect s of any techniques that naruto might and would create in the future using his mana so after a particularly long stretch naruto cracked his neck and left the forest determined to do his best hanada was at her own compound training at her mother's private garden which was accessible only to her since her mother had passed away long ago and because her father dared not go inside in fear of having a flashback or even a moment of remembrance of his late wife her death had greatly affected not just her but her own father however Hanada's younger sister, Hanabi, would sometimes enter the courtyard and either watch her older sister or train alongside her in preferably a spar to test each other's skills. As Hanada finished with a long set of katas for her slightly different style of the juken, she then noticed her sister staring wide-eyed at her from the garden's entrance. Hanada was about to ask why, when she noticed that her hands were glowing with a white color. However, Hanada could feel no effects of the glow on her body meaning this didn't seem to be draining her of chakra but was definitely draining her of something. So with that thought, she along with her sister, stared incredulously at her still glowing hands. Three years ago, when Naruto first met Tokiko. I have to talk to you about your partner. Minato asked, receiving a confused look from his son. Partner? Naruto asked, confused. Minato sighed and replied, yes, yes, a partner. I guess Hanako-sama didn't tell you, did she? Naruto's response to the question was an even more confused face and a what? Minato decided to just tell his son and did just that. You see, celestial angels have their own partners. These partners traditionally serve the purpose of providing support for the celestial. Normally the partner's duty, referred to as the ministra if female or minister if male, servant, is to protect the celestial, referred to as magistra if female or magister if male, master, preferably with physical abilities or swordplay while the celestial uses mana to create an attack. Naruto then understood why and all, but asked, so who's my partner? Elsewhere Tokiko was left panting after she went through the portal and as she raised her head, she saw the shocked looks of two old men and a young girl, probably six or seven years old, who was next to the still but breathing body of her charge. Magister, master, Tokiko exclaimed then in the blink of an eye, she was at his side and had placed her hands on the place where his seal lay, his stomach. And after that, a white light engulfed the room once again and the now three figures in the room were once again, shocked into silence. Back at the mindscape as Minato was about to answer his question, a figure appeared right in front of them, and he thought, I guess that answers his question. Naruto, this is your partner, Tokiko. Tokiko, I have been informed of your coming and this is your partner and my son, Naruto. Then Minato smiled and turned to Naruto, take care of yourself son. Remember that your mother and I love you now and forever. Then with a quick hug, to which Naruto was too shocked to return, Minato disappeared in a bright light and a smile on his face. After about five seconds of silence, Naruto turned to the bowing figure next to him and with a gentle smile, Hello Tokiko, I'm your partner, Celestia Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. Please get up. 
Tokiko of course nonetheless, followed his request and stood up and let Naruto look at her. Naruto's eyes widened at the beauty in front of him. Tokiko was a brunette with long hair that was curled. On her head was a red ribbon with the words, Curatora Angelus de Celestia. Guardian Angel to the Celestia. She wore a white kimono with pink adorning the sides and a pink cloth around her hips as a sort of belt. She also had thigh-length white tights and silver sandals. Around her neck was a beautiful necklace that seemed to be made of pure gold with the insignia of the guardian angels, which was a single wing. She wore a chain earring on her left ear, with the same insignia at the end of it. She had white arm-length gloves that had a tint of silver, which made it shine. All in all, Naruto considered her as a beauty but did not feel any lust. Tokiko smiled as her magister looked at her, surveying her appearance, which did not offend her at all. She would have done exactly the same thing if she were in his position. She decided to copy her magister's actions and also inspected her magister's appearance. He had a muscular yet sort of lithe build and had no body hair, that she could see anyway, he wore no shirt and guessed that he had took it off earlier. He had white baggy pants and white gloves on his hands. Just like Naruto, she thought he was beautiful, which was what she expected since he was a celestial. Hello Naruto-sama, my name is Kuratora Tokiko, and with that, a new friendship was born. Meanwhile, in the outside world, the third Hokage and his teammate Danzo seemed to get out of their stupor and gave each other questioning looks. Then Hinata spoke, M Magister M means master. N Naruto ni W was T teaching me. Both Serutobi and Danzo decided that it was okay and relaxed, letting out a sigh. Flashback, Naruto-kun will have his own partner as is mandatory for a newly awakened celestial angel. Hanako told both old men who she was having a deep discussion with. I see, only the Hokage showed his emotions since Danzo responded with a quick nod of the head, the only sign of his understanding. Flashback end, the end. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.